Advertisement. The cold wind blows the mist from the sea towards the dilapidated marine ford. In the mist, a little giant-like figure stood in it. Whitebeard looked at the members of the Blackbeard pirates in front of him. This group of people all had weapons in their hands, either knives or guns, and the weapons were clearly pointed at Whitebeard, but no one dared to step forward. Even though Whitebeard is now riddled with holes, even though his beard has been broken, everyone is still loved by the strongest man in the world. Shocked? A smile appeared on Whitebeard's lips, and his lowered head suddenly raised. The ultimate intention in my heart turned into a ball of heroic spirit, which gathered in my throat and spurted out. One Piece? It actually exists. Whitebeard's voice resounded throughout the world, and the people around him were silent for a moment, looking at Whitebeard in disbelief. Sengoku's heart suddenly felt cold. It's over, it's over now. With Whitebeard's voice, we can predict that pirates who originally didn't dare to enter the Grand Line will swarm in. The growing trend of pirates will become even bigger. Logically speaking, Sengoku should be very angry, but Sengoku's mood was very complicated. He watched Whitebeard's breath of life disappear little by little. Whitebeard stood still, like an immortal sculpture, lasting forever? Huh. The breeze blew against Whitebeard's nose, tickling him. A cut. Whitebeard sneezed, and a whirlwind stirred up, waking him up from his slumber. I'm not dead. Whitebeard was a little in disbelief. He grabbed Kong Yunki who was lying beside him and checked his body. He was shocked to find that not only was he alive, but all the injuries on his body and a broken beard had been restored. Even? Advertisement. Call. Whitebeard waved his fist, and the whistling wind of the fist sounded. The branches and leaves of the big tree not far away were also swayed by the wind of the fist. Whitebeard's eyes were blazing, and he looked at his hands, feeling very shocked. He discovered that his strength had actually returned to its prime. You know, his health condition could be said to be in critical condition before. Not long ago, he had to have intravenous drip and oxygen tubes inserted all over his body, and was cared for by the accompanying doctors and nurses. But now, he felt that his body was filled with endless power. His body, which had been depleted by injuries for many years, no longer existed. His physical fitness seemed to have returned to more than 20 years ago, feeling the strength of his body, a trace of recollection flashed in Whitebeard's eyes. 20 years ago, when the new era had not yet come, he, Golden Lion and Roger were divided into three parts. Those days were when he was at his strongest and when the Whitebeard pirates reached their peak. Coming out of the memory, Whitebeard looked around and found that he was in a dense forest. Whitebeard sniffed, such a mild climate, coupled with these low vegetation. This is East Blue, Whitebeard didn't care too much anymore. Although he didn't know how he survived, as long as he was alive, he could rely on his current strength. There must be a place for him on New World's ship. Holding the cloud cutter, Whitebeard wandered through the jungle. At this moment, he sensed several people not far away. Whitebeard smiled, as long as it was not a deserted place, everything would be easy. Is this the Nine Tails Jinchuriki? I didn't expect the defense to be so weak, Kanaha, hum, that's it. Rakage Sama will definitely be very happy. The five ninjas from Cloud Shinobi Village were talking, their faces showing ecstasy. A yellow-haired boy was sitting on the ground, with a thick rope tied around his body. He was flapping and yelling. Advertisement. Hey, who are you? Let me go. The five Cloud Shinobi showed stern looks. What a noisy brat, knock him out. Just when someone was about to step forward to attack Naruto, a steady sound of footsteps came from the dense forest not far away. Pursuing soldiers. Some people were doubtful, but quickly denied it, because the pursuers would not have such a slow pace. They stared at the place where the sound came from, and their eyes slowly changed from confusion to shock. Are you kidding me? Finally, one of the Cloud Shinobi couldn't hold himself any longer and exclaimed. I saw a giant holding a large Naginata walking out of the dense forest. His head even reached the tops of some of the lower trees. Whitebeard grinned, his white teeth complementing his crescent-shaped beard. The red and white cloak hangs on the back, majestic, and the muscles in the abdomen are bigger than their heads. It seems that I ran into something bad. Whitebeard's old and powerful voice echoed in the hearts of the five Cloud Shinobi, which also made them wake up instantly. Who are you? Whitebeard raised his eyebrows and said, Goo la 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 I didn't expect that there are still people who don't know me. It seems that my reputation is not enough. The sound like a bell shook the five Cloud Shinobi's minds. They frowned and took out their weapons one after another. No matter who you are, since our mission has shown you, then you should die. A Cloud Shinobi said, twitching his hand, and several sharp sounds of breaking through the air were heard instantly. Whitebeard took a closer look and saw several shurikens flying towards him. Whitebeard smiled, stretched out his hand and waved forward quickly. Bah! The arm movements were so fast and powerful that they even created a whirlwind, blowing the hair of five Cloud Shinobi away. And Nanny. Advertisement. Under everyone's horrified gaze, Whitebeard unclenched his fists. Ding ling ding kang. Several shurikens fell to the ground and were crushed into paper balls under Whitebeard's absolute power. Okay, so strong. Naruto's eyes sparkled. Although there are many ninjas in Konoha, it has always been peaceful, and Naruto has not seen many ninja tricks. Seeing Whitebeard's powerful methods at this moment, you will naturally be horrified. Whitebeard's beast-like eyes wandered around the five cloud shinobi, and then settled on Naruto. What you are doing is not very good. Whitebeard thought of his childhood. Many of his companions who were also orphans were kidnapped by human traffickers. He would not have a good impression of human traffickers. A fierce light flashed in Whitebeard's eyes, you guys let this kid go, and I will spare your lives. It seems that his strength has returned to its heyday, and Whitebeard's character has become as flamboyant as when he was young. The eyes of the five cloud shinobi became colder and colder. I didn't sense the chakra. It's just a big guy with more power. Don't be afraid. Let's go together, before Kanaha's pursuers come over. After a brief conversation, the five cloud shinobi took action. Call. Cloud Shinobi Village is very famous for its ninjutsu, which also gives the ninjas of Cloud Shinobi Village a unique trait. That's fast. The five Cloud Shinobi turned into afterimages and spread out to attack Whitebeard. Ho oh, I underestimated you. Whitebeard was a little surprised. In his opinion, these Cloud Shinobi were no different in height from ordinary people, presumably they were just ordinary human traffickers. But I didn't expect that the speed of action would be so fast. The smile on Whitebeard's face became even brighter. Let me take you and try my regained power. Advertisement. Chapter 2, Boy, Be My Son. Advertisement. 
The Cloud Shinobi approached Whitebeard at extremely fast speeds, but Whitebeard did not move at all, as if he was frightened. In fact, if you observe carefully, you will find that Whitebeard's eyes are actually staring at one of the afterimages. Suddenly, a Cloud Shinobi jumped up high, holding a ninja sword, and attacked Whitebeard from an extremely tricky angle. It's over. The Cloud Shinobi's eyes were filled with excitement, and the ninja sword in his hand was shining with cold light. However, at this moment, Whitebeard moved. That giant-like body actually disappeared in an instant. The Cloud Shinobi's eyes were horrified, and the target of his attack suddenly disappeared. He was confused. Just when he was confused, a thunderous voice sounded behind him. Young man, being too arrogant is not a good thing. Remember this punch. The Cloud Shinobi's eyes widened, and he felt that the blood all over his body ran cold. He wanted to make a move, but Whitebeard wouldn't wait for him. Boom. Whitebeard punched Cloud Shinobi directly in the back. Call out. Cloud Shinobi flew out like a cannonball. Blood spat out from Cloud Shinobi's mouth, drawing a line of blood in the air. Boom. Cloud Shinobi hit the ground not far away, a burst of dust was thrown up, and the ground cracked instantly. Everyone looked over and saw that the Cloud Shinobi was no longer breathing. The power of the punch directly twisted the man's body. How can it be? The remaining four Cloud Shinobi were stunned. They didn't expect Whitebeard to easily kill a ninja with one punch. Advertisement. It's like swatting a mosquito to death. Whitebeard also didn't expect that this man's body was so fragile. The handymen on his ship are all in better physical condition than this man. Knowing that their physical skills were no match for Whitebeard, the four Cloud Shinobi all pulled away from each other, and at the same time, they quickly formed seals with their hands. Water style water horn. The trumpet-shaped water wave flew towards Whitebeard. Whitebeard did not move and let the water trumpet hit him. Squirting? Interesting. Whitebeard is a little strange. Could it be that the other party is also a demon fruit power? But, Whitebeard felt quite bored. The power of this water wave was too small, and he couldn't even move his body. At this time, the other three cloud shinobi also formed seals together. Lightning-style ground walk. The sharp blue thunder snake crawled away on the ground. After it was lifted to the surface of the water, the speed and power of the lightning became even greater. Like a dozen violent snakes, they attacked Whitebeard with their fangs and claws. The interest in Whitebeard's eyes became even stronger. It seemed that this was not just a devil fruit. Razor climbed directly onto Whitebeard. Took it. The eyes of the four cloud shinobi flashed with excitement. In their eyes, it was impossible to have any fighting ability after being hit by this move. But what happened next shocked them. Goo la la la. Whitebeard laughed heartily. Several cloud shinobi heard it, and there was a hint of ridicule in the hearty laughter. The intensity of this lightning is not as strong as Marco's electric shock therapy. Although they don't know who Marco is, the cloud shinobi know that the powerful lightning style can't do anything to this big guy, then it's my turn now. Advertisement. Whitebeard turned his arm, and the cloud cutter made a sound while rotating at high speed. Take my move. Boom. Like a thunderbolt hitting the ground, Kong Yunki swept across the ground in Whitebeard's hands. A visible white sword light bloomed on Kong Yunkai, and the sword light galloped towards the four cloud shinobi. In an instant, the earth shattered, and countless sand and rocks broke out. Not good. The four cloud shinobi wanted to escape, but Whitebeard's speed was too fast. When they reacted, the sword light was already approaching. For a time, blood spilled all over the ground, adding a lot of color to the originally green woods. Two seconds later, the broken limbs of those ninjas fell from the sky to the ground, making a divination sound. Okay, so strong. Naruto's eyes widened, he didn't expect this old man to be so strong. Whitebeard only made two moves against these five cloud shinobi. At this time, Whitebeard noticed Naruto and walked towards Naruto, looking at Whitebeard's tall figure covering the sun. Naruto closed his eyes, he seemed to have predicted what this old man would say. It's nothing more than a demon fox or a monster, and then walks away with a look of indifference. He has experienced this kind of thing countless times. Are you okay, kid? The old and powerful voice was mixed with a hint of softness. Naruto was stunned for a moment, and his head snapped up. After being stunned for two seconds, he quickly said, No, no, thank you, Grandpa. Who are your parents? Why can't you take care of your children? Whitebeard asked. Naruto lowered his head, I, I don't have parents. Advertisement. Looking into Naruto's eyes, Whitebeard's expression did not change, but his eyes showed a sure enough color. Sure enough, I saw it right away. Whitebeard said with some reminiscence. Many of his sons, including himself, were orphans. After struggling for a while, Naruto said hesitantly, I, Grandpa, please don't get too close to me. I am the demon fox and the one who brings disaster to the village. Naruto felt that the old man just didn't recognize him for a while, so he showed his friendliness. Whitebeard squatted down with his huge body, boy, why are you telling me this? Naruto's eyes revealed a hint of loneliness, which was captured by Whitebeard. Because, because, they all say that getting close to me will bring disaster and bad luck to everyone, so, Grandpa, don't get close to me. As he said that, Naruto's expression became darker. Feeling lonely, Naruto knew that he would probably lose this little tenderness, but he still chose to reveal his identity. It seems that deep down in his heart, he really thinks so. Ha. Huh. Whitebeard chuckled, and Naruto raised his head in confusion, only to see that Whitebeard was not frightened by his words, but instead showed an extremely arrogant smile. Goo la 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 la. Laughter spread throughout the jungle, and flocks of surprised birds flew away. Listening to Whitebeard's very strange laughter, Naruto felt a little surprised in his heart, because he could hear that there was no ridicule in Whitebeard's laughter. After laughing, Whitebeard's eyes met Naruto's. What a beautiful pair of eyes. Looking at Naruto's blue eyes, Whitebeard sighed. Listening to Whitebeard's words, Naruto was stunned. This was the first time he heard someone compliment his eyes. Whitebeard then said, Remember, boy, no one has ever brought disaster to me. I am the disaster. Listening to Whitebeard's words, Naruto's head was buzzing and he didn't speak. Being lonely since he was a child, he didn't know how to respond to Whitebeard's words. Whitebeard grinned, showing his white teeth. The next second, he said something that surprised Naruto. Boy, be my son. Advertisement. Chapter 3, The Courage of a Man from the Sea. Advertisement. Eh. Naruto made an incredible sound. Whitebeard looked at Naruto condescendingly and said in a low voice, What? Is it difficult to be my Edward Newgate's son? No, no, just, eh, why? Naruto was a little incoherent. 
He didn't know how to respond to this sudden invitation. He was a little panicked, but at the same time he felt warm in his heart. By recognizing him as your son, is this identifying with him? Is this accepting him as a demon fox? Whitebeard directly caught the word no in Naruto's words, it's not embarrassing. Does that mean you agree? Naruto was stunned. He looked up at Whitebeard's smiling face and couldn't help but laugh. Ha ha, ha 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 ha. Whitebeard smiled when he saw Naruto, and also let out a gurgling laugh. The laughter of one old and one young resounded through the forest, smiling and laughing. Naruto's face was already covered with tears. Whitebeard stopped laughing, and then said, Now that you are my son, you are not allowed to cry like this, do you understand? Naruto wiped his eyes frantically with his sleeves, making his eyes red. I know dad, you're better than Grandpa Hokage. Whitebeard asked with some confusion, Didn't you say you have no relatives anymore? Naruto shook his head, He is the shadow of our village and the strongest person in the village. He treats me the best. I want to be a Hokage from now on. Watching Naruto share his dream, Whitebeard's expression was very serious. Is this Hokage you are talking about the leader of your village? Yeah. Naruto nodded, his eyes filled with longing. Advertisement. Whitebeard's face suddenly darkened. It can be heard from Naruto's words that Naruto has obviously been criticized for a long time. If that Grandpa Hokage really cared about Naruto that much, how could he let Naruto suffer like this? Dad, why does your face look so bad? Naruto noticed something was wrong with his new father's expression. Let's not talk about this for now. Then, Whitebeard looked not far away. Have you seen enough? Why don't you come out? The few Kanaha Umbu hiding in the dark were shocked. They didn't expect that they would be discovered even though they were hiding so secretly. In fact, Third Hokage noticed the ninjas from Cloud Shinobi Village sneaking in early, but Third Generation did not stop the ninjas from Cloud Shinobi Village. The purpose is to let Umbu secretly come forward to solve Naruto's problem when he is kidnapped. This would not only make Naruto more loyal to Konoha, but also give Cloud Shinobi Village a try, so why not? But just when they were about to rescue Naruto, Naruto was cut off by a giant old man. The third generation, who originally looked at the crystal ball with a confident expression, choked on a puff of cigarette when they saw Whitebeard appear. When he saw Whitebeard kill five Cloud Shinobi in two moves, his expression became extremely serious. When he finally saw that Naruto was willing to recognize Whitebeard as his father, he almost broke the pipe in his hand. I was obviously here first. Third generation clenched its fists and made a crunching sound. A trace of killing intent flashed in his eyes. As long as the Umbu kill Whitebeard, everything will be back on track. Although Whitebeard showed great power just now, no matter what, he only killed a few unknown people from Cloud Shinobi Village. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Several figures jumped out, and their speed was faster than Cloud Shinobi just now. Whitebeard narrowed his eyes, there are really more and more annoying guys. He tightened his grip on the calm Yunki in his hand. Several Umbu felt as if they were being targeted by wild beasts, and they all put their hands into their ninja bags. At this moment, Naruto quickly reached out his hand, Dad, this is the ninja of our village. Advertisement. Although he had never met Umbu, Naruto still recognized the symbol of Konoha. Oh, really? Whitebeard's eyes narrowed slightly. He didn't feel much relief from Umbu. A bird-faced Umbu took two steps forward and bowed slightly. Thank you. After saying that, he was about to leave with Naruto. Naruto's face showed endless disappointment, and he turned around with a trace of reluctance in his eyes. Contrast the powerful yet gentle aura on Whitebeard. The Umbu ninja, who comes from the village where he grew up, exudes a stiff, indifferent, and even disgusting mood. Naruto's heart was very sensitive and he naturally sensed Umbu's thoughts. Soon, Naruto's head dropped again in disappointment. Hey, this kid is my son now. If you take him away, don't you ask me, the father. Whitebeard's voice was like thunder, and several Umbu couldn't help but frown. This is our village's business, please don't interfere too much. Naruto's identity is so sensitive that Umbu will be extremely wary of anyone who wants to get close to Naruto. If it weren't for the strength Whitebeard showed just now, they would have kidnapped Whitebeard back to Konoha and tortured him. At this moment, Whitebeard spoke, Son, what is your name? Naruto, Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto shouted loudly, hoping that the other party would remember his name. Okay, I remember it. With that said, Whitebeard took a few steps forward. Several Umbu pulled Naruto back, please don't come any closer. Whitebeard ignored Umbu and stretched out his hand to Naruto, Naruto, come with me. Hearing this, Umbu and third generation became extremely vigilant. As soon as Whitebeard said this, they already thought in their hearts that Whitebeard was a spy from some ninja village, Zheng, Zheng, Zheng. There was a loud roar of swords, and several Umbu drew their ninja swords and quickly surrounded Whitebeard. Advertisement. Who are you? Please accept our investigation. After shouting twice in succession, Whitebeard's expression did not change, but he calmly stated his name. Edward Newgate, it's okay to call me Whitebeard. Whitebeard stared closely at the Umbu's eyes under the masks, and the Umbu were confused. They had never heard of such a strong man. Whitebeard also became confused in his heart. How far is this place from the Grand Line? Information is so closed. Dad. Seeing the village ninjas surrounding Whitebeard's father, Naruto didn't believe it and wanted to step forward to stop him. Pounce. An Umbu pushed Naruto to the ground with a cold look. Demon Fox, don't be too presumptuous. Naruto stared at the cold eyes under those cute cat faces, his heart trembled, then he lowered his head and said in a very lonely voice. Feel sorry. Naruto. Whitebeard shouted, and Naruto raised his head. Don't listen to these people, you are my Whitebeard's son, show the courage of a man on the sea. As he spoke, Whitebeard's body burst out with a strong aura. What? What? A powerful coercion burst out from Whitebeard's body, and the coercion turned into substance and turned into a wave of air sweeping around. And Umbu wanted to take action, but as soon as he took two steps closer, his whole body suddenly became shaky. Then, he fell directly to the ground. What's the situation? The remaining Umbu were very confused. They didn't feel a trace of chakra fluctuation. How did this giant take action? Humph. Whitebeard looked unkind and muttered. The next second, the airwaves spread faster and enveloped all the remaining Umbu. Advertisement. Chapter 4, Bullshit Hokage. Advertisement. Plop, plop. Umbu fell down one after another, and then fell unconscious. Naruto's eyes widened, what, what is this, it's so strong. Also surprised was the third generation who was peeping. He frowned. He didn't expect that this giant had such strength. 
He could knock out all the umbu without making a move. Third generation took a puff from the new pipe and felt endless annoyance in his heart. Listening to Naruto's exclamation, Whitebeard smiled and said, I will teach you in the future. Then, he turned his gaze to Naruto, don't care what they say, you just need to know that you are not a demon fox. You are my Whitebeard's son. Listening to Whitebeard's words, Naruto's nose began to twitch, tears welled up in his eyes, and he could feel a warmth swirling in his heart. But he remembered what Whitebeard said before about not crying, and he stopped the tears abruptly. Dad, thank you. Naruto hugged Whitebeard's thick calf and felt a sense of comfort that he had never felt before. Although he didn't dare to make it clear, Naruto felt that this was the feeling of a family member, a feeling that even Grandpa Hokage had never given him. Whitebeard smiled, and then his smile slowly turned serious. Naruto, I want to tell you that the third Hokage you talk about is not as good as you think. Listening to Whitebeard's words, Naruto felt a little unhappy. Dad, Grandpa third generation is the best to me. He gives me money every month, but he doesn't have that much time to spend with me. Boom. The huge palm directly covered Naruto's head, and then began to rub Naruto's hair violently. Naruto was a little dizzy after being hit like this. Dad. Stupid son, I just sensed that these people have been lurking in the dark. If he really cares about you, why don't his men come to save you? Whitebeard pointed to Umbu on the ground and said. Listening to Whitebeard's words, Naruto was speechless and didn't know what to say. Whitebeard continued, besides, if I were him, I wouldn't allow others to call you a demon fox. Advertisement. That hokage? That's bullshit. Naruto retorted angrily at first, but finally stopped talking, with a hint of thinking on his face. Watching the scene, third generation secretly thought that something bad would happen if things continued like this. Naruto, who had finally been trained with a will full of fire, couldn't be led astray like that. He realized the seriousness of the problem and immediately summoned Umbu, preparing to rescue Naruto. In his eyes, this Whitebeard is already the enemy of Kanaha village? Naruto, if you want to be as strong as me, don't stay in the village, but come to the sea? The sea is the only way for every strong person. Whitebeard said loudly, the sea. Naruto also realized that Whitebeard always talked about the sea. I think so, but, dad, I haven't become a ninja yet. Although Naruto also wanted to go out with Whitebeard, becoming a ninja was his current goal and he was unwilling to give up. Ninja? Goo la 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 la. Whitebeard burst into laughter. Naruto blushed in anger, what's so funny? Ninjas are very strong. Don't you know, dad? Are those ninjas just now? Their strength is weak enough. Whitebeard said with a smile. Naruto shook his head wildly, no, Grandpa Hokage is also a ninja, but he is the strongest person in the world. World? Whitebeard caught a word. He looked at Naruto and began to ask, son, tell me what countries are there in this world. Hearing these words, Naruto was stunned. He scratched his head and said timidly, ahaha, this. Teacher Iruka seems to have taught it before, but I forgot, hee <laughs> hee. Whitebeard was also a little speechless. This new son was really a little stupid. So, where is the marine branch closest to here? I don't know about the Grand Line, but you guys know about marine, right? Huh? What is marine? Advertisement. Whitebeard rubbed Naruto's head wordlessly, ending this useless conversation. He understood that Naruto seemed to have little interest in learning. Okay, I'll go back to the village with you. Whitebeard compromised. Okay, let's go back to the village first. Then he strode towards the direction of the village. Whitebeard thought in his mind. If you want to know where is closest to the Grand Line, then the leader of this place should know it very well. By the way, why is that Hokage being so hypocritical towards Naruto? Soon, under the leadership of Naruto, Whitebeard came to the village that Naruto had longed for. Tall walls surround the densely packed buildings. This is a village, which is larger than many towns. Whitebeard nodded secretly. The leader of a village of this size must have heard about the Grand Route. Just when the two were about to step into the two huge doors. Call. Two figures suddenly appeared next to Whitebeard. Is it shaving at such a speed? Whitebeard thought to himself and turned his head. Foreigners, Kanaha does not accept foreigners for the time being. Please come back. A man with a bandage on his nose said. The other man wore a turban and had two strange shaped knives strapped to his waist. Whitebeard grinned and looked in one direction. Stop hiding it. Are all ninjas such a shady profession? Whoosh. A black shadow suddenly appeared in front of Whitebeard. When he saw it clearly, he saw that it was an old man with a kind face. Grandpa Hokage. Naruto yelled, then ran to the third generation. The third generation caught Naruto and rubbed Naruto's head. Naruto, don't be naughty and skip class next time. Naruto was accidentally discovered by Cloud Shinobi because he skipped class and went outside the village and discovered the following series of things. Advertisement. Naruto looked up at the third generation and said firmly, with that here, I will never skip classes in the future. Listening to Naruto's words, third generation's kind smile suddenly froze. Then he looked at Whitebeard and forced a smile, I haven't asked for advice yet. Edward Newgate, you may call me Whitebeard. Third generation continued to ask, which country and which ninja village are you from? Goo la 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 la. Whitebeard burst into laughter, startling everyone around him. Naruto was the only one who didn't feel any discomfort. On the contrary, he liked this kind of laughter very much. He imitated it on the road just now, but unfortunately he didn't learn it. After laughing, Whitebeard said, we pirates do not belong to any country or any force. I am who I am, I am, Whitebeard. What a hacky. Naruto clenched his fists. Although he didn't know what a pirate was, he secretly wanted to learn from his father. The third generation felt a twinge of pain. Pirates sounded similar to criminals like bandits and roadhogs. How could Naruto be a criminal? The dignified Jinshuriki of Kanaha Shinobi village, dreams of becoming a criminal? He third generation cannot accept it? This. Mr. Whitebeard, a criminal status is not suitable for Naruto's growth. The third generation had a pipe in its mouth. This is my son, you don't have to worry about it. Whitebeard's words were very hacky. Yoho, third generation has never seen anyone so shameless. We in Kanaha provide Naruto with delicious food and drink, and finally cultivate him into a young man with ambitions, but we are not doing it just for you, an outsider, to cut off his beard. This is not okay. Naruto's parents are both heroes of Kanaha. 
Kanaha has received favors from them and cannot ignore Naruto. The third generation patted Naruto's head and stared at Whitebeard. Gulalalala, hero, will the son of a hero be treated like this? All the handymen on my ship have a better life than him, Gulalalala. Whitebeard laughed again, and the expression on third generation's face disappeared, because he could hear that there was naked ridicule in this laughter. Naruto looked at the increasingly gloomy face of the third generation, getting further and further away from the image of the kind old man in his heart. Grandpa Hokage. Advertisement. Chapter 5, Rules Are Meant to Be Broken. Advertisement. No matter what you say, according to Kanaha's rules, Naruto's custody is mine, and you have no right to take him away. Third generation wisely changed the topic from the hero's son. Hearing third generation's words, Whitebeard's mouth almost reached Kakuza's forehead. Rules? In the eyes of us pirates, rules are meant to be broken. Seeing that Whitebeard's words were clear, third generation narrowed his eyes slightly. It seems that this guest is not so friendly. The breeze blew, and a fallen leaf slowly fell from the sky. The moment it landed, two black shadows collided instantly. Dang. A burst of sparks suddenly stirred up, and the harsh sound of gold and iron echoed around. The third generation was seen holding a kunao not far from Whitebeard's throat, while Whitebeard's kumokuri was firmly in front of him. As expected, you are not a kind person. Whitebeard chuckled, because he knew that it was the third generation who took the lead. Foreigners, don't slander anyone. You were the one who took the knife first. Third generation showed a dangerous smile. Since outsiders can't see their speed clearly, third generation can just say whatever they want. Lord Hokage. The two goalkeepers couldn't sit still. Hokage was fighting in front of them, and they had to take action. The two flew forward, trying to use the flanking technique to deal with Whitebeard. However, Whitebeard shouted loudly, and a strong pressure burst out, knocking the two of them away. Then, Whitebeard stretched out his left hand and grabbed the third generation. Whitebeard's hands were so big that they grabbed the third generation like a giant pliers. The third generation's figure is, to put it bluntly, a skinny old man, very small in his huge hands. Grabbing the third generation, Whitebeard smashed it to the ground. Boom. A sound like thunder rang out, the earth cracked instantly, earth and rocks shattered, and sand and dust flew into the air. Advertisement. Fire, Hokage Sama. Grandpa Hokage. Several people quickly looked over, and the smoke gradually dispersed, and they saw a tattered god controlling robe lying in the pit. Under the royal robe is a puddle of human-shaped mud. Whitebeard raised his eyebrows, this was really beyond his expectation. Just then, a strong wind and a whisper came to my ears. It's over. The third generation, dressed in military uniform, grabbed the kunao, and the kunao turned into a black stream of light and stabbed Whitebeard in the back. Whitebeard seemed to be frightened and didn't react at all. Dad. Soon, the sharp point of the kunao stabbed Whitebeard in the back. However, third generation's expression suddenly changed from joy to shock. The touch from the kunao told him that what he stabbed was not a person, but a very hard piece of steel, not nanny. The third generation held the kunao and kept adding more chakra. However, even so, it still failed to penetrate Whitebeard's body defense. Whitebeard turned his head to the confused Naruto, son, this is what you will learn in the future. As he spoke, he looked at third generation, raised his fist, and a strong airflow gathered on his fist. Iron body. Third generation's eyes widened, and the chakra on his body was rapidly mobilizing in his body, and a burning sensation surged in his throat. At this critical moment, a short figure rushed into the duel between the two, Naruto. Whitebeard's body turned quickly, and his hard fist hit the ground. Boom. A large pit opened in the earth, and the ferocious crack spread rapidly outside the pit, like a wandering snake. Advertisement. The third generation also sprayed the flames prepared for the exit into the sky. A fire dragon appeared from the third generation's mouth and flew into the sky. You, don't fight anymore. Naruto stood between the two of them and opened his arms. Naruto, you don't want your life. Third generation screamed. Whitebeard was a little confused. He didn't expect that the third generation actually cared about Naruto so much. If you care so much, why do you treat it like this? The two cast their eyes at Naruto, just a glance, and both third generation and Whitebeard looked shocked. I saw a burst of red light rising from Naruto's body, and a strange, cold aura spreading out. Naruto's eyes also turned red, exuding ferocity like a beast, and his teeth and beard began to grow longer, becoming more ferocious. Third generation gritted his teeth. He couldn't understand. Naruto and Whitebeard had only known each other for less than half a day, but they already had such a deep bond. Even Nine Tails chakra overflowed. Whitebeard was still confused just now, but after seeing Naruto's appearance, he suddenly understood. No wonder this Hokage cares so much about Naruto. It turns out that what he cares about is not Naruto himself, but some kind of power in Naruto's body. Seemingly seeing Whitebeard and the third generation no longer fighting, Naruto's mood quickly calmed down. The Nine Tails chakra on Naruto began to dissipate, and he seems to be in some pain, whether it's Dad or Grandpa Hokage, they are the people I admire the most. You, don't fight anymore. Listening to Naruto putting Whitebeard in front, he felt unbalanced in his heart. Why? Third generation couldn't figure out how, if he was so good to Naruto, this Whitebeard who had only appeared for a short time could be compared to him. Seeing Naruto's appearance, third generation sighed and said, Okay. Naruto's eyes flashed brightly, then dad also wants to go back to the village with me. Third generation glanced at Whitebeard with a gloomy expression, Okay. Whitebeard looked at the gloomy face of the third generation and said with a smile, The Hokage, if you manage the fleet like this, you will be disloyal. The third generation took out another pipe from nowhere and held it in his mouth, Don't judge us by your pirate standards. We in Kanaha are regular soldiers under the name of the Daimyo. Regular army? What labor and capital are fighting is the regular army. Advertisement. Third generation emphasized the word pirate and wanted to tell Naruto that the father you recognize is a bandit. Very unhealthy energy, very incorrigible will. However, Naruto didn't seem to hear it and happily pulled Whitebeard towards the village. Dad, I'll take you to try my favorite Ichiraku ramen. Whitebeard walked into the village while cooing. Hokage-sama, is it okay? 
The two goalkeepers looked at third generation. The third generation's expression was terrifyingly gloomy, and neither of them had ever seen the third generation look like this. Third generation spoke, what happened just now must not be told outside. Yes. Then, the third generation disappeared in an instant, leaving only the devastation on the ground and the two people swaying in the wind. Naruto took Whitebeard's giant finger and walked towards the street. At first, passersby looked disgusted when they saw Naruto. Even if they were several meters away, the villagers were avoiding him, as if even getting close to the air Naruto breathed would bring disaster. However, when their eyes turned to Whitebeard behind Naruto, they were confused. Whitebeard is a full 6.66 meters tall, with his sharp cloak and extra-long large Naginata. The whole person exudes a king haki that Konoha people have never seen before. This, is this a giant? It's as high as two floors, right? A demon fox and a monster, what a perfect match. Listening to the surrounding words, Whitebeard looked at Naruto. He finally understood why Naruto said those words in the first place. To be honest, Naruto's situation was more difficult than when he was younger. Anyone with poor mental quality will probably become blackened. At this time, Naruto, unaware of the words around him, excitedly pulled Whitebeard towards the ramen shop. Advertisement. Chapter 6, Being Stabbed in the Back is a Shame? Advertisement. Welcome. When Tao Tai saw the curtain opened, he spoke directly. Tai Da poked his head out slightly and smiled, It's Naruto, what do you want to eat today? Akaris next to him also smiled, Long time no see, Naruto-kan. At this time, the two of them were surprised to find that Naruto was not as embarrassed or shy as before, but instead had a happy smile on his face. Why are you smiling so happily? Shouda asked. There was light in Naruto's eyes, I'll bring my dad over here. Dad. Tejida knew that Naruto was an orphan. He didn't know when Naruto recognized a cheap father. His face became serious, he had watched Naruto grow up, and he couldn't let Naruto be deceived by some human trafficker. Tate looked outside the curtain and saw two thick and long pillar-like things. When did two telephone poles get installed in front of the store? However, at this moment, the two telephone poles moved, and then an exaggeratedly huge hand opened the curtain. His closed eyes opened slightly, and the spoon in his hand fell into the soup pot. It's such a small noodle shop. The toilets on my ship are bigger than this. An old and powerful voice came, and everyone eating noodles couldn't hold back any longer and looked back in surprise. At this time, the light in the store, which was still decent, suddenly dimmed, and then a huge shadow was projected in, covering everyone. Whitebeard was speechless. Are there no tall people in this place? Advertisement. Every place is a very uncomfortable miniature version for him, and he can't stretch even to eat. Helpless, Whitebeard could only bend his back after entering the store. There was silence in the store, except for the mushroom head wearing a Kanaha vest who was smacking his face, as if he didn't hear it at all. Whitebeard glanced at the mushroom head, as if he had seen something surprising, with an inexplicable light shining in his eyes. I want a big bowl of barbecued pork miso ramen. Naruto shouted without feeling the weird atmosphere. After being stunned for a while, Shande closed his open eyes and showed his signature hearty smile. Okay, a big bowl of barbecued pork miso ramen. What would this guest want? Tate looked at Whitebeard. Whitebeard rubbed Naruto's head with his big hands. You brat, that's all you need to eat. It's the same as brat. Well, give me a hundred bowls to moisten my throat first. Although I knew that with Whitebeard's appearance, he would eat a lot, but he didn't expect that he would eat a hundred bowls. Hand typing feels a little troublesome, but more of a challenge. He rolled up his sleeves with his hands and said with a fighting spirit in his eyes, then please wait and see. Next, put the ingredients and soup, and the movements flow smoothly, which is pleasing to the eye. Whitebeard looked at it with admiration and said, hey, the little guy who makes ramen. He was a little speechless as it was the first time in decades that someone called him a kid, but looking at Whitebeard's somewhat old face, it seemed that he was right. Is there something wrong, sir? Be my son. Clang. The bowl in Calamus's hand was smashed into pieces, and he stood there with his mouth slightly open. I just need a skilled ramen kid on my ship. You can be my son. After being stunned for a while, Shande burst out laughing. Ha 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 ha. This guest officer is really interesting. Naruto, I approve of your father. Advertisement. Although I don't know what happened to Naruto's father, I still have a special appetite for him. Naruto was also very happy that Whitebeard was recognized. The fight between third generation and Whitebeard just now really shocked him. It seems that some people will recognize Whitebeard. Mike Guy drank the tenth bowl of ramen soup in one gulp and sighed happily, but he was not full because he had special training in the evening. At this time, Guy belatedly realized that there was a giant sitting next to him. Old sir, your muscles are so big. Listening to the exclamation next to him, Whitebeard looked down and saw the thick eyebrows that had been eating. Feeling that Mike Guy had no ill intentions, Whitebeard smiled and then lifted up his pirate cloak. In an instant, everyone's eyes were covered with muscles all over his body. Each muscle was as big as a human head. However, the most shocking thing is that almost all of Whitebeard's front chest is covered with scars. The ravines of different sizes and depths, especially the scratch in the middle of the chest, are even more eye-catching. Naruto's nose turned red when he looked at the scars on his father's body, but he remembered his father's teachings and did not shed tears. Mike Guy's pupils trembled, and at this moment, he noticed that there were no wounds on Whitebeard's back. Old sir, behind your back. Whoops. Whitebeard took off his cloak and leaned down slightly, revealing his extremely smooth back. In the center of his back was the logo of the Whitebeard Pirates. Feeling the puzzled looks around him, Whitebeard laughed loudly and said, Gula la la, son, this is the first thing I want to teach you, about the principles of fighting. After hearing what Whitebeard said, Naruto looked serious. That is, never show your back to the enemy? Being stabbed in the back is a shame to our Whitebeard Pirates. Boom, advertisement. Listening to Whitebeard's words, it was like a thunder blast in Naruto's head. Naruto's face turned red and his mood was surging. Guy's pupils trembled, Whitebeard's display had a huge impact on his soul. There were no scars on his back. For someone who had experienced the battlefield, he knew that this meant that Whitebeard had never escaped once. Never once did you reveal your backside to the enemy? Behind this extremely smooth surface, what is revealed is the infinite pride on the battlefield? It is the supreme existence among men? Mike Guy stretched out his trembling hand and touched Whitebeard's body. Old sir, these muscles and scars are really... As he spoke, Guy lowered his head and trembled all over. 
Everyone was wondering what happened to this ninja. The next second, Guy suddenly raised his head. It's so youthful. I have decided. In order to become a strong man like you, I will stand on my head and circle Kanaha a hundred times. Guy raised his head suddenly, tears flashing in the light. Listening to Guy's words, Whitebeard also felt a surge of pride in his heart. Well said. You have the spirit of a man from the sea? You kid with thick eyebrows, are you interested in being my son? Your personality is very suitable for going to sea. Originally he was a little confused about the word son, but when he heard the word going to sea, Guy's face suddenly turned pale. Going to sea, old sir, to tell you the truth, I get seasick. Whitebeard smiled with some pity, what a pity, the beauty of the sea is unparalleled, I still hope you can walk on the great route. Whitebeard's eyes were shining, and he could see that there was a power in Mike Guy's body. He had only experienced this feeling in people at the admiral level. It is too wasteful for such people to waste money in this unknown place. The Grand Line? Where is that place? As a Jonin, Guy has seen a lot, and he has never heard of these things. Whitebeard couldn't help but sigh in his heart again, this place is too closed. Advertisement. Chapter 7, Father and Son Under the Moon? Advertisement. Everyone admired Whitebeard's concept so much that even Shouda enthusiastically added more barbecued pork to the bowl. You eat first, I'll keep making it. He took out a few bowls by hand and continued making noodles at a faster pace. Gulala, it smells pretty good. Whitebeard picked up the large bowl of ramen as if holding a bottle cap, shook his hand slightly, and poured the contents of the bowl into his mouth. Not bad, store, do you have wine? There's sake and beer. It's no fun drinking, forget it. Whitebeard looked resentful. As a man of the sea, it is natural to drink rum as much as possible. The feeling of finishing the sake makes him feel itchy, so he might as well not drink it. My guy was inspired by Whitebeard and left happily while standing on his head. Naruto looked at him and called him a weirdo. But Whitebeard said, silly boy, you have to know that this rat with thick eyebrows is not simple. Naruto was a little surprised. He couldn't see anything except that he thought this thick-browed man was a little funny. Whitebeard grinned slightly and looked at where Mike Guy left with a deep look. The potential in that kid might even scare me. Really or not? Naruto had no doubt about Whitebeard's strength. Several ninjas were wiped out in a flash. In his mind, Whitebeard's strength had surpassed that of the third Hokage. It was late at night, and the only light on the dark street was the Ichiraku noodle shop. There was a snoring sound coming from inside. Dang. Placing the hundredth bowl on the table, Whitebeard showed a happy smile on his face. Although he was not full, the delicious food was enough to comfort him after a hard day's work. Tejida picked up the towel on his shoulder and wiped his sweat. Thanks for the review. Six thousand tails? I won't count those for little Naruto. When Naruto heard this number, he opened the frog wallet in confusion. There were only a few banknotes and coins, which made Whitebeard feel shabby. The Hokage is still acting as a guardian, what a shameless boy. Advertisement. Dad. Naruto looked ashamed. He had promised to pay for the meal, but in the end he didn't have enough money. Whitebeard said bluntly, I don't have any money either. The slap on his face also fell. In fact, seeing as Whitebeard was now Naruto's father, he could be generous, but he didn't expect that Whitebeard actually ate a hundred bowls. With a hard slap on my heart, for Naruto, I can bear the loss of a hundred bowls with gritted teeth. Just when he was about to speak, Whitebeard spoke. Don't worry, ramen brat, someone's here to pay for us. He looked around and saw that there were no people on the street, except for a lazy one-eyed cat lying on a trash can nearby. Whitebeard stretched out his finger and pointed at the kitten, let him pay. Shouda asked in confusion, Mr. Whitebeard, how do you pay for a cat? The next second, a burst of white smoke rose from the kitten's body. The white smoke dissipated, and a white-haired ninja wearing a Konoha vest appeared in front of everyone. Yeah, yeah I've been discovered a lazy voice sounded from Kakashi's mouth. Although he looked calm on the outside, Kakashi was in a state of turmoil inside. He was still very confident in his transformation technique, but he didn't expect to be seen through at a glance. Shouda recognized Kakashi, it's Kakashi. Whitebeard didn't pay much attention to Kakashi. He glanced at Kakashi's covered left eye, and then pulled Naruto away. The account will be charged to the white-haired brat. After Whitebeard finished speaking, he put Naruto on his shoulders and left leisurely. Whitebeard knew that the kid named Kakashi must have been sent here by the Hokage, so he had no psychological pressure to trick him. This is what you Konoha owe Naruto? Kakashi held intimate love in heaven, but he no longer had the intention to read it. Kakashi, look. He rubbed his hands and smiled at Kakashi. Kakashi took out a few banknotes speechlessly. Kakashi, this is not enough. Watching Whitebeard's huge body gradually move away, Kakashi felt something bad in his heart. How much? Advertisement. Six thousand tails. Upon hearing this, Kakashi's hand holding the money trembled suddenly. He sighed and handed the money into his hand. It seems that this money will have to be reimbursed by Mr. Third Generation. Dad, let's go home now, Naruto asked, holding his bulging belly. Whitebeard's eyes turned to Naruto, and for some reason, Naruto felt his heart tremble. Go back, goo la la la, now is a good time to exercise. Listening to Whitebeard's words, Naruto was shocked. Then, regardless of what Naruto said, Whitebeard jumped up and flew into the air with Naruto. Dad, seeing Whitebeard's huge figure about to fall from the sky will definitely scare a lot of people. Son, watch carefully. I saw Whitebeard's legs twitching rapidly when he was about to land. Boom, boom, boom. Three circular shock waves surged under his feet, and Whitebeard's figure climbed rapidly. The whole person actually walked through the air. This shocked both the peeping third generation and the following Kakashi. The most shocking thing is Kakashi. He didn't feel a trace of chakra fluctuation in Whitebeard. What does this mean? This means that Whitebeard relies entirely on his body to fly through the air? Is this kind of physical skill really possible for the human body? Okay, so hi. Naruto exclaimed in surprise, wrapping his arms around Whitebeard's neck and refusing to let go. Gula la la la, look at me, daddy. Whitebeard continued to step into the air with both feet, and the two of them flew to a height that was difficult for ordinary ninjas to reach, even reaching the clouds. So tall, dad is so awesome. Naruto laughed loudly, and the laughter spread throughout the clouds. He had never been so happy since he was born. Smiling, a few drops of liquid flew out of the corners of his eyes. Advertisement. Escape in the air. A silver full moon hung high in the sky, and two figures, one large and one small, passed by in front of the full moon. 
Kakashi looked at this scene and the crystal tears in the corners of Naruto's eyes, and couldn't help but sigh deeply. Unknowingly, a complex emotion of envy and regret arose spontaneously. He was very unhappy with Whitebeard's appearance at first, because Naruto was his teacher's son, and it was really hard to accept that he suddenly recognized a wild father outside. But after hearing Naruto's hearty laughter, Kakashi's emotions towards Whitebeard disappeared. Compared with Whitebeard, a foreigner, what did he do as the teacher's apprentice? There was no care at all, and I didn't even meet him in person. Compared to him, I really failed. Kakashi murmured. Perhaps, Whitebeard can fill in the gaps for Naruto to have a complete childhood. Third generation closed the crystal ball with complex eyes. After a long time, the office was filled with smoke, making it difficult to see the expressions of third generation. Under Naruto's guidance, Whitebeard landed on a training ground. This is it. Whitebeard held the Kong Yunkai and stabbed it into the ground. Bang. Kong Yunki stood firmly on the ground. Then, Whitebeard looked at Naruto, son, try if you can pull out the cloud cutter. Naruto rolled up his sleeves, that's not easy, dad, watch it. Naruto grabbed the hilt of the sword with both hands, and then began to exert force. Soon, Naruto realized something was wrong. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't pull out the bush. Whitebeard shook his head slightly. Naruto's talent didn't seem to be very high, although he wouldn't dislike it. It also meant that Naruto's future would be even more bumpy. However, at this time, Whitebeard discovered something was wrong. Naruto's hands glowed with blue light, and under Whitebeard's surprised gaze, Amazon Yunki shook a few times. Advertisement. Chapter 8 Training. Advertisement. What was that power just now? Whitebeard came to Naruto and asked. In fact, Whitebeard also felt this energy in the ninjas just now. The discharge of electricity, fire, and transformation all had fluctuations in this power. And now, I didn't expect that even Naruto had this kind of power. Naruto tilted his head, his blue eyes flashing, don't you know, dad? This is Chakra. Naruto was surprised, even someone as stupid as him knew about the existence of Chakra. How could such a powerful man like his father not know about it? It was at this time that Whitebeard finally noticed something was wrong. I recall that when the Grand Line and Marine were mentioned, the people here looked confused, and then combined with this power system that they had never seen before. A bad suspicion arose in Whitebeard's mind. Whitebeard looked at Naruto, son, you continue. Naruto nodded, continued to activate the Chakra, and then continued to compete with the Bushaniri that was deeply rooted in the ground. Just when Naruto was about to pull out the Kumo no Kiri, the Chakra on his body suddenly began to become disordered, and then the whole person was bounced away. Whitebeard also sensed something was wrong based on what he saw and heard, and he quickly stepped forward, what's going on? Naruto had a pitiful look on his face, I don't know why, I'm the only one in the class like this. Every time I think clone technique is about to succeed, Chakra will suddenly go crazy. Naruto actually does a lot of exercise and his physical fitness is indeed good, but it was because of this sudden reason. As a result, every time I compete with others, I can't beat them, and I end up being the last one. Thinking like this, Naruto was very angry, if it weren't for this reason, Suzuki would have been beaten to a pulp long ago. Whitebeard said nothing and touched Naruto's stomach with his huge palm. The next second, observation Haki began to spread. Soon, he sensed two strange energies in Naruto's body. One energy was very huge, but it seemed difficult for Naruto to mobilize it. The other energy is more exaggerated, but at the same time it also has a sense of evil. Once you feel it, you know it is not a good person. Advertisement. In the dark underground waterway, behind a wet iron fence, a huge red fox is perching. Suddenly, there was a vibration around him, waking up the giant fox. What's going on? Blood red vertical pupils appeared in nine tails' eyes. It looked at the ground and saw that the usually pristine and ripple-free water surface was constantly trembling, and layers of ripples were blown up. An unpleasant feeling arose in nine tails' heart. Outside, Whitebeard removed his palm from Naruto's stomach. Dad, what, what's wrong? Naruto asked nonchalantly. Whitebeard showed a smile, it's not a big trouble, I'll take care of it on daddy. Whitebeard wasn't bragging. Although the evil aura was huge, he could still sense it, and it was far worse than him, but now is not the time to address this. Patting Naruto on the head, Whitebeard said, since this chakra can't be used, let's do physical training. Then, Whitebeard grabbed the kimokuri and pulled it out easily, then took out a rope and tied the kimokuri to Naruto's body. Whitebeard has a height of more than 6 meters, coupled with strong strength, the weight of the Kong Yunkai that can be matched with it is naturally not small. Whitebeard let go of his hand, and immediately, a huge force was transmitted to Naruto's body. Naruto's figure suddenly dwarfed as he held his back, his legs also bent and trembled. It feels like carrying a house on your back? Okay, it's so heavy. Naruto gritted his teeth, his eyes widening, and his heart was in disbelief. He watched Whitebeard walking around easily with a big knife, thinking that it weighed nothing. As a result, it seems that he still underestimated his father's power. Although he feels sorry for his new son, Whitebeard will not show mercy when it comes to training. Sweat more when you exercise, bleed less when you fight. Just when Whitebeard stepped forward to give Naruto a kick, he discovered that Naruto had moved. Naruto trembled on his feet and struggled to move forward. Even though my body keeps shaking, even though I can only move one inch at a time, I still persevere without any complaints. Advertisement. Whitebeard's eyes showed slight surprise as he looked at Naruto who was moving forward. Gradually, Naruto's back began to change. Transformed into Luffy, into Ace, and finally, into Roger. Whitebeard smiled. It seems that another person who can inherit Roger's will has appeared. If you train this kid well, he will definitely shine in the new world. Thump. After carrying Kong Yunkai around the training ground ten times, Naruto fell to the ground tiredly. Just when he wanted to rest, a huge force appeared from behind and lifted him up. Stupid son, when your muscles are sore, it's a good opportunity to learn. Whitebeard threw Naruto into the air. Naruto had to gather the chakra and then land firmly on the ground. At this time, he made a startling discovery. His body seems to be a little lighter than before. He looked up at Whitebeard in surprise, and met Whitebeard's confident eyes. Whitebeard also sighed secretly in his heart. Sure enough, he felt right. Naruto's physical fitness was surprisingly good, it's the kind that won't break down no matter how hard you practice. Isn't this good material for exercise? Naruto was excited. If he could learn something, he could defeat that guy Suzuki in class. After defeating Suzuki, little Sakura will like him. Thinking of this, Naruto's body trembled. Whitebeard looked at this scene and punched Naruto on the head. It hurts. Stupid son, remember, when you haven't achieved your goal, don't imagine the scene after you succeed. 
Whitebeard shouted at the top of his voice. Yes, Dad. The moonlight at night illuminates the water next to the training ground, and an inverted figure is reflected in the water. The upside-down figure walked not far away, and then immediately lowered his body. Advertisement. Training is complete. Youthful assault training is really rewarding. Guy said to himself, even with such a heavy training volume, he did not show any discomfort. Just when he was about to go back to sleep, he saw a huge figure in the distance. Mr. Whitebeard. Guy did not choose to step forward, but flew to a place to observe Whitebeard and Naruto more clearly. Although he is very nervous, he still knows that Naruto's identity is sensitive, and the Whitebeard next to Naruto is an object that needs to be observed. On the training ground, Whitebeard glanced at the dark place calmly, and then no longer cared. He looked at Naruto, what you have to learn in the past few years is a move called Six Styles. Six Forms. Naruto was a little confused, he hadn't heard of this thing before. He thought Whitebeard would teach him some magic or other tricks. Dad, I want to learn ninjutsu. Ninjutsu? Those little tricks of setting fire and electricity? Those are just flashy things. Naruto pouted and said, But, Dad, it's useless no matter how strong your physical skills are. I want to become a ninja in the future, and my ninjutsu must be very powerful. Listening to Naruto's words, Guy in the dark frowned. This is also the public perception. His father, Might Dai, has been unable to advance in Genin because of this public perception. Whitebeard planted a tremor on Naruto's head. Idiot. Naruto covered his head and cried out in pain. I saw Whitebeard yelling angrily, physical skills? It is the foundation of everything? Without good physical fitness, good physical fitness, and strong physical skills? Others can easily defeat you. Look, Dad, have I ever used physical skills from beginning to end? Listening to Whitebeard's words, realization gradually flashed in Naruto's eyes. But Guy in the dark was speechless. He looked at Whitebeard, and that huge figure reminded him of Might in a trance. He didn't expect that this foreigner's thoughts were so in line with his own. The mainstream of today's ninja world still doesn't pay much attention to Teijutsu, and his father's situation back then is not over today. Hearing these words from this foreigner's mouth, he was very touched. Advertisement. Chapter 9, Marine 6 Styles. Advertisement. Whitebeard also had an idea in mind about the moves Naruto wanted to practice. That is, Marine 6 Styles. Although Whitebeard has never been a Marine, he has fought against countless Marines, and with his outstanding personal talent, he has long understood the principles of the Six Styles. Although he is an enemy of Marine, he himself fully approves of this training method. From observation, your ability to resist blows is very good, so what you have to practice now is the second of the six postures, Iron Body. Whitebeard said, the principle of Iron Body is to allow blood to circulate quickly and muscles to move faster. Under this effect, the human surface will become as hard as iron. At the same time, Iron Body is also one of the six moves that Naruto can learn temporarily. The threshold for other moves is too high. Look, the second of the six moves, Iron Body. As Whitebeard said the name of the move, suddenly, Whitebeard's body began to become still. Naruto was stunned. He looked left and right, but saw nothing. Guy, who was observing from a distance, frowned, as if he sensed something strange. Naruto, take out your weapon and attack me, stab me hard. Whitebeard had a big smile on his face. Naruto was stunned for a moment, with a look of shock on his face. Whitebeard said, don't worry, as you are now, you can't hurt me. Hearing this, Naruto's heart dropped, and he took out a kunao from his ninja bag. Whoosh. Naruto trusted Whitebeard so much that he grabbed the kunao and chakra began to pour into his feet, speeding up. Ding. Kunao pierced Whitebeard's chest, and a touch that did not belong to the human body was conveyed, and Naruto looked shocked. Again again. Whitebeard shouted loudly. Naruto distanced himself, took out a kunao and shuriken, and threw them desperately at Whitebeard. Ding 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 ding. Advertisement. As if hitting hard steel, the kunao and shuriken were all bounced away, and even a little firelight flickered on him. No, incredible. My guy's pupils shrank. He could see that this was not a ninjutsu method, but simply physical strength. Naruto also looked shocked. His mind recalled the scene at the gate of Konoha. Grandpa Hokage's kunao had clearly stabbed Whitebeard in the back, but it didn't penetrate at all. It turns out that is iron body? Dad, I want to learn this. Whitebeard naturally said happily, no problem. Seeing this, Guy knew that he could no longer watch like this, so he walked out of the darkness. Whitebeard looked over and showed a real expression, finally stopped hiding. Guy was stunned, Mr. Whitebeard, have you noticed me already? Then Guy showed an embarrassed smile, I think you want to teach Naruto some abilities, so you can't peek here anymore. Whitebeard looked approvingly, he recognized Guy's qualities very much. Just when Guy was about to leave, Whitebeard spoke, hey, thick eyebrow brat. Guy turned his head and saw Whitebeard's burning eyes. Under Guy's shocked gaze, Whitebeard said, thick browed brat, I've seen the beast in you. When Guy heard this, his eyes widened, his lips began to tremble, and two hot tears flowed from his eyes. Come on, fight. If your youth doesn't burn, it will be extinguished. Whitebeard roared to the sky, the sound was so penetrating that Naruto felt dizzy. When he looked at Guy again, Guy's eyes were already burning with fighting spirit. Thank you, Mr. Whitebeard, the blue beast of Konoha is out of the cage again. Then, Guy's arm shook and he shouted loudly, I'm on it. As he spoke, Guy's figure suddenly disappeared and then reappeared behind Whitebeard. Advertisement. Leaf Hurricane. Guy's body rotated at high speed, and his legs were like sharp whips, carrying strong wind and hitting Whitebeard's body. Boom. The hard touch made Guy's face change. Shadow Dance Leaf. Guy chose to change his attack position. He teleported to Whitebeard, raised his leg high and hit Whitebeard's chin. However, Whitebeard remained as steady as a mountain, motionless. Apart from the leg wind that caused his beard to tremble a few times, it had no other effect at all. Guy was very surprised in his heart. He knew that his strength was enough to crack the stone with every blow. But this Whitebeard can catch it steadily? While being beaten, Whitebeard said to Naruto, Naruto, let me show you the secret of Teijutsu. Seeing that he could not break through Whitebeard's defense, Guy's eyes flickered, and Blue Chakra began to gather on one foot. Excited Konoha draw power cyclone. Whitebeard couldn't take it hard this time. His legs shook rapidly and his body quickly disappeared. Six moves, shave. Whitebeard shouted the name of the move while flashing around Guy. The next second, Whitebeard appeared above Guy. Sixth form tempest kick. Whitebeard's legs kept dancing, and bright silver rays of light flew out and blew towards Guy. Guy clenched his fists, gathered momentum, and released it. Boom. The two airflows began to collide, and the roar of the airflows resounding throughout the training ground. 
Naruto looked at the scene in front of him in surprise. The airflow caused by the collision blew around, causing Naruto's face to hurt. But Naruto didn't seem to feel any pain, instead staring at the scene in front of him with wide eyes. He originally thought that the strongest person in the world was the one who was best at ninjutsu, but the image reflected in his pupils made his heart change. Physical skills can turn out to be so strong? Advertisement. The two figures intertwined and collided wildly, and Whitebeard shouted out six moves from time to time. As the battle intensified, Guy became increasingly frightened. To be honest, at this stage of his current strength, he has never met anyone who is better than him in physical skills, and the majestic old man in front of him is likely to shatter the myth of his undefeated physical skills. Boom. There was another collision, and a rumble sounded like rolling thunder in the clouds. The two figures stepped back, looked at each other, and then laughed together. Ha 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 ha. Goo la 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 la. Naruto was a little confused and looked at the excited two people. Although this battle was not hearty, it was still enjoyable, and both of them were very happy. Goo la la la. Thick eyebrow boy, be my son. Naruto was already used to Whitebeard's words, but Guy was still confused. Ha, ha, Mr. Whitebeard, did I hear you correctly? Guy asked doubtfully, still breathing heavily. You heard that right. I have countless hot-blooded idiot sons on my ships, and you are a perfect fit there. Sons? Naruto and Guy were confused, and Naruto asked, Dad, how many sons do you have? Whitebeard touched his chin, hmm, there must be thousands of them, I can't count them either, goo la la la, so many. Naruto's eyes widened and his jaw dropped. Looking at the extremely heroic Whitebeard, for some reason, Guy felt a yearning in his heart, but he still rejected Whitebeard. Mr. Whitebeard, thank you very much for your appreciation, but I also told you that I will get seasick. Guy's figure disappeared into the night in an instant. What a pity. Such a good man was simply born for the sea. Advertisement. Chapter 10, Danzo. Advertisement. Guy fled into the night. Whoosh. Standing on a big tree, he looked back at where Whitebeard was, feeling a little warm in his heart. He saw emotions in Whitebeard's eyes that he hadn't seen in years. The last time I saw eyes like that was when Mike Guy looked at him for the last time before he died. Father, huh. Guy murmured in his mouth, then laughed to himself and returned home. Dad, Teijutsu is so powerful, I want to practice Teijutsu. Naruto was jumping up and down with excitement on his face. The brief fight between Whitebeard and Guy made Naruto very interested in Teijutsu. Normally, Naruto has been studying clone technique, but has not made any progress, and has also fallen behind in the practice of Teijutsu. Nowadays, the training of picking up physical skills can be said to be the return of the prodigal son. Whitebeard rubbed Naruto's head and said with a smile, No problem, but now, I have to deal with some rats. Rat. Naruto was confused. I saw Whitebeard yelling at a place, the rat hiding in the dark? Why don't you come out yet? As Whitebeard drank violently, several figures slowly emerged from the night. Mr. Whitebeard is really astute, but your perception doesn't have any chakra fluctuations. I don't know how you do it. An old man with a cane and his body covered with bandages came out. The old man was accompanied by two umbu. Seeing umbu, Whitebeard frowned. I am Shimura Danzo, the elder of Kanaha village. I haven't asked for advice yet. Although Danzo said this, he had a stinky face. I don't know if it was because of Whitebeard's words about mice hiding in the dark. Advertisement. As soon as Whitebeard took one look at Danzo, he knew that this was not a good person. Hey, he doesn't look like a good person. What did you say? Umbu next to Danzo took two steps forward. Um, Whitebeard turned his eyes to the Umbu who spoke. With just one glance, Umbu's movements stopped for an instant. He seemed to see thousands of evil spirits surrounding Whitebeard, and then showed their ferocious faces towards him. No no, the Umbu was trembling constantly, and his eyes under the mask revealed deep fear and uneasiness. Another Umbu quickly injected Chakra into his body to break the illusion. But he discovered that he was not under the illusion at all. Danzo's face became increasingly gloomy, and he looked at Whitebeard, Mr. Whitebeard, please forgive my men for their rudeness. After hearing what Danzo said, Whitebeard looked away. In an instant, the frightened Umbu felt that the evil gaze disappeared, and his body became much more relaxed. Listening to his men breathing heavily, Danzo felt very unhappy. This time he was so embarrassed and embarrassed, Whitebeard snorted coldly. He didn't have a good impression of things like Umbu. I don't know what your purpose is, but I know that you are delaying me from teaching my son. Listening to Whitebeard say the word son, Naruto's heart felt warm. Danzo twitched the corner of his mouth, feeling both happy and worried. He was happy that third generation's long-term plan seemed to be aborted, but he was worried that the village's strategic weapons seemed to be abducted. I came here just to talk to you. After all, you are just a foreigner. Uzumaki Naruto is a talent that the village has cultivated for a long time, and he also has special significance to Kanaha. Bandage Kid. Whitebeard spoke directly, interrupting Danzo. Bandage, Bandage Kid. The wrinkles on Danzo's face trembled a few times. How many years has it been since he was called a kid? This is my Whitebeard's son, my son, it's not the turn of a disabled person like you to point fingers. Advertisement. Such naked ridicule made Danzo's facial muscles begin to twitch. Unforgivable. Lord Danzo. The two Umbu seemed to be very young, in a very intense mood, and very angry at Whitebeard's remarks. Danzo's eyelids moved, signaling for the two of them to attack. The two figures moved forward at great speed, the ninja swords in their hands shining with light. Gur, too slow, too slow. Whitebeard grabbed the bushyunch next to him and scraped it forward. Zhang. A strong sword light lit up, and a harsh sound erupted. Danzo's figure jumped high and flew in the air, while the two Umbu's bodies below were broken into two parts. Call. The fierce and strong wind blown by Kong Yunki has not stopped yet, blowing on the pond nearby, and a wave of waves was stirred up. Danzo was horrified by Whitebeard's strength, but there was more excitement in his eyes. He moved his hand to the bandage on his face. Just lift off the bandage and activate the most powerful illusion, distinguished heavenly gods, to control Whitebeard. With the current bond between Whitebeard and Naruto, controlling Whitebeard is equivalent to indirectly controlling Naruto? Kill two birds with one stone? The advantage is mine? Danzo's heart felt hot. In this case, he could be promoted to Hokage, obtain nine tails, and reach the pinnacle of his life. However, at this moment, Whitebeard's eyes were very sensitive to the bandage on Danzo's face. There is an ominous aura under your bandage Whitebeard's voice was low. That ominous aura made even Whitebeard feel a little dangerous, the kind that could cause him to fall prey if he wasn't careful. Danzo was shocked. 
He didn't expect Whitebeard to be able to sense this. Advertisement. This kind of perception is too exaggerated. There is no way, since this Whitebeard feels something, then he must control it. Danzo's fingers have already dug into the gap between the skin and the bandage. As long as he pulls down, the Sherry Non will be revealed. However, Whitebeard had already had a premonition. His eyes flickered, his legs swung up, and he approached Danzo at an extremely fast speed. So fast? When Danzo noticed, Whitebeard was already in front of him, and Kong Yunki was even closer, it takes time to activate distinguished heavenly gods, and it is obviously not possible now. Kong Yunki stabbed Danzo straight in the chest, and blood bloomed in the air, dyeing the untied bandage on Danzo's arm red. The loose bandage was stained with blood red, showing a strange beauty under the bright silver moonlight. Thump. Danzo's body fell to the ground, and Whitebeard also landed at the same time. He raised his arms and shook off the blood on Kong Yunkai. It's so weak. Whitebeard twisted his neck. The few moves just now weren't even a warm-up. Naruto ran over. Dad. Are you okay? Whitebeard shook his head. It's okay. Just as Whitebeard was about to leave, Danzo's body suddenly began to disappear. What? Whitebeard looked shocked, and hit the disappearing Danzo corpse hard with his cloud cutter. A big hole was made in the ground, but nothing was hit. Whitebeard. His strength is really astonishing. An extremely weak old voice came from afar. I saw Danzo standing in the distance, looking weak. Just now, at the critical moment, he untied the bandage on his arm, activated his anagi, and then came back to life. Advertisement. Chapter 11 Remembering Some Old Friends. Advertisement. Thinking of this, Danzo felt scared in his heart. If it had been a little later, I'm afraid he wouldn't even have time to activate his anagi and would have been killed by this exaggerated Naginata. Whitebeard frowned. He relied on his sense of perception to know that he had indeed stabbed Danzo to death just now, but now, this Danzo has suddenly come back to life. The ability to resurrect from the dead is very rare in the new world. Whitebeard murmured. Such people are still openly hostile to him and Naruto, and they can't do anything until they are resolved. Thinking of this, Whitebeard's face showed a fierce light, and Kong Yunki also gave off a cold light. Danzo felt the majestic killing intent, and a feeling as if he was being targeted by a beast swept through his heart. This guy, is really like a beast. There was deep fear in Danzo's eyes, and then he formed a seal with his hands. We'll meet again later, Whitebeard. After saying that, Danzo directly used Earth style to escape underground. Whitebeard flew over with a moonwalk, but found that Danzo's aura was no longer around. TCH, these ninjas are not very strong, but their escape skills are top-notch. Whitebeard waved Kong Yunkai very angrily. However, he was unhappy because Whitebeard had a very heroic spirit and didn't take people like Danzo too seriously. Soon he returned to his previous state. He came to Naruto and said directly, continue to practice. Hey, Naruto thought that after going through so many things, he wouldn't need to practice anymore. You brat, don't you want to learn the six styles? Advertisement. Think about it. Naruto's eyes shone and he nodded wildly. Whitebeard smiled, and then told Naruto the training method of six styles, iron body. Because of nine tails, Naruto's mastery of ninjutsu is not ideal, but his physical skills are not affected. Under the guidance of Whitebeard, the strongest man in the world, Naruto quickly mastered the essentials of the iron body. Iron body. Naruto used iron body and his body became still. Whitebeard stepped forward and touched it. There are no changes except that the muscles are a little tighter. Iron body proficiency is directly linked to muscle strength. Naruto's current muscle strength cannot be as hard as a normal iron body. Whitebeard told Naruto this principle, and then said that as long as Naruto was willing to exercise and eat a lot, he would soon be able to obtain an iron body as hard as steel. Naruto nodded excitedly after hearing this, and then continued his training. The moon slowly climbed to its peak. Whitebeard looked at it and guessed that it was already midnight and it was almost time to rest. But at this time, a small figure came from a distance. Suzuki. Crane tail. Both men expressed surprise at the other. Suzuki, why are you here? Naruto immediately got up from his push UPS and pointed at Suzuki and yelled. Whitebeard looked at Naruto's appearance and smiled. Being able to sense the emotions of others, Naruto was not angry inside, but felt happy. The same goes for the indifferent Suzuki. Suzuki put one hand in his trouser pocket and said with a cool posture, I still want to ask you, Crane Tail, this is the training ground of the Achiha tribe, and... Suzuki looked at Whitebeard who was smiling, why are you bringing a big guy here? Advertisement. Naruto originally wanted to refute the title of Crane Tail, but when Suzuki said Whitebeard's face suddenly lit up with joy, he's my daddy. Naruto crossed his arms, very happy. Dad, is his surname also Azumaki? Suzuki's eyebrows suddenly lowered. For some reason, he felt a little unhappy when he learned that Naruto had a father. No, he is my father. My father's name is, love, what is love? Naruto thought hard and raised the goggles on his forehead to hide his embarrassment. Knowing that Whitebeard was not Naruto's biological father, Suzuki felt better for some reason. Idiot, you don't even know his name and you treat him like someone else's son. Suzuki showed a sneer that could charm thousands of girls. What did you say? You bastard Suzuki. Naruto shouted, baring his teeth and claws to rush towards Suzuki. Whitebeard caught Naruto who was about to run. Gulalala, you must be my son's friend. My name is Edward Newgate. Not friends. Naruto and Suzuki said in unison, and then their eyes became hostile to each other again. Suzuki reacted at this time and looked at Whitebeard's exotic face again. Edward, are you from the Kingdom of Thunder? People over there in the Kingdom of Thunder also have such strange faces and names. Naruto scratched his head, Thunder, the Kingdom of Thunder, where is it? Suzuki snorted coldly, it's indeed the end of the crane. The Kingdom of Thunder is in the northeast of the Kingdom of Fire. Where did you study geography? Hearing Suzuki talk about geography, Whitebeard's eyes lit up. Cold brat, it seems like you are very good at geography. Listening to Whitebeard's powerful voice, Suzuki was stunned for a moment, and then nodded, it's not bad, better than a certain crane tail. Naruto clenched his fists and a tic-tac-toe symbol appeared on his forehead. Whitebeard breathed a sigh of relief. Finally, someone knew some geography. He had been here for so long and still didn't know where on the red line or on which side of the four oceans this place was. I just want to know where on the red line this is. How far is it from the Grand Line? Naruto also looked at Suzuki curiously. He also wanted to know what the Grand Line was that his father had been talking about. Advertisement. Is that magnificent sea that daddy talks about really so fun? However, what surprised the two of them was that Suzuki looked confused. Red Line. Grand Line. 
I have never heard of it at all. Naruto looked disdainful. You bastard Suzuki, you don't understand and you still pretend. Suzuki looked at Naruto unhappily. I think your skin is itchy. Whitebeard grabbed Naruto who was about to fight, his face full of solemnity. Is this place really so closed off? Are you near the sea? Whitebeard continued to ask. Suzuki said, the village is not close, but the fire country we are in has the ocean to the east. Whitebeard continued to ask, if there is a sea, then there should be a marine, right? Without marine, few would be fighting at sea. What is this continent called? Ninja Realm Continent. Suzuki was getting more and more confused. This big man asked common sense questions, and every time he answered, he would fall into deep thought. Whitebeard pondered, his expression solemn. Naruto also realized something was wrong with Whitebeard and looked at Whitebeard with worry. Dad, what's wrong? After a while, Whitebeard made a move. He stretched out his huge hand and rubbed Naruto's head. Naruto raised his eyes, and he could see that his father's expression became extremely complicated. Naruto didn't know how to express this expression. Whitebeard looked at Naruto who was looking at him worriedly for a few seconds, sighed, a trace of regret and relief came out of that breath, and then said with a doting look on his face, It's okay, I think of some old friends. Advertisement. Chapter 12 The Strength of the Physical Body. Advertisement. Suzuki felt that Naruto's so-called father was a bit strange. Not only did he not understand anything, he had never heard of what he said. But Suzuki didn't care too much. He came to the training ground so late not to chat, but to enhance his strength as soon as possible. Defeat that man? Thinking of this, Suzuki's originally quite relaxed expression became clouded again, and a feeling of hatred also spread out. Naruto thought Suzuki was trying to be cool and ignored him. Feeling Suzuki's suddenly gloomy heart, Whitebeard thought thoughtfully. Sieve. Suzuki's body moved forward quickly and he began to punch and kick the wooden stake in front of him. Suzuki's fists and kicks hit the wooden pile with a loud bang, and wood chips kept flying out. The skillful Uchiha fluid technique is displayed vividly. Naruto, who was not happy with Suzuki, couldn't help but become stunned when he saw this scene. Ho ho ho. Naruto heard Whitebeard's laughter and turned around and asked, Dad, what's the problem? Call. Whitebeard stood up suddenly, his tall body directly covering the silver moon. A dark shadow enveloped Suzuki. Suzuki's hatred and anger dissipated a lot the moment he saw Whitebeard's huge body. W what are you doing? Suzuki took two steps back. Without him, the sense of oppression that Whitebeard gave him was too strong, especially the crisscrossing wounds under his cloak, which reflected that this giant climbed out of a mountain of corpses and a sea of blood. Glalalala, cold little devil, you are practicing like this, aren't you afraid of injuring your body? Advertisement. Suzuki didn't expect that Whitebeard spoke out of concern for him, but Suzuki looked disdainful. In his eyes, Whitebeard was most likely an old man with some kind of mental illness. A crazy old man came to give him advice, do not make jokes. Seeing that Suzuki didn't care, Whitebeard wasn't annoyed either. He looked at Suzuki's fists and feet and pointedly pointed out. I'm guessing that you feel muscle soreness and periods of weakness right now. Suzuki was shocked when he heard Whitebeard's words. Whitebeard continued, this is caused by your overtraining. Your current body does not support such high intensity exercise. Suzuki pointed at Naruto, who was doing push UPS with a huge bushinary on his back. What about this idiot? Why can he practice like this? Everyone's training methods are different. If you don't want to become disabled, I advise you to go back and rest early. Advising Suzuki to go back and rest, in Suzuki's current extreme character, is to persuade Suzuki to let go of his hatred for Uchiha Itaki. A rage arose within Suzuki. Do you think you know it well, old man? Suzuki's eyes became colder. What did you say? Suzuki. Naruto was shocked and angry when he heard Suzuki call his father that way. In his heart, even though they had only been together for less than a day, Whitebeard's status in his heart had already surpassed that of everyone else, including this Suzuki whom I have always cared about. Naruto's eyes widened, and his sharp teeth matched the ferocious beard. He looked like a beast, which really frightened Suzuki. Naruto, you continue to train. Whitebeard said, there was no other way, Naruto could only close his eyes and continue to do push UPS hummingly. Suzuki was shocked again, everyone knew how naughty Naruto was, even the third Hokage-sama couldn't control him. How long has it been? Are you being treated docilely by a foreigner? Whitebeard continued the topic just now. He grinned, his white teeth shining bright white. It seems like we need to let a kid like you know what it means. Emperor of the Sea. Advertisement. Whitebeard's eyes widened, and the momentum in his body began to rise. Conqueror's hacky. Start up. Boom. It was like a thunder exploded in Suzuki's heart, and an extremely majestic momentum suddenly spread out, sweeping around like a wave of air. Not only that, there seemed to be a layer of golden light surrounding Whitebeard, giving him a layer of aura that could make people lose their fighting power just by looking at it. Suzuki's mouth opened wide and his eyes widened. Fear, hope, admiration, jealousy, countless emotions are entangled in Suzuki's heart. He wanted to leave and escape Haki's influence, but Suzuki found that his legs couldn't move. Whitebeard accepted Haki, and it took him less than 10 seconds to perform Haki, but Suzuki felt like an hour had passed. Thump. As if he had been pardoned, Suzuki fell to his knees and took a deep breath. Although he was embarrassed, Suzuki's contempt for Whitebeard was gone now. In fact, Suzuki also knew that practicing blindly by himself would not be very effective, and on the contrary, he might suffer hidden injuries. But there is no way, he is alone, he has to practice, right? Therefore, Suzuki has always been eager to graduate as soon as possible. As long as he graduates, he will have a Jonin teacher. What he lacks is someone who can guide him on the path to becoming stronger. But now, this person seems to have been found in advance. Suzuki stared at Whitebeard with burning eyes, and the desire to become stronger in his heart began to expand extremely. Old man, you are very strong. Suzuki slowly stood up from the ground. Under the bangs that were wet with sweat, there was a pair of extremely blood-red eyes. Seeing those eyes, Whitebeard was startled. The cold aura coming from these eyes was exactly the same as that of the disabled man named Shimura Danzo. Are these two people family? Whitebeard looked at Suzuki's extremely serious eyes and said, Why, do you want to be my son too? Advertisement. Suzuki was a little strange about Whitebeard's habit of recognizing his son. He shook his head and said in a very domineering tone, I want you to help me become stronger. What an arrogant brat. Whitebeard crossed his arms. He had seen many people with Suzuki's temperament. Many also became his crew. As for Suzuki's rudeness, Whitebeard didn't care at all. Whitebeard stretched out his huge palm and hooked his hand, come over and attack. Suzuki was stunned for a moment, then his face lit up. Okay, I'm on it. 
Suzuki's eyes widened, the chakra in his body began to activate, and then he quickly ran towards Whitebeard. Suzuki flew in front of Whitebeard's head, spinning his body and hitting Whitebeard with fists and kicks like raindrops. Bang, bang, bang. Whitebeard didn't move, letting the fists and kicks hit him in the face. As he continued to fight, Suzuki became more and more surprised. The hardness of this Whitebeard's body is simply not that of a human being. It's as if there is a steel plate embedded deeply under Whitebeard's skin. At this time, Whitebeard spoke. You have good fighting skills, but unfortunately, you have neglected to develop your body. I have to say, it is a pity. Suzuki fell to the ground and said with some suspicion, the teacher at the school said that our current stage is to learn ninjutsu. Whitebeard raised his head, and a burst of hearty laughter burst out from his throat, gula la la la. Listening to Whitebeard's strange laughter, Suzuki frowned. I don't know what you call ninjutsu, but I know that as long as the physical training reaches a certain level, all the tricks will disappear. Just as Suzuki was thinking about what Whitebeard said, a huge shadow fell in front of him. Whitebeard stretched out a finger and touched his forehead. See the strength of the physical body. Advertisement. Chapter 13 Meeting Nine Tails for the First Time. Advertisement. Boom. Suzuki's figure flew backwards like a cannonball, his body rolled continuously on the ground, and only stopped after hitting a big tree. Naruto was a little worried. Although he couldn't bear to see Suzuki being such a jerk, he was still worried about Suzuki in his heart. Whitebeard sensed Naruto's worry and said, It's okay, I used a lot of strength. Naruto, looking at Suzuki's slumped belly, he didn't look like a normal person at all. Whitebeard walked over slowly and looked at Suzuki condescendingly. Suzuki felt the pain in his body. He raised his head and said angrily, Asshole, are you going to kill me? Whitebeard grinned, With such an injury, you can't exercise anymore, right? After listening to Whitebeard's words, Suzuki was stunned for a moment, and the scowl on his face instantly solidified. Huh. Whitebeard picked up Naruto and put it on his shoulder, then turned around and said cheerfully, This kind of injury is enough for you to recover for a few days. Stop practicing for a few days. Come back to me after you have recovered. Suzuki felt the pain in his body, and felt even more frightened in his heart. Whitebeard's finger seemed to have been calculated. When he rolled on the ground and hit a tree, there were only superficial injuries and no internal injuries at all. But such an injury made him extremely painful, so painful that whenever he moved, he would grimace in pain. Under such circumstances, normal life is unbearable, let alone cultivation. This is exactly what Whitebeard said, he needs to cultivate himself for a few days. Thinking of this, Suzuki felt surprised again. Suzuki didn't expect that Whitebeard injured him because he was caring about him. Although he grimaced in pain, for some reason, Suzuki couldn't hate Whitebeard in his heart. Instead, he felt a warmth lingering in his heart. Seeing Naruto sitting on Whitebeard's back and laughing, a trace of unnoticeable envy arose in my heart. Advertisement. It was already late at night, there was no nightlife in Kanaha, and the surrounding streets were very quiet. Under the leadership of Naruto, Whitebeard came to Naruto's home. However, as soon as Naruto went upstairs, he was immediately confused. Dad, can you go in? Naruto looked at his door and felt a little numb. Otherwise, it's because Whitebeard's body is so huge that Whitebeard can only stretch half of his body through the door of a normal person's house. And even if he managed to get in, Whitebeard wouldn't be able to stretch out under the 2 to 3 meter height limit in the house. Seeing the shame on Naruto's face, Whitebeard chuckled and patted Naruto's head. Silly boy, I don't blame you. You go to sleep first. I can just sleep outside on the street. Dad, thank you. Stupid son, do you still need to talk about these things between father and son? Naruto's face turned red with excitement, and he shook his head, I don't know, because I haven't met my parents. Looking at Naruto's appearance, Whitebeard said nothing, just rubbed Naruto with a smile. The warm touch from the huge hand made Naruto feel like he was in a dream. After taking a shower, Naruto lay on the bed. Instantly, a huge feeling of exhaustion swept through his body. After all, he was really tired today. This isn't a dream, is it? Naruto suddenly woke up, was there really such a person suddenly breaking into his life? Is his life really so happy? Naruto quickly looked out the window, and saw Whitebeard's tall figure still standing outside. Soon, Naruto felt relieved. Gradually, Naruto's vision became blurry. Advertisement. Now, I also have a father. Thinking of this, Naruto's lips showed a smile. If this was a dream, Naruto hoped that he would never wake up from this dream. Seeing Naruto sleeping soundly, Whitebeard smiled, then stretched out his huge hand and touched Naruto's belly. He closed his eyes and began to cast observation hacky. The next second, a circle of black runes began to appear on Naruto's belly. Tick, tick, tick. The sound of water drops woke up Whitebeard. He opened his eyes and was slightly surprised by what he saw. I saw that for some reason, he came to a place that looked like a sewer. And the sewer is very large, as if it is not for human beings to pass through, but for a giant beast. Whitebeard looked towards the end of the darkness. He was a little confused, but definitely not afraid. Whitebeard strode forward, and with every step he took, a layer of water stirred up under his huge figure, making a splashing sound. Soon, Whitebeard came to the end. In front of him were vertical iron railings, and in the middle of the iron railings, there was a piece of paper with the word ceiling stuck on it. Whitebeard didn't care about this. What he cared about was that he felt an extremely evil and huge aura from behind the iron railings and in the endless darkness. At this moment, a red streak suddenly appeared in the darkness. When he looked closely, he saw that it was a huge eye. Boom. A huge and sharp claw slammed against the railing. The railing shook, and a huge sound resounded throughout the sewer. The water on the ground also hit Whitebeard's face, and his cloak was blown by the strong wind. The next second, a huge fox head stretched out from the darkness. The fox's eyes were fixed on Whitebeard. The beast's mouth opened slightly, and a strong white gas curled up from the mouth. Oh, he's an outsider. Nine Tails spoke, and in an instant, a strong violent and gloomy aura enveloped Whitebeard. However, what Nine Tails didn't expect was that the tall old man in front of him didn't show any fear. Instead, he showed a very interested expression. Is this the power hidden in Naruto? Interesting, interesting. Advertisement. Whitebeard raised his head and looked directly into Nine Tails' eyes without fear. Hey, Big Fox, I am Naruto's father, Edward Newgate. Why are you in Naruto's body, Big Fox? I am the source of disaster. Nine Tails is also the cause of troubled times. Nine Tails roared angrily, causing ripples on the water's surface. Nine Tails originally thought that he would become famous, but this old man's face would change suddenly if he didn't talk nonsense. However, Whitebeard was not afraid at all. 
Instead, he walked into the iron railing and looked at Nine Tails. Nine Tails isn't it, about the same size as Sea King's. Whitebeard murmured. Seeing Whitebeard walk in, Nine Tails' pupils suddenly shrank. It didn't expect this human being to be so bold, but looking at Whitebeard, Nine Tails' inner bloodthirsty and hostility were aroused. Although Whitebeard is only a spiritual body, if he is really killed by its claws, the person outside will also die. It hasn't killed anyone for a long time, so let's use this human as a fresh one. Hey, Nine Tails, you're the one who prevented Naruto from condensing Chakra, right? Whitebeard remembered that just now, Naruto had clearly condensed Chakra, but the Chakra suddenly became chaotic. I guess it was this fox that caused it. You meddling boy, that's right, it's me. Nine Tails roared, without any intention of quarreling, it raised its claws and swung at Whitebeard. Hey, a strong wind blew, and the water on the ground was blown into a wave. Whitebeard's body appeared in the air and he dodged his claws. At this moment, he saw nine tails with his back facing him, and the nine huge tails covered the sky and covered the sun fiercely towards Whitebeard. Whitebeard showed an excited smile, well done. Nine tails showed a bloody smile. It felt that if these nine tails went down, Whitebeard would definitely be crushed into a meat pie. Whitebeard doesn't dodge or avoid, or it can be said that this is a situation where there is no retreat. An ordinary person would have collapsed at this time, but Whitebeard's eyes were gleaming with excitement. After his body returned to its prime, he had not encountered any decent enemies, and his fists were already itchy. Buzz. A strange sound appeared, and Whitebeard's fist was wrapped in a white mask, with an energy wave that nine tails had never seen lingering on it. Advertisement. Chapter 14 Nine Tails. Be my son. Advertisement. Nine tails showed a bloody smile. The next second, the smile on its face suddenly disappeared, and then turned into panic. It quickly looked back and saw a strong white light blooming behind its butt. Following the white light came an extremely huge vibration. What? Boom. The vibration seemed to explode, exploding directly behind Nine Tails' butt, and Nine Tails' figure was even pushed forward. Feeling the huge push coming from behind, Nine Tails quickly distanced itself. Then it turned to face Whitebeard, getting down on all fours in a fighting stance. Nine Tails' eyes flashed with a hint of fear, the feeling this human made him feel. No less than the humanoid tailed beast first Hokage, Nine Tails looked forward and saw the tall human still standing on the ground. It's just that this human being raised his hands high, his fingers bent and trembling, not knowing what he was doing. The next second, Nine Tails' pupils narrowed a circle, and what appeared in front of its eyes was a scene it had never seen before. Whitebeard's hands grabbed the air tightly, and then a majestic force came from his body and was applied to his arms. Click. There was a strange cracking sound, and blue-white cracks appeared in front of Whitebeard's hands. The cracks were as intricate as spider webs. As Whitebeard continued to increase his strength, the cracks began to widen rapidly. Although Nine Tails didn't know what Whitebeard was doing, he knew at a glance that he was holding back some big move. Coupled with this terrifying aura, Nine Tails didn't dare to lift it up. Its limbs began to dance, and its huge body rushed towards Whitebeard. Go. However, at this time, a dangerous smile appeared on Whitebeard's face. Advertisement. It's too late, Big Fox. After saying that, Whitebeard's hands seemed to have finally torn something apart, and he suddenly fell downwards. Crack. Boom. In an instant, the surrounding air shook, and a very harsh roar came out. The water surface in the sewer was also lifted up by the force. The water rushed straight to the ceiling, and then fell high again, forming a brief drizzle around it. However, the most uncomfortable thing is Nine Tails. Its body is huge, and Shock Fruit's ability is directly applied to Nine Tails' body. Who? Who? Nine Tails let out a painful cry, and the torn space force kept colliding with Nine Tails. If it weren't for the fact that tailed beasts are made of chakra, Nine Tails would have been tortured to the point of being gutted. Finally, Nine Tails compromised. I was wrong. I won't disturb Naruto's training anymore. Nine Tails felt very painful all over, and the chakra on its body was constantly torn and then healed. Call out. Whitebeard's huge figure jumped up suddenly, and then landed next to Nine Tails' head. With the arrival of Whitebeard, the crazy space fluctuations gradually subsided, as if they were spiritual. Feeling the pain gradually disappearing, the panic in Nine Tails' eyes did not dissipate. Nine Tails looked at Whitebeard, with despair, and a hint of disappointment in humans in his eyes. It can guess that what Whitebeard wants to say is nothing more than lending him power, or strengthen the seal and ask Nine Tails to act like livestock and not move around. A trace of lament flashed through Nine Tails' heart. Old man, your view of human beings is so one-sided. Human beings are the most greedy creatures in the world. None of them. Whitebeard looked at Nine Tails' struggling and complicated eyes. A smile appeared on the corner of his mouth, and a surge of pride surged in his heart. Advertisement. Nine Tails, be my son. The heroic voice has a very high decibel, echoing in this endless spiritual space. Nine Tails looked at Whitebeard blankly, and its heart was already filled with turmoil. Nine Tails has the ability to sense malice. It can sense that this human being named Edward has no malice towards it in his heart. No hostility whatsoever. You are pretty good. My new pirate group still lacks a talking fox. Whitebeard said very seriously. Nine Tails took a look at Whitebeard's extremely serious face. Is this human actually serious? For a moment, Nine Tails didn't know what to say. Resist. Can't beat it. Compromise. Nor is it Garama's style. I, I refuse. After speaking bravely, Nine Tails head shrank slightly, and then looked at Whitebeard with bared teeth. Deeply afraid that Whitebeard would use that strange ability again, he punched him. However, Whitebeard did not make any move, only a look of regret on his face. What a pity. Your life will lose a lot of excitement. Nine Tails. I don't need it. Then, Whitebeard jumped off Nine Tails and walked out of the iron railing. Whitebeard knocked on the iron railing. Isn't this thing annoying? Nine Tails said nothing, just stared at Whitebeard's movements. Whitebeard turned around and looked at Nine Tails with serious eyes. Sooner or later, I will dismantle this thing. After saying that, Whitebeard disappeared. Soon, the surrounding air returned to silence, leaving only the sound of water drops. Edward, ah, uh, what a self-righteous guy. Advertisement. Nine Tails' voice echoed in the quiet space. Whitebeard opened his eyes, surrounded by a silent night, and Naruto was still sleeping soundly. He was too tired after the day. Unless someone shook him wildly, he probably wouldn't have woken up from the earthquake outside. Whitebeard looked into the darkness, you've been following me furtively for so long. Is this how you ninja behave? Both Umbu and Shimura Danzo act in this secretive way. A figure walked out, and the moon came out of the clouds, spreading the moonlight. 
the figure gradually appeared. Whitebeard's expression didn't change. He recognized this person as the ninja who was at the ramen restaurant just now. Kakashi scratched his head, looked at Whitebeard's puzzled expression, and said, Oh it seems that Mr. Edward doesn't know much about us ninjas. Kakashi's eyes sparkled with an inexplicable light. Whitebeard is so strong, even if he is not a ninja, he should have seen a ninja before. How could you ask such a question? Whitebeard laughed and said, Such a sneaky, soulless, machine-like acting style is indeed very rare. Kakashi was a little ashamed. He even suspected that this Whitebeard was an alien. So what does Mr. Edward think of our Kanaha Shinobi village? White-haired brat, if you have anything to say, just say it. What do you want from me? Whitebeard didn't like to mince words like this, so he made it clear. He is such a generous person. I wonder how he will compare with Jirei Yasama? Due to some misunderstandings and Naruto's relationship, we couldn't ask questions. I'm here to ask you, Kakashi said, taking out a notebook from his pocket. Opening the notebook, Kakashi's voice sounded. Which country are you from? What is the purpose of coming here? And why are you approaching Uzumaki Naruto? Advertisement. Chapter 15 You Will Regret It. Advertisement. Whitebeard looked at Kakashi with a strange light in his eyes. Kakashi didn't know why, but he could feel a hint of interrogation in this look. Kakashi felt a little ridiculous, a sense of shame for no reason. Love, Mr. Edward. Whitebeard did not answer Kakashi's question, but said directly, Are you feeling guilty? Kakashi's pupils shrank and he looked at Whitebeard in disbelief. I can feel that you feel guilty about Naruto, both now and at the ramen shop. Whitebeard looked at Kakashi, and the smile disappeared from his face. Kakashi stopped talking, and the trace of surprise in his eyes was instantly covered by guilt. I, Naruto, am my teacher's son. Kakashi hesitated for a moment before speaking. Who is Naruto's biological father? Whitebeard asked. His father, as the third generation Sama said, he was the hero who saved Kanaha. Kakashi looked up at the full moon in the sky, not knowing what he was thinking. Hero, is this how your village treats the children of heroes? Whitebeard showed a rare sarcastic look. Kakashi said nothing, but continued to look up at the sky. Whitebeard continued, what about you? Since you feel guilty about Naruto, why didn't you help him? When he was at the ramen shop, he looked at you with a strange look. Kakashi had nothing to say. He lowered his head and didn't know what he was thinking. <laughs> Whitebeard smiled, people like you are not qualified to stay on my ship. Listening to Whitebeard's words, Kakashi's figure seemed to become more depressed. Whitebeard stopped looking at him and sat down on the street, leaning against a solid wall. Advertisement. Kakashi looked at Whitebeard and then at where Naruto's room was. Finally, he seemed to have made a decision and stepped forward and said, Mr. Edward, Naruto is of great significance to the village. The village will not let you take him away like this. Kakashi could tell that Whitebeard was not the kind of person who liked to follow rules and regulations, and would definitely take Naruto out in the future. Soldiers will block you, water will cover you, and I, Whitebeard, have never been afraid of anyone. After Whitebeard finished speaking, he stared at Kakashi's eye that was covered by the forehead protector. This eye of yours gives me a very strange feeling. Tell me. Kakashi opened the forehead protector, and a very blood-red eye appeared. These are the eyes entrusted to me by my old friend. There was a hint of reminiscence in Kakashi's eyes. Whitebeard continued to ask, what are these eyes? Kakashi looked at Whitebeard suspiciously. This old gentleman seemed to really know nothing. Sherinan is not a very secret thing, Kakashi also told the origin and history of Sherinan. Can you have powerful power just by inheriting blood? It's really convenient. Whitebeard commented. The existence of blood inheritance boundaries undoubtedly greatly increases the continuity and strength of a family. Whitebeard was also a little surprised by Sherinan's abilities such as replication, dynamic ability enhancement, and illusion. Such eyes are no different from a relatively good devil fruit, and there are many such eyes in the Uchiha tribe. If this family hadn't been wiped out, Whitebeard would have gone to fight in the Uchiha tribe's land. Whitebeard thought of the gloomy guy named Danzo. He felt the same cold aura as Sherinan in that guy named Danzo. Do you know who Shimura Danzo is? Kakashi was surprised at first when Whitebeard asked about this name. Danzo's name is not to mention Whitebeard, and most of the villagers don't know this person exists. Advertisement. This old man who knows nothing about anything actually knows about Danzo, but Kakashi quickly thought about it. It seemed that Danzo ran up to Whitebeard and made a fuss, and it seems that Danzo must have suffered a loss at the hands of Whitebeard. He is one of the three elders of Konoha and a childhood friend of Master Hokage. Kakashi said this, seeming to mean something. Whitebeard didn't say anything, he was deep in thought. Uchiha was brutally exterminated by his own clan, but as an elder, Danzo had the same aura as Sherinan, so he just kept it hidden. Connecting these two pieces of information, a terrible suspicion arises in Whitebeard's mind. He he he. Whitebeard's rather deep laughter sounded much more normal. Hearing laughter, Kakashi looked over in confusion. The struggle for power is the most boring thing in the world. Whitebeard finished speaking, then leaned against the wall and narrowed his eyes. Kakashi thought about Whitebeard's words in his mind, and then nodded in agreement. Yeah, it's really, very boring stuff. Kakashi's mind was in a trance, as if he had seen the thunder and lightning that night again. The sound of the rope hanging the body rubbing against the beam echoed in Kakashi's mind. Kakashi shook his head, and then left the place in a flash, leaving behind the mission assigned to him by third generation. The task of asking Whitebeard for basic information has not been completed. In the Hokage office, even though it was late at night, the lights were still brightly lit. Danzo, don't you think you are too arrogant now? Third generation said dissatisfiedly as he looked at Danzo in front of him, who asked you to contact Whitebeard without my permission. Advertisement. The third generation was not worried about Whitebeard, but worried that Naruto would be stimulated. During the day, the Naruto Nine Tails chakra overflowed, already making the third generation terrified. If Whitebeard was killed by Danzo, wouldn't Naruto just go berserk? The third generation does not want to see the Nine Tails chaos occur twice in a row during their term of office. Indecisive? You are not suitable to be a Hokage at all. Danzo banged the cane in his hand. However, second Hokage still chose me. A puff of smoke rose from third generation's mouth, and in the smoke was a proud smile. Danzo was so angry that he gave a sharp thrust with his crutch and stood up with his whole body. Do you still think Naruto is still in your hands? Danzo sneered. He found a way to attack Sarutobi. Sure enough, third generation's smiling face disappeared instantly. 
He never imagined that he originally allowed Cloud Shinobi to capture Naruto because he wanted to increase Naruto's favorability. Unexpectedly, a white beard came to cut Hu. Even though he cut off his hair, he formed a bond with Naruto that even the third generation would be jealous of. Thinking of this, third generation clenched his fists, and the new pipe was in danger. Danzo continued to attack, if I had listened to me and cultivated Naruto at the root, Naruto would now be Kanaha's most loyal ultimate weapon. When the time comes, the five major countries won't be a problem. Third generation said haha, if Naruto were to be nurtured, I'm afraid the first person Naruto would kill would be him, Sarutobi Hiruzen, take it, take it. Third generation knocked on the pipe and said, Danzo, you have to remember, I am the Hokage. Hearing this, Danzo's face became more and more gloomy. He stared at third generation fiercely and then opened the office door. Sarutobi, you will regret it. With that, Danzo closed the door firmly. Advertisement. Chapter 16 Deep Fatherly Love. Advertisement. Chapter 16, Deep Fatherly Love. The morning sun shone down and Naruto opened his eyes. The hard training last night made him sleep soundly. When he thought that Father Whitebeard was waiting for him outside, Naruto kicked off the quilt excitedly, and then quickly washed and dressed. With a piece of bread in his mouth and a large bag of bread in his hand, he ran out quickly. Whitebeard leaned against the apartment where Naruto was, eyes closed. Passersby looked at the huge Whitebeard, pointed and walked around. Naruto ran out, knowing that Whitebeard had eaten a lot, and gave all the bread in stock to Whitebeard. Whitebeard suddenly burst out laughing, startling the passersby around him. Whitebeard scooped up a large bag of bread and poured the bread into his mouth like a capsule. Silly son, to become as strong as me, bread alone is not enough. After saying that, he grabbed Naruto without any explanation and put it on his neck. Then he walked directly into the air under the surprised eyes of passersby. At this time, Umbu, who was peeping around, couldn't hold back. Whitebeard's speed was too fast and he couldn't catch up. Naruto happily hugged Whitebeard's neck and asked, Dad, where are we going now? As long as he was with his father, Naruto felt very happy no matter where he went. Whitebeard said, I observed last night, there is a place with a lot of food. A lot of food. Whitebeard found the right spot, took a few steps, and ran straight away. Looking at the words Forest of Death written on the old barbed wire fence, Naruto swallowed. Advertisement. Dad, you remember correctly, right? I remember correctly. There is a strong sense of life inside. With that said, Whitebeard smashed the barbed wire fence with one kick, and then walked in with Naruto. Looking at the primitive forest-like scene around him, Naruto was a little surprised. Because there are so few people coming to the death forest, the ecology is well protected and there are many creatures in it, but it is also full of dangers. Two people, one large and one small, were walking in the forest of death. Son, you have to remember that the process of foraging is also training. Whitebeard said confidently, Really? Back then, for food, I also entered such dangerous forests. In such dense forests, wild beasts and lion majesty are usually elusive and unpredictable. And as long as you stay in such a place for a long time, you will develop a skill that is difficult for ordinary people to acquire, just like, now. Whitebeard suddenly turned around and reached behind him with his big hand, catching a very large and embarrassed Whitebeard in his hand. Woo, woo. The wolf felt that Whitebeard was not easy to mess with and sent out a message begging for mercy. Whitebeard ignored it and just smashed it to the ground and killed it. Let Naruto carry the wolf on his back, and Whitebeard takes him deeper into the forest of death. Boom, boom, ouch. Accompanied by bursts of loud noises and the howls of inexplicable creatures, waves of birds flew away in the forest of death, and the entire ground in the forest of death trembled. Whitebeard and Naruto soon came out of the forest of death. Naruto showed a smiling expression and carried several animal carcasses on his shoulders. Whitebeard was even more exaggerated. The animal carcasses on his shoulders were stacked six to seven meters high. The two found a place to light a fire and started barbecue directly. Sha, sha, ba, ba. Naruto ate hungrily. Whitebeard grabbed the thigh of an unknown animal, opened his mouth wide, and bit off half of it in one bite. For Whitebeard, the only drawback is the lack of his favorite rum. Advertisement. Pick up, dad, I'm full. Naruto lay on the ground holding his stomach and said happily. Whitebeard looked dissatisfied, how can you only eat so much? Only when you are full can you have the strength to practice. Eat some more. Whitebeard discovered that people in the ninja world eat very little, including most ninjas, who only eat a little more than ordinary people. However, if you want to learn Whitebeard's powerful skills, you won't be able to do it without a good appetite. At Whitebeard's request, Naruto stuffed a lot more meat into his cock. Naruto didn't stop until his stomach was stretched into a ball. Well, how can we practice like this? Naruto said, rubbing his stomach in distress. However, before he could say anything else, Naruto noticed that his round belly had become smaller. Observing again, my belly has become smaller again. Apparently, his stomach was digesting the food at an extremely fast rate. At the same time, Naruto also found that his strength had increased a bit, although it wasn't much, it was obvious. Naruto was surprised to find that his body seemed to be a little different from before under his father's influence. Soon, Naruto's belly returned to its previous appearance, and Whitebeard took Naruto to the Uchiha training ground where he stayed last night. Today's training content is very simple, it is physical training. When you are exhausted, you can finish by practicing new abilities. Naruto felt more adapted today than yesterday, not only the intensity of training, but also his own strength. Carrying the heavy soundry, Naruto began to do a thousand push UPS, swim two kilometers in the pond, and run a hundred laps around the training ground. After this set, a day passed. What surprised Whitebeard was that Naruto didn't complain at all from beginning to end. Soon, as dusk approached, Naruto used iron body and found that the hardness of his body had increased a bit. Whitebeard nodded with satisfaction, and then said, Thanks to your performance, I decided to teach you something new. What? Naruto's eyes sparkled. Observation hacky. Whitebeard said, Advertisement. This is also the choice that Whitebeard considers to be the most suitable for Naruto at the moment, combined with the ninja world. Whitebeard's observation revealed that ninjas like to play dirty tricks. The only way to deal with these enemies hiding in the dark is to find them, and kill. As for how to find them, observation hacky is the answer. See, what are you seeing, hacky? Naruto raised the goggles on his forehead. Whitebeard was a little speechless. This son was good at everything, but sometimes he was not very bright. Whitebeard closed his eyes and motioned for Naruto to attack. 
Naruto didn't hesitate, raised his fist and was about to beat his father violently. However, he was surprised to find that Whitebeard could dodge all his attacks with his eyes closed. Okay, so awesome, I want to learn this. Naruto stopped attacking, his eyes shining. Whitebeard took out a piece of cloth and threw it into Naruto's hands. Wrap the cloth around your eyes to make sure you can't see anything. Naruto obeyed and did as he was told. After making sure that the cloth was very stable, he immediately asked, Dad, what's next? Whitebeard was picking out the sticks on the ground, trying to see which one was better. Taking out a wooden stick in good condition and weighing it in his hand, Whitebeard said, If you want to learn observation hacky, you must receive special training. Whitebeard walked up to Naruto. Naruto felt something was wrong and swallowed, What? What training? Now, you have to try your best to sense my attack, and then dodge it. Naruto was stunned for a moment, and then suddenly reacted, What? Boom. The strong wooden stick hit Naruto's face directly. Naruto flew backwards and a red mark appeared on his face. Whitebeard didn't feel any distress about this, because he knew that what hit Naruto was not a stick, but a deep father's love. Advertisement. Chapter 17 Family. Advertisement. Chapter 17 Family. After training for two hours, an exhausted Naruto finally got some rest. In these short two hours, he experienced what a father's love is like. Take a break for half an hour and continue later. Whitebeard said. Naruto's face dropped at first, but he seemed to have thought of something, and then he stopped complaining. He meditated quickly and began to take a rest. Whitebeard looked outside the training ground and saw a familiar person walking on the road. Hey, thick eyebrow brat. Whitebeard shouted to Guy who was walking on the road. Guy's face lit up when he saw Whitebeard, and then he ran to Whitebeard happily. Halfway through the race, Guy sensed something was wrong. Why was he in such a happy mood after seeing Whitebeard? It's different from the feeling when meeting Kakashi. Thinking about it carefully, this kind of pleasure seems very far away and can be traced back to when Might wore it. Guy's face became strange, and Whitebeard's words be my son, seemed very magical. It pops into Guy's mind from time to time. Mr. Whitebeard's physical skills were really exquisite last night. I was thinking about it and ended up here again without paying attention. Guy scratched his head in embarrassment. Whitebeard could sense that Guy was not lying. This brat with thick eyebrows really had the most passionate love for physical arts. Whitebeard didn't hesitate and said directly, since you like it so much, I will teach you the six postures. Even though he knew that Whitebeard was a generous person, Guy never imagined that Whitebeard could be so generous. Advertisement. Guy's expression became serious, Mr. Whitebeard. You can't do it, this is your special skill. Each family in each ninja village is very strict about the supervision of their own skills. It doesn't matter whether they are working behind closed doors or keeping their skills to themselves. Because of this ethos in the ninja world, no one dares to give away their skills to others casually, and it's no wonder that Whitebeard's move would scare Guy. I saw Whitebeard take a step forward, his tall figure covering the sky and the sun, and his eyes showed no doubt. You little brat with thick eyebrows, you are a man I recognize. I've given things to others, and I've never seen anyone refuse them. Whitebeard has a booming voice, and his voice is also full of convincing hacky. Guy's throat trembled, and then he lowered his head. Thank you, Mr. Whitebeard. It has to be said that Guy's physical fitness and physical skills foundation are very good. Guy can master the six postures almost instantly. Moonwalk. Guy's feet continuously kicked in the air, and he quickly rose into the air. Tempest kick. The legs turned into two after images. In the blink of an eye, sharp air flow flew out from the feet, scraping on the ground to form hideous cracks. Shaving, iron body, finger pistol, except paper arts, which is more special and cannot be mastered, all the others are at your fingertips. In fact, Guy can do many actions, but they all require the use of eight inner gates. Eight inner gates are harmful to the body after all. Therefore, the existence of six styles is of great help to Guy. Naruto looked at Guy with a burst of envy, and he consciously wrapped his steps around his eyes, Dad, attack me, good boy, your father is here. Whitebeard threw away the broken stick, picked up another intact stick and charged thousands. Guy released the six postures and leaped in the air wantonly. Whitebeard released his fatherly love with stick after stick, and Naruto accepted it with excitement. Third generation, who had just opened the crystal ball, was stunned when they saw the scene of these demons dancing. There must be a wrong way to open the crystal ball. Advertisement. Telescope technique. After restarting the crystal ball, looking at the still unchanged picture, third generation fell into deep thought. Feeling Ruayu's gaze, Whitebeard snorted coldly. Although he didn't know, he could still guess that the peeper must be the boy Hokage. Whitebeard is not a person who hides his thoughts easily. He raised his foot and stepped on the ground. The ground around him trembled, and then he yelled. Hokage kid, if you spy on me again, I will take Naruto out of the village right now. Who the hell is spying on you? Laozi, this is called surveillance. The third generation was furious, but seeing Naruto's disbelieving expression in the crystal ball, the third generation had no choice but to close the crystal ball. When the sight disappeared, the anger on Whitebeard's face dissipated instantly, and then he looked at Guy next to him who was adapting to the six postures. You little brat with thick eyebrows, do you want to be my son? Guy was stunned for a moment, thinking that what Whitebeard said before was always a joke. But when he saw Whitebeard's extremely serious face, the rejection he was about to blurt out was swallowed back in his stomach. Guy's brain started to feel a little dazed, and pictures flashed in his mind. The real victory is not defeating the strong. Victory is when you protect your important things until the last moment. Might Guy's body glowed red and he gave Guy a thumbs up. Come on, fight. If your youth doesn't burn, it will be extinguished. Whitebeard roared with great momentum. Slowly, the two figures began to overlap in Guy's eyes. They are all older than him, they all know physical skills, they all taught him their unique skills, and they all inspired him. Guy found his eyes welling up. How many years had he not felt this kind of deep love? The breeze blew gently, blowing Whitebeard's cloak. The black skull looked particularly eye-catching on the curly cloak. Whitebeard's expression did not change, and his eyes were still as calm as before. Guy closed his eyes, then opened them again. Advertisement. Mr. Whitebeard, please let me think about it again. Guy's tone was very calm. Whitebeard also nodded. He would never force others to be his sons. Soon, Guy's figure disappeared. Dad, what are you doing with so many sons? Naruto asked while doing push UPS. This was a question Naruto had been curious about for a long time. Whitebeard looked at the clouds on the horizon, with a look of longing in his eyes, and then the look of longing turned into determination. Family. 
family. Naruto stopped pushing up, a little surprised. He originally thought that someone like his father, Haki, would conquer the entire ninja world or something. As a result, the goal is, family? Whitebeard nodded, my wish is not to become a pirate king, nor to pursue treasure, nor to become the overlord of the world. My wish is to have a family of my own. Then, Whitebeard looked up to the sky and laughed again. Goo la la la. It's not easy to achieve this goal. After finally having dozens of pirate groups, it seemed like everything was going to start over again, but for some reason, Whitebeard didn't feel bored, but felt full of fighting spirit. Just as Whitebeard was laughing, a force rushed to his feet. He looked down and saw Naruto holding his calf. Dad, my dream now is to help Dad fulfill his dream, and then become a Hokage. Listening to Naruto's words, Whitebeard laughed again, Good boy, with your words, I will never forget my dream. The last rays of the setting sun shone on the father and son, coating them with a soft light called family love. Advertisement. Chapter 18 Naruto returns to school. Advertisement. Five days later, Whitebeard found out that Naruto had always been in school, but now the summer vacation was over. Naruto is going back to a place called Ninja School. Originally, Whitebeard felt that Naruto didn't need to go to that kind of place. With him here, why worry about not becoming stronger? But after seeing the pleading and hope in Naruto's eyes, Whitebeard sighed and let Naruto go to school. Boom. Pushing the door open, Naruto's figure appeared and walked into the class. For a moment, the class fell silent. Little Sakura turned her gaze to the window, not wanting Naruto to bother her. Hineda put her head down and kneaded her fingers, her face flushed. Everyone looked at Naruto, some were calm, some were discriminatory, some were disdainful, of course there was more of the latter. They looked at Naruto with a hint of curiosity in their eyes, wanting to see what kind of tricks Naruto would do this time. You know, usually in order to attract attention, Naruto would make some jokes, or shout that he wants to be a hokage or something. Let the whole class be filled with a happy atmosphere. The whole class, except for those rich and powerful kids, the rest of them looked at Naruto with a more or less teasing tone. However, what everyone didn't expect was that Naruto didn't make any noise or play pranks as usual. Naruto's eyes passed in front of everyone very confidently, and he would look at people who would avoid looking at them in the past without fear. Afterwards, Naruto walked to his seat without any humility. This guy, what's going on? After one summer vacation without seeing her, my whole person changed. Hey, it's just a pretense. It won't be long before the demon fox's true colors are revealed. The discussion was loud and there was no intention of hiding anything. Hineda looked at Naruto worriedly. She knew that Naruto would definitely stand up and point at the person who said he was a demon fox and curse him. Then the whole class continued to make noise and treat Naruto coldly and violently. It's like this every year. Hineda lowered her head and rubbed her fingers. She wanted to stop it, but she didn't have the courage to do so. Naruto was completely immune to such verbal violence. Advertisement. In the past, he might have been scolding, but after staying under Whitebeard's love education for a long time, Naruto felt that his whole body had transformed, and with such a father supporting him, what impact would mere rumors have? Seeing Naruto become so calm, everyone was asking for trouble. Shikamaru looked at Naruto with some surprise. He had just planned to stop him if there was a quarrel. He didn't expect Naruto to change like this, which made him curious about what Naruto went through during this summer vacation. Soon, teacher Iruka came in and started class, and the class quickly returned to calm. It's a new semester. I wonder if everyone has practiced well during this summer vacation. Iruka smiled. All the students below looked ashamed, and Iruka showed a true expression. Then, in order to welcome the arrival of the new semester, let me inspire you. Now, let's start the battle test. After all, the students are the future ninjas, and their bravery and fierceness are engraved in their genes. After hearing Iruka's words, they all started gearing up. Arriving at the playground, Iruka began to read out the list. Uzumaki Naruto, battle, Inizuka Kiba. Iruka looked at Naruto with a hint of helplessness in his eyes. Naruto, you didn't forget to practice during the summer vacation. As of now, he has not changed his mind about Naruto. Yet, yeah, you're so lucky. I envy you for being able to fight against this trash Naruto. Inizuka Kiba showed displeasure. TCH, I obviously want to fight that guy Suzuki. Looking at Naruto, Inizuka Kiba sighed, forget it, I might as well hit this guy to warm up. Others were also laughing and joking, no one thought that Naruto would win, Inizuka Kiba, who was a child of a wealthy family, except Suzuki. Except for him, no one knew that Naruto had a giant father. He knew that Naruto had experienced inhuman special training under Whitebeard's hands, and his strength was no longer the same as before. If Inizuka Kiba continues to be so arrogant, he will probably fall into Naruto's hands. Inizuka Kiba and Naruto walked onto the field. Advertisement. Inizuka Kiba took out Akamaru from the hat and put it aside, I won't bully you anymore. In his opinion, using Akamaru against Naruto would be too cruel. Naruto said nothing, looking at Inizuka Kiba with a hint of confidence in his eyes. The two stepped forward and formed the seal of opposition. Iruka raised his hand high and then waved it down. Start. As the words fell, Inizuka Kiba did not move, he hoped Naruto would make the first move. Naruto's body leaned forward slightly, and his legs were also squatting. His legs were like springs that had been pressed to the limit, and Naruto flew out like a cannonball, stirring up a whirlwind on the spot. Whoosh. There was no way to show off one's desires before suppressing them, and there was no deliberate intention to hide one's weakness. Faced with this confrontation, Naruto had only one word in his heart. Dry, in the eyes of everyone, Naruto has turned into an afterimage. What? Inizuka Kiba panicked, he didn't expect Naruto to be so fast, so much so that he was completely unprepared. He hurriedly raised his arms to block, and Naruto's fist came with a bang, boom. The fist hit his arms firmly, Inizuka grinned slightly, this punch, beat his arms until they are numb. Wow, the students who were watching screamed in surprise, and even Iruka looked shocked. With the speed that Naruto just exploded, even he would be hit by Naruto if he wasn't careful. Seeing that his punch was ineffective, Naruto was not discouraged, and his floating body began to spin rapidly. The two legs hit Inizuka Kiba like whips. Advertisement. Crack, crack. After these two blows, Inizuka Kiba's feet retreated continuously. After these few blows, Inizuka Kiba also became angry. I, Inizuka Kiba, am losing face. Inizuka Kiba roared, claws protruding from his hands, and he pounced on Naruto. Whoa, whoa, the claws with two silver tails scraped towards Naruto. Iruka's heart also lifted. Although he was very happy with Naruto's progress, he still didn't think that. Naruto was able to defeat Inizuka Kiba who was a member of a rich clan. However, Naruto looked calm and dodged easily while fighting back. 
However, the more they fought, the more surprised Inuzuka Kiba became. In fact, Naruto's Taijutsu skills did not increase much under Whitebeard. He is just simple. The defense has become higher, the strength has become stronger, and the reaction has become faster, that's all. Inuzuka gritted his teeth and punched Naruto quickly with all his strength. Naruto quickly tilted his head and moved his body, excitement flashing in his eyes. Can avoid it? Can avoid it? Naruto was screaming wildly in his mind. Before, in order to train Naruto's reaction, Whitebeard had blindfolded Naruto's eyes, and when he picked up the wooden stick, he suddenly dropped it. It was euphemistically called Father's Love. At that time, Naruto thought, is this kind of training really useful? And after training for several days in a row, I still feel that there is no progress and I am still getting beaten. It was now during the sparring session that Naruto finally understood the good intentions of Father Whitebeard. In fact, Naruto's reaction had obviously increased under special training, but after Whitebeard saw that Naruto's reaction had increased, he also sped up. This made Naruto feel that he had not made any progress. Now Naruto understood, understood the purpose of the special training. Advertisement. Chapter 19 Niji's Disdain. Advertisement. Chapter 19 Niji's Disdain. Boom. Naruto raised his legs high, and a figure spun in midair, then suddenly fell to the ground. There was silence on the field, and even Iroko was stunned for a while. Two seconds later, a touch of joy spread on his face. Winner, Uzumaki Naruto. Wow, Naruto actually won. It's incredible. Yai is so embarrassed now. Inuzuka Kiba also has a very flamboyant personality, so many people gloat over his defeat. Hineda was very surprised, while Suzuki had a sure enough look on his face. Inuzuka Kiba got up from the ground, his face turned red with embarrassment, and he wanted to retort, but was speechless. Just when he was about to leave angrily, Naruto came over. Inuzuka Kiba can be considered a man. He did not mess up, but said with a look of resignation, You're victorious, are you going to come over and laugh at me? Naruto raised his head slightly, suppressed his inner joy, and stretched out his finger. What are you talking about? Have you forgotten what Iruka sensei said? The seal of reconciliation. Looking at Naruto's two fingers stretched out, Inuzuka was stunned. Then, a smile appeared on his face, I lost, Naruto, next time, I will definitely beat you. Saying that, he also stretched out his fingers and let Naruto pull him up. Iruka's expression changed slightly as he watched this scene, and finally became relieved. This boy Naruto lived up to his teachings? When Naruto came back, everyone looked at Naruto like he was a monster. However, this time his eyes were not filled with disdain and fear like before, but instead were filled with surprise and envy. Feeling the gazes around him, Naruto finally smiled. Advertisement. He knows that he is different now than before. What he didn't know was that the gears of fate had started turning the moment Whitebeard arrived. Whitebeard was completely unaware of the changes in Naruto. At this time, he was walking boredly through the streets of Kanaha. It's such a barren place, yet it's still the strongest ninja village. Whitebeard ignored the surprised looks around him and looked at Kanaha village. With the exaggerated and imaginative architectural style of the pirate world, everything in Kanaha village, they all seemed so inconspicuous and ordinary. At this time, Whitebeard saw a familiar figure not far away. He couldn't help but grinned and revealed a bright white fang. Yo, thick eyebrow brat. Guy was talking to three students when a thunderous voice sounded, startling his three students. Guy turned around in surprise, Mr. Whitebeard. Three students also emerged from behind Guy and looked at Whitebeard in shock. Without him, Whitebeard's height reaches 6.6 .6 meters. In this ninja world where the average height of each person is more than 1.6 meters, he is a giant. Okay, so hi. Xiao Li's eyes were shining. Tian Tian swallowed, a little scared. Niji frowned, he could feel that this tall man was definitely not weak. Are you ready to be my son? Thick eyebrow brat. Whitebeard asked. As soon as these words came out, Niji and the three of them were stunned. What's going on with this old man? Why should they consider their teacher as their son? My guy exhaled. He had actually thought about it these past few days. He looked at Whitebeard and said, Yes, Dad. Well, the three students exclaimed one after another. Guy scratched his head and smiled heartily. Ha 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 ha, it really makes me a little embarrassed. Whitebeard also raised his head and laughed. Goo la la la, you are my second son, Guy. Advertisement. At this moment, Whitebeard suddenly discovered that his strength seemed to have increased a lot. Whitebeard clenched his fists curiously. With his control over his body, this was definitely not an illusion. His strength suddenly became stronger. Whitebeard was a little confused, but he had a generous character after all and quickly put the matter behind him. Whitebeard looked at the three little ones behind Guy. Who are these three brats? Are they your sons? Niji and the other three were speechless, pouting unhappily every day, do I look like a man? Guy laughed heartily, these are all my lovely students. As he spoke, he stretched out his thumb, his teeth shining bright silver. Student, are you a teacher? Guy knew that Whitebeard came from a very far away place, so he took the trouble to explain. Just when the two of them wanted to chat again, Niji suddenly spoke up. Teacher Guy, we still have to pick up a mission. Niji's meaning is obvious, don't waste time here anymore. Guy also had a headache. This Niji was good at everything, but he was very arrogant. Sometimes he even had to refute him as a teacher. Although he usually doesn't care, this is in front of his father, Niji, don't be so rude. Guy suddenly made a face. Niji's expression did not change, but he looked at the Kong Yunkai in Whitebeard's hand. Old man, instead of indulging in ninja games, it is better to accept your fate and accept the fate of being an ordinary person. Niji just looked at Whitebeard with his white eyes. He saw that there was no trace of chakra on Whitebeard. He is simply more ordinary than ordinary people. Immediately, Niji lost any interest in Whitebeard. The oppressive feeling just now was probably just an illusion caused by the huge body. In Niji's eyes, Whitebeard is just a miserable ordinary person who plays ninja games with a big sword and is unwilling to have ninja talent. Guy frowned. He didn't expect Niji to say such a thing. He was about to refute it when he heard Whitebeard suddenly laugh. Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
However, I also hope that you will no longer have any illusions. Ordinary people should just stay in their own cages. Outside the cages, there are vicious birds. As he spoke, Niji's eyes flashed with pain, and his words became more pointed. The faces of those who knew Niji's story also darkened. It was not difficult to tell from Niji's pointed words that Niji seemed to have compromised. Compromised to the family, to fate, to the prison. Guy, Xiaoli, and others don't know how to persuade and persuade Niji to obey the so-called fate? That's too cruel. To persuade Niji to fight, it has to do with the biggest clan in the village, the Haiga clan. As members of the village, it's hard for them to say anything. However, they are members of the village, but some are not. Whitebeard lowered his head and looked at the mature Niji. White-eyed kid, although I don't know what you have experienced, but I know that the so-called fate. It's all bullshit. Xiaoli secretly clenched his fists and agreed very much with Whitebeard's words. Niji, on the other hand, was stunned for a moment when he heard Whitebeard's words, and then a look of anger instantly appeared on his face. His father died for the fate of being a branch house. If you say fate is bullshit, aren't you just talking about his father? Just as Niji was about to say something, Whitebeard made a move. He lifted up his cloak, and in an instant, all his muscles were revealed. The crisscrossing scars and bullet holes on the muscles were extremely hideous, and the scratch in the middle of the chest was the most conspicuous. Niji looked at the devastated body and couldn't help but be stunned. Whitebeard said, My parents have been dead since I was a child, and my hometown has been labeled the Lawless Island. According to your fate, I will never be able to turn around in my life. Niji said nothing, his eyebrows knitted together. However, I refuse to accept this fate. I have been fighting alone in the sea for decades. These are my battle medals and my credentials as Whitebeard, the Emperor of the Sea. You little devil with white eyes, if you follow the so-called fate, you won't survive more than a year in the sea. Advertisement. Chapter 20 Bullshit Fate. Advertisement. Chapter 20 Bullshit Fate. Niji showed a contemptuous smile. I have never heard of the Emperor of the Sea, and no matter how hard you fight, you are just an ordinary person with a tough fist. I guess your hometown is not protected by ninjas, so your life must be very difficult. Whitebeard chuckled, white-eyed kid, you guessed this wrong. My hometown is in my hands and it's going great. Niji had completely regarded Whitebeard as a crazy old man, so he turned around and walked away. As Niji was walking, Whitebeard's voice came from behind. It would not be a pity if the poor bastard who succumbed to his fate dies. The moving legs suddenly stopped, and Niji turned his head. Whitebeard saw Niji turn his head and reveal a smile. He could tell that Niji's outlook on life, coupled with his bitter and hateful face. He must have experienced something painful, and his words were meant to hurt Niji on purpose. Niji's heart was already filled with rage, and Whitebeard's words hurt the softest part of his heart. The blood vessels have bulged around the eyes, making the entire face look extremely ferocious. Old guy, let me let you know how powerless ordinary people are in the face of fate. With that said, Niji jumped up his legs and rushed towards Whitebeard. Guy wanted to step forward to stop him, but Whitebeard looked at him and Guy had no choice but to retreat obediently. At this time, Niji's figure had arrived in front of Whitebeard, and his fist contained chakra and was about to be punched out. Of course, Niji didn't use much force, he just wanted this crazy old man to get to know him well. The gears of fate are not so easily turned. Niji jumped up and punched Whitebeard in the abdomen. Advertisement. Boom. Xiaoli and Tian Tian looked at Niji nervously. They also hoped that Niji could be more gentle, but they really hurt the old man and had a very bad impact. However, what happened next exceeded their expectations. Niji's expression suddenly changed, as if he felt something shocking. Although Niji's palm was not strong enough, an ordinary person would fall over if it was touched, but the white beard in front of him did not move at all. Even the touch on his hand told him that Whitebeard's abdomen was as hard as steel. Niji looked ugly and looked up at Whitebeard's face. I saw Whitebeard putting on a mocking face, as if saying that Niji was not strong enough. Is that it? Then, it's my turn. I'll show you how vulnerable fate is. As he spoke, Whitebeard stretched out a finger and put it on Niji's forehead. You. Before Niji could finish his words, a huge force suddenly came from his forehead. Boom. Niji flew out like a kite with its string broken, and his forehead protector was also blown into the air with a sudden force. The eye-catching caged bird mark is revealed. Seeing Niji being knocked away, Tian Tian and Xiaoli both opened their eyes wide. Niji got up from the ground, with infinite horror in his heart. What was that just now? He did not see the tiniest bit of chakra. Could it be that he is another physical arts madman like Mr. Guy? However, Mr. Guy is also a ninja with chakra. Just when Niji was thinking a lot, Whitebeard walked over with exaggerated steps. The ground seemed to tremble with every step he took. Niji looked at Whitebeard, hiding the uneasiness in his eyes, and he put on a posture. I recognize your strength, but you don't think you can defeat the ninja with just this, do you? Advertisement. Without chakra, the distance between you and the ninja is an unfathomable gap that you can never cross. This is your fate, old man. Whitebeard placed Kong Yunki in front of Guy, hold it for me. Guy reached out to take Kong Yunki, but the moment he took it, his hand sank down. Guy's eyes were startled. He knew that such a huge knife would weigh a lot, but this weight has exceeded his expectations. It can even be said that he does not use such weight in normal strength training. All I can say, is worthy of being a dad? Whitebeard stretched out his hand and hooked it. Come on, you white-eyed brat. Niji's eyes flashed, his body flashed, and he turned into an afterimage and ran towards Whitebeard. Niji was a little disdainful. Whitebeard may have great strength due to his body shape, but his speed is definitely not good. He looked at Whitebeard and his pupils shrank. But he saw Whitebeard's eyes staring closely at him. This old man actually kept up with his speed. No longer doing any other chores, Niji suddenly stopped and came to the back of Whitebeard, and then punched out like raindrops. Under Guy's guidance, Niji's gentle fist is different from the traditional style, but has a little more shadow of the gun fist style. Sharp and changeable, fast and powerful. However, at this time, Niji's eyes were splitting, and his ferocious white eyes were almost staring out. Every punch he threw was empty. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. The sharp sound of breaking through the air continued, but there was no thud of hitting something. Whitebeard's huge body avoids the sharp and changeable gentle fist method like a flexible snake. Xiaoli clenched his fists, his eyes shining. Okay, so awesome. Advertisement. While dodging the attack, Whitebeard looked at Xiaoli. You want to learn? I'll teach you. Niji looked unhappy. Although he was just a genin, he already had the status of a genin, yet he was so despised by Whitebeard. Niji put his feet on the ground a little, came to Whitebeard's head, stretched out his fingertips, and was about to poke Whitebeard. Whitebeard didn't make any move. 
He looked at Niji with a determined look on his face and smiled. The next second, a momentum spread out from the inside out. Niji's movements stopped for an instant, and time seemed to stand still. Niji's ready-to-go hands were raised behind him, trembling continuously. Due to gravity, Niji fell to the ground from midair and then struggled to stand up. If you look carefully, you can see a strong fear in Niji's eyes. Niji. Tian Tian ran out first, and she hugged Niji with a worried look on her face. Niji, are you okay? Xiao Li also ran over, but his eyes still glanced at Whitebeard from time to time. Whitebeard knelt down and looked at Niji. The distance quickly closed, and a strong beast-like breath came from him, which made Niji wake up a little from his fear. He raised his head and looked at Whitebeard's smiling face. At this time, Whitebeard spoke, this is what I got. What? What? This is the power I have gained in the sea for decades. It has no fate or limitations. It all depends on my own hands. Niji was in shock, his white pupils turning, not knowing what he was thinking. Whitebeard stood up, walked towards Mike Guy, and said with some dissatisfaction. You ninjas are so boring. Mike Guy was a little confused. Why did he suddenly involve ninjas? At this time, Whitebeard was seen looking at one place. You ninjas always like to be sneaky. As he spoke, his eyes revealed a coldness. The targeted Umbu secretly used the body flicker technique and left. Advertisement. Chapter 21 Shocked 3rd Generation and Danzo. Advertisement. Chapter 21 Shocked 3rd Generation and Danzo. Report to Lord Hokage. That Whitebeard met with Team Mike Guy and defeated Hayaganiji. Umbu was half kneeling in the Hokage's office. In front of him, the third Hokage was holding a pipe and sitting on the Hokage's seat. Hayaganiji. Also, why does Mike Guy think he is his father? Third generation frowned. He remembered that Hayaganiji was a rare genius among the Hayaga clan. Thinking about it again, Whitebeard came into contact with Azumaki Naruto and Uchiha Suzuki, and alarm bells rang in his heart. Naruto and Suzuki are both unique beings in the village. One is the tailed beast Jinchuriki, so its importance goes without saying. One is the last Uchiha in the village, and bloodline is very important. Whitebeard's contact with these two people has caused high-level discussions. Danzo has proposed several times to send root ninjas and umbu ninjas to encircle and suppress Whitebeard. This was all suppressed by the third generation. First, they wanted to take care of Naruto's mood, but if they accidentally turned dark, his years of plans would be ruined. Secondly, he also briefly fought against Whitebeard. He knew that Whitebeard's strength was definitely not inferior to him, and might even be stronger than him. If they attack rashly, they will probably cause greater losses to Kanaha. Danzo had a sullen face, his focus was not on Niji, but on Mike Guy. As the third generation thinks, Naruto and Suzuki are both unique beings in the village, and does Mike Guy, who calls Whitebeard his father, have any secrets? Otherwise, how could Whitebeard come into contact with Mike Guy? He also adopted Mike Guy as his son. Although Mike Guy is Jonin, compared to Suzuki and Naruto, he still seems underwhelming. Third generation was also curious, and upon hearing Danzo's analysis, doubts arose in their hearts. Could it be that this Mike guy really has some secret? And this secret is important enough for Whitebeard to admit it? Third generation sighed and took out a crystal ball from the drawer. Telescope technique. Advertisement. Danzo also looked over. Third generation started a flurry of operations, and the camera came to a training ground. I saw Guy standing alone in the middle of the training ground, with his eyes closed and his fists on his waist. Danzo and third generation looked at each other, wondering what Guy was doing. At this moment, Guy finally changed. As soon as he opened his eyes, a majestic momentum burst out from his body. A faint green light lingered around him. Third generation and Danzo looked calm. This was Mike Guy's unique secret technique, and they knew it. However, at this moment, the green light on Mike Guy suddenly began to change. Then it turned blue. Third generation and Danzo raised their eyebrows. They had never seen this scene before. Is this move an evolution? Although they have never seen it, they have seen the more powerful momentum. The next second, Mike Guy moved. Susu. Two after images appeared in the crystal ball, and the expressions of Danzo and third generation changed. The pipe that third generation was holding even fell to the ground. Nothing else, just because Mike Guy is so fast. So fast that if it were right in front of them, they would have no chance to react. The third generation's face began to look a little gloomy. Over the years, he dared not say that he knew all the ninjas. But Jonin, he thought he knew it very well. He knew exactly what color each Jonin's underwear was. But what he saw in front of him hit him hard in the face. Advertisement. After all these years, he still doesn't know that Mike Guy has such a trump card. Mike Guy, who is enthusiastic and arrogant, actually hides something from him. Third generation felt a little unhappy. It seemed that he had overestimated his own abilities. Danzo was gloating at the side. Monkey, it seems that your method is not that easy to use. Third generation glanced at Danzo sideways and said, Danzo, I am the Hokage. You? Danzo looked angry and gritted his teeth, wishing he could bite the third generation to death right now. Silently, the two continued to look at the crystal ball. Mike Guy's foot was seen stepping in the air, and a circular shock wave was stirred up, and Guy's figure also rose a little higher. Before third generation and Danzo were surprised, Mike Guy's movements did not stop, and his legs began to slide rapidly. Whoa, whoa. The two legs cut through the air like two black whips, and the next second, two sharp white rays of light shot out. Because of the bonus of eight inner gates, the attack range of Tempest Kick is much larger than that of the original version. Two beams of light, about ten meters long, scraped out like crescent moons and hit the ground hard. Boom. For a moment, two ferocious and deep ravines were blown out of the ground. The moment they hit, a whirlwind surged around them, blowing the surrounding grass into bends. Third generation looked solemn, Danzo's eyes flashed with an inexplicable light, and he didn't know what was going on in his mind. However, Guy's action was far from over. Guy turned his body in the air and stretched out his fist with his head facing down. Boom. Mike Guy's figure plunged directly into the ground, causing a shocking sound. In an instant, gravel splashed, the earth trembled, and even the crystal ball shook a few times. Powerful? From Mike Guy's performance, the two of them could only think of this one word. Advertisement. 
Third generation picked up the pipe on the ground and started smoking. The rising white smoke lingered and entangled with each other. Just like the restless heart of third generation right now, Danzo was a little excited. If Mike Guy was included in the basic system, his strength would be greatly increased. This mere position of Hokage is within easy reach. He looked at third generation, and he found that third generation was also looking at him at this time. Third generation said with a straight face, Danzo, I advise you not to have any evil thoughts. Guy is a good boy and one of the heirs of the will of fire. When Danzo heard this, his face was almost crooked with a smile. Are you still trying to control your will of fire? Guy is even hiding his trump card from you, the strongest Hokage. Danzo stood up and said to third generation, Monkey, you have to think clearly. Guy is just going astray now. If I don't intervene, once he gets stuck in it, it may be difficult to get out. Listening to Danzo's words, third generation also felt powerless. Originally he was very relieved about Guy, but when he saw that Guy was hiding something from him, he couldn't help but become afraid. He was afraid that Guy would be tricked out of the village by Whitebeard. The lack of such a fighting force in the village would give him a headache. He thought for a while and said to Danzo, I don't allow it. When Danzo heard this, his brow stood up, you don't allow it. If you don't allow it, my guy will be kidnapped by that old guy. Third generation did not look at Danzo, but focused his eyes, not knowing what he was thinking. Wait a minute, come with me to find Whitebeard and warn him not to attack people in the village again. Listening to third generation's words, Danzo almost laughed out of anger. With such indecisive methods, where did the shinobi back then go? Danzo shook his head, deep disappointment flashed in his eyes, monkey, you are old after all. Third generation retorted with some dissatisfaction, you are the same as me, Danzo, you and I are different. Danzo thought to himself, and unconsciously touched the bandages on his body. Advertisement. Chapter 22 The Pineapple-Headed Kid. Advertisement. Chapter 22 The Pineapple-Headed Kid. Ninja school is over, and many parents are standing at the door waiting. What is different from usual times is that the parents who are usually short-sighted and competing with each other no longer talk in a buzzing manner. Instead, they all looked at one person invariably, which was a six-meter-tall giant. Whitebeard crossed his arms and stuck the knife on the ground. He was already used to the stairs from around him. Shikaka walked down the street boredly. Originally, the child's mother was always the one to pick up the child, but she went back to her parents' home today, so Luju had to come to pick up the child after a long absence. While he was looking at the rocks on the ground that were being kicked by him, he scratched his head and yawned. Boom. At this time, he realized what he had hit. The very hard touch reached his brain and made Shikaku fall over. Shikaku looked up and saw a very thick thing standing in front of him, whose telephone pole. Touching the painful place where he was hit, Luju wondered, why are there telephone poles on the road? At this time, an old and powerful voice came from above the telephone pole. Pineapple-headed kid, are you okay? The pineapple-headed brat. Chicago slowly raised his head. Just as he was about to complain about this title, he was suddenly choked in his throat and couldn't speak. What came into view was a giant that covered the sky and the sun. It was estimated to be about six or seven meters tall. The crescent-shaped beard looks a little funny, but when paired with that hacky face, it looks so perfect. Advertisement. Under the cloak fluttering in the wind, strong muscles and ferocious scars are looming. Shikaka was a little stunned. When had there ever been such a macho character in the ninja world? I'm afraid even Rakage would be ashamed to wear clothes to cover his muscles in front of him. While the deer was in a state of confusion, Whitebeard pulled it up and asked, Are you coming to pick up the child too? Shikaku nodded in confusion, You, are you too? He wanted to see what this giant's child would look like. Whitebeard nodded, and the beard under his nose twitched, That's right, I'll pick you up, my dear son. Fortunately, it's a son. Shikaku murmured, If it were a daughter, I don't know how irritating it would be to look like Whitebeard. What did you say? Whitebeard turned his head and looked at Shikaku. Oops, speak your heart out? Luju twitched the corners of his lips, and then forced out a smile. I mean, it's good to have a son. The son will take care of people. Just as the two were chatting with each other, the ninja school was over. Jingle bell. The school bell rang, followed by the sound of tables and chairs being moved, and then a bunch of children running out. They ran and poured into the arms of their parents, eyeing Whitebeard curiously as they told their parents what had happened at school today. At this time, Luju's eyes lit up and he quickly reached out and started swinging. Shikamaru. Shikamaru looked confused, Dad. He was not wondering why his father was picking him up, but he was wondering why his father, who usually looked like he was about to die, could look so happy. He looked to the side and couldn't help but twitch the corner of his mouth. It's no wonder that Dad felt so stressed when a giant over six meters tall was talking to him. Shikamaru also ran over. Advertisement. Is this your child? Gulalala? He's not energetic enough, but he is smart. Whitebeard stretched out his big hand and directly covered Shikamaru's head. This kid looked a bit like Marco. A pair of dead fish eyes revealed a sense of calmness and wisdom. I really want to accept him as my son, but it's a pity that he has a father. Thinking like this, Whitebeard looked at Shikaku with regret. Shikamaru showed his dead fish eyes and let Whitebeard rub his pineapple head, but nothing could come out of it. Shikaku was a little surprised. He didn't expect Whitebeard to see the true nature of this kid at a glance. At this time, Whitebeard suddenly waved his hand, and then shouted loudly, Son, here. Shikaku looked over curiously, he wanted to see what Whitebeard's son looked like. Shikamaru also took a breather from Whitebeard's big hand and looked back curiously. In the sea of children, I saw a flash of yellow that was very eye-catching, and their golden hair was beating up and down, rushing towards this side. Shikamaru's dead eyes slowly widened, no. Shikaku's eyes also changed from curiosity to a hint of solemnity. It's actually, that child. He looked sideways at Whitebeard, as if he wanted to see something from Whitebeard. Dad. Naruto yelled as he ran and then wrapped Whitebeard's thighs in a bear hug. Although they hadn't seen each other for only a day, Naruto still missed his father very much. At this time, Naruto finally understood the meaning of the word missing, a word that he had not understood before. Whitebeard chuckled as he grabbed Naruto's thigh and put it on his shoulder. Shikamaru scratched his head strangely. Didn't he say that Naruto didn't have parents? He didn't have a father. Luju glanced at Whitebeard a few times, and his tone was calmer than before. Advertisement. Mr. Whitebeard, is he your son? Whitebeard nodded, yes, pineapple-headed brat, this is my son, Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto sat on Whitebeard's shoulders and also waved his fist. Uncle Pineapplehead, I am Father Whitebeard's son. Luju twitched the corner of his mouth, Uncle Pineapplehead is too unpleasant to hear. Pfft. Shikamaru laughed out loud. 
He looked at his father with some gloating. Dad, that's a good title. Shikaku pinched Shikamaru's face impatiently, then looked at Whitebeard inexplicably and said, Then, let's leave first. Then, he took Shikamaru's hand and left. Whitebeard looked at Shikaku's back for a while, and then said to Naruto, Son, let's go, go to the forest of death to hunt and eat. Naruto raised his arms and shouted, Okay. The voices of the father and son were enough to disturb the people, but the surrounding villagers dared not speak out. They watched Whitebeard carry Naruto on his shoulders, and several moonwalkers left here. Shikaku held Shikamaru's hand, his expression more serious, and he didn't know what he was thinking. Shikamaru looked at Shikaku and asked, Boss, it's Naruto's dad. Is there any problem? Shikaku opened his mouth, about to say something, but then stopped. Shikamaru didn't push him. He knew that when his father wanted to say something, he would naturally say it. Recalling Naruto's happy expression, Shikamaru sighed, it was an expression he had never seen before. Even though Naruto laughed after the prank, there was a hint of loneliness in his laughter. Unlike before, Naruto's laughter was sincerely warm and happy, without a trace of other emotions. At this time, Shikaku spoke, well, you just need to know that Mr. Whitebeard is not a bad person. Shikamaru seemed to understand something, and the two father and son walked towards home silently. Advertisement. Chapter 23 I can listen to everything in the world? Advertisement. Chapter 23 I can listen to everything in the world? In the forest of death, wild beasts were originally rampant, and it was a place full of vitality and everything could come alive. But at this time, they were languid. Many beasts were hiding in the grass or trees, with fear in their eyes. At this time, a high-pitched cry came out. Look at me. I saw a huge body falling from high in the sky, and a fist as big as a casserole hit the ground hard. Boom. The ground shook for a while, then cracked, and a dozen beasts received strength, and their bodies flew into the air unconsciously. Whitebeard looked at the flying beast, stretched out his big hand, and swept it forward. Bah. A dozen beasts were directly embraced by Whitebeard. Because of Whitebeard's huge strength, they even rolled their eyes and foamed at the mouth. Naruto, how's your harvest there? Whitebeard shouted to a place. Naruto walked out of a dense forest, carrying five wild boars on his shoulders. Thump. Five wild boars were thrown to the ground, with dented wounds on their bodies, obviously from being punched by Naruto. Not bad, boy, you've made some progress. Whitebeard said as he lit a fire directly on the spot. Soon, the meat was ready, and the cooked meat was piled aside, forming an exaggerated mountain of meat emitting white smoke. Hey, hey, hey. Naruto tore off a large piece of leg meat with his teeth and chewed it. Naruto felt happy as he felt the Maillard reaction of meat and fat exploding in his mouth. Advertisement. Although he prefers to eat noodles, the satisfaction brought by eating meat is more sufficient. Moreover, after being with Whitebeard for so many days, Naruto also had a very good appetite. He couldn't stand the nutritional value of noodles alone. Whitebeard looked at Naruto's happy smile and couldn't help but smile, follow me, daddy, and I'll make sure you enjoy the food and drink. Then, he also tore into the roasted meat and puffed up his cheeks. At this time, Whitebeard suddenly said, Naruto, eat quickly. What's wrong, dad? Naruto answered vaguely as he was chewing food. Whitebeard looked at a place in the woods, because, there are guests coming now. As Whitebeard's words fell, after a rustling sound, two old figures slowly walked out. Whitebeard looked over and curled his lips. The visitors are none other than Kanaha Village's third Hokage and Shimura Danzo. Wow, Grandpa Hokage. Naruto shouted excitedly after not seeing the third Hokage for many days. The third generation also showed a kind smile and touched Naruto's head. Naruto, how was your school day? Naruto nodded excitedly. Grandpa Hokage, let me tell you, I beat the teeth. The third generation was also surprised when they heard this, Inuzuka Kiva. Naruto nodded heavily. The third generation was really surprised now. Naruto had only been under Whitebeard for less than a week. The strength gained through training can already surpass Inuzuka Kiva. Danzo's eyes also flickered a few times. Third generation touched Naruto's head and said, Naruto, you go to eat first, I will talk to Mr. Whitebeard. Naruto couldn't help but become nervous after hearing this, you, don't fight anymore. Third generation nodded. Advertisement. Naruto looked at Danzo, felt the coldness and greed in Danzo's eyes, shrank his neck, and ran to the meat mountain to feast. Looking at the pile of meat, third generation twitched his lips, and then walked up to Whitebeard. Mr. Whitebeard, we need to talk to you. Whitebeard said while chewing the meat, what do you want to talk about? Your Excellency has been in contact with Uchiha Suzuki, Haiganiji, and Mike Guy, right? Third generation smoked a cigarette and tried to show his harmless side. Whitebeard said bluntly, if you fart, let it go. Whitebeard is not even in a good mood to look down upon the hypocritical third generation and the villainous Danzo. The smile on third generation's face also disappeared with Whitebeard's words. I'm here to tell you that this village is managed by me. Please don't interfere in the affairs of the village. Danzo took two steps forward and said, yes, especially Guy, Kanaha is the place where he was born and raised, and he is also a ninja of Kanaha. I will not allow you to interfere in his affairs. Whitebeard snorted coldly, is this how you behave in Kanaha? It's his choice to recognize me as his father. Seeing that Whitebeard was not getting along well, third generation's face also turned gloomy, Sir Whitebeard, I'm not begging you, I'm asking you, I hope you understand what the locals say, do as the Romans do, gula la la. Whitebeard burst into laughter and said, if the customs in that place are so ugly, then do I have to respect them. Third generation's face was so gloomy that it could drip with water, and the pipe he just bought was crushed in his hand. Danzo was about to say something when Whitebeard suddenly interrupted. Bandage boy, I'm very curious about a question, what is under your bandage? Danzo's years of being a conspirator were not in vain. He said with a red face and a heartbeat. Just like the scars on your body, Lord Whitebeard. Whitebeard raised his head with a joking expression on his face, really. Then, why do I feel a hint of Sheringan's breath from it? Boom, it was like a thunder exploded in Danzo's mind, and he was extremely horrified. Advertisement. How did this old guy know? Does he know the legend of Izanagi? Impossible? According to the intelligence, this old man has never even seen a ninja? How is it possible to know Uchiha's secret technique? Third generation's eyes suddenly became sharp. He looked at Danzo, and his kind aura suddenly became sharper. Danzo's pupils trembled slightly, but his expression remained calm. Sir Whitebeard, it is not the behavior of a gentleman to throw dirty water like this. Whitebeard slowly stood up from the ground. His gradually rising figure blocked the moonlight, causing the already dark surroundings to fall into the rule of darkness. Whitebeard grinned and said with a smile, 
You must be very curious about my abilities, so I will tell you something. I can listen to everything in the world. As Whitebeard finished speaking, taking advantage of the dark environment, Danzo's expression began to change. Whitebeard continued, Not only did I feel Sheringan's breath in your bandaged eyes, I also felt Sheringan's breath in your bandaged arms. After saying that, Whitebeard looked at the sky and showed an imaginary expression. Transplant the eyes on your arm, blah blah blah, you are such a disgusting guy, bandage boy. Danzo turned to look at the third generation. At this time, the third generation was staring at Danzo. The whites of third generation's eyes were bloodshot, with a hint of murderous intent in them. I need an explanation, Danzo. Third generation's voice was very low, completely different from the kind voice just now. Beads of sweat rolled down Danzo's forehead, and he swallowed. He felt the aura of third generation, and a strong pressure swept over him. The heroic posture of the past was finally revealed. He originally thought that after transplanting Sherry Nan and Hashirama cells, he would be invincible against the third generation. But after feeling the momentum, Danzo realized that he seemed to be far behind the third generation. Whitebeard watched the scene with amusement. He liked to see dogs eating dogs and so on. But at this time, Danzo suddenly said, Monkey, I know you have a lot to ask, but I hope you don't forget the purpose of our trip. Advertisement. Chapter 24 Third Generation, Danzo, the advantage is mine. Advertisement. Chapter 24 Third Generation, Danzo, the advantage is mine. The three of them were at war with each other, and an extremely subtle aura filled the air. A thick-headed man like Naruto also sensed something was wrong. He looked at the three of them and asked, Dad, Grandpa Hokage, what? Before he finished speaking, Kakashi suddenly appeared, grabbed Naruto and jumped to the side. Who are you? Let me go. Feeling Naruto's eager expression, Kakashi felt a sense of emotion and sadness in his heart. If the environment in the village hadn't been so negative to Naruto, how could Naruto be so interested in a foreigner? Naruto frantically tried to break free, but saw that Danzo had already taken action. Wind-style vacuum sphere. Danzo opened his mouth and blurted out a dozen wind bombs. The wind bullets whizzed past, faster than the bullets in the pirate world. Whitebeard didn't move, just stood still with a white fang grin. Danzo is disdainful in his heart. His wind style is one of the best in Kanaha, and vacuum sphere is his special skill. Every wind bullet can tear apart monuments and crack rocks. How can Whitebeard's physical body stop it? Third generation looked at the proud Danzo and sighed inwardly, knowing that Danzo was going to suffer a little. Bang, bang, bang. The wind bullets hit Whitebeard's body, making muffled sounds, but the scene riddled with holes and splattered with flesh and blood that Danzo imagined did not appear. There were only inconspicuous red marks on his body. Danzo's proud expression froze instantly, and his face turned red and white. Danzo, don't be careless. Third generation finished speaking and threw a few shurikens. Danzo snorted and exhaled. His vacuum sphere was useless, but your shuriken was useless? Advertisement. The third generation's hands began to form seals quickly. Ninjutsu shuriken shadow clone technique. However, the movements of third generation's hands did not stop, and then, a ball of fire burst out from his mouth, igniting the shurikens. Fire style, impatience chloride. The two ninjutsu were almost connected together, and hundreds of shurikens stained with flames flew towards him with great momentum. Dad, run. Naruto shouted anxiously. Whitebeard grinned, don't worry. Your dad and I are not stupid. As he spoke, he grabbed the Kong Yunkai that was rooted in the ground, and a few veins popped up in the muscles of his arm. Then he raised his arms and scraped forward. Crash, bang. A huge wind blade was blown out by Whitebeard, and the huge force even squeezed the ground to create a ferocious crack. Ding 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 ding. Under the huge wind blade, all the flames on the shuriken were blown away, and even the shuriken was blown away with a clanking sound and was hit everywhere. Third generation seemed to know that Whitebeard would not be affected by this attack, as he continued to form seals with his hands. The next second, the ground began to shake violently. Whitebeard was confused as the hard ground suddenly became extremely muddy. Earth-style yellow senuma. The sticky mud covered Whitebeard's feet. Whitebeard raised his feet and found that his movement was really hindered. Feeling the changes on the ground, Whitebeard couldn't help but praise, the ninjutsu of your ninjas is really diverse, one set after another. Third generation smiled slightly, then thank you, Mr. Whitebeard, for the compliment. As he spoke, he kept moving his hands. Earth-style earth dragon bomb. A dragon made of mud appeared on the muddy ground. The dragon opened its mouth and fired countless mud bombs, directly submerging Whitebeard. Advertisement. Whitebeard also instantly turned into a clay figure. Daddy. Naruto fluttered wildly in Kakashi's arms, his eyes starting to turn a little red. But thanks to Whitebeard's previous threat to Nine Tails, Nine Tails did not dare to reveal too much chakra. Watching the third generation series of attacks, Danzo also felt a little guilty. He originally thought that the third generation had not fought for so many years, so its strength should have declined drastically. As a result, it seems now that he still has a bit of the forbearance he had back then. Third generation glanced at Danzo, don't be stunned. With that said, third generation formed the Tiger Seal. As an old friend who has cooperated for many years, Danzo also knew the strategy of third generation, so he snorted and started to form seals. Fire style fire dragon flame bullet. Wind style, vacuum daima. Third generation spits out flames, and Danzo spits out wind style. The two are added together, the wind helps the fire, and the fire helps the wind. A flurry of ferocious fire dragons directly bombarded the muddy white beard. The originally muddy swamp became extremely dry and cracked, turning white beard into a mud man. The mud on his body also became solid, binding white beard tightly. The flames burned blazingly, making a whirring sound, and white beard seemed to turn into a clay sculpture, without any movement. Is it solved? Danzo exhaled. Although he said this, he already thought that Whitebeard was solved. The two cage levels already have an advantage over me. With their combined attack, who in the entire ninja world can resist? Father Whitebeard. Naruto broke away from Kakashi's arms and ran towards Whitebeard who had turned into a clay sculpture. He hugged the clay sculpture and looked back at third generation with a look of disappointment and helplessness. Grandpa Hokage, why? Seeing the sad look on Naruto's face, third generation also sighed. I thought to myself, it seems that Naruto needs to be given more ideological education, but what makes third generation irritated is, Naruto is no longer young now, 
He has his own views and is not as easily influenced as he was when he was young. Advertisement. Third generation side and could only slowly correct Naruto's ideas back. Let him understand again that it was Kanaha that gave birth to him and raised him, not Whitebeard, a foreigner. Kakashi was speechless looking at this scene. Naruto's current situation is the same as when he was a child. The same person witnessed his father's death, and the same person became alone again. A bush not far away suddenly shook, a hand reached out, and then slowly opened it. A pair of curious and excited eyes appeared. So strong. This onlooker is none other than Suzuki. Suzuki was originally training in Yamanaka. He heard the sound of fighting not far away, and his curiosity drove him to go over and watch the excitement. He looked over and saw Whitebeard being beaten into a clay figure at the first sight. Later, Master Hokage and a bandage monster used high temperature to turn Whitebeard into a clay sculpture. From Suzuki's point of view, Whitebeard would be seriously injured under such an offensive, and he couldn't help but feel relieved. Listening to Naruto's sad cry, Suzuki felt a little heartbroken for some reason. He frowned, looking at the Hokage-sama and the bandage weirdo, and his heart began to stir. It seems that if you want to defeat Ataki, you still have to practice hard in the village. Naruto's father's strength is still too weak after all. Suzuki felt a little funny when he thought that Naruto's father wanted him to be his son before. Fortunately, he didn't agree at that time, just when he shook his head and was about to leave. Click. A shattering sound echoed through the quiet forest of death, stopping Suzuki in his tracks as he prepared to leave. Everyone looked over suddenly and saw a crack suddenly appeared in the six-meter-high clay sculpture. Under everyone's surprised gazes, the cracks quickly spread to the entire body of the clay sculpture. Advertisement. Chapter 25 The Power of Shock Fruit. Advertisement. Click. With a crisp sound, the mud layer collapsed instantly, followed by bursts of high-temperature white smoke. Wah. Danzo's shoes couldn't help but move back, making a sound. Danzo's eyes trembled, unable to believe the scene in front of him. I saw Whitebeard's tall body still standing, with white smoke rising from his body, except for the cloak on his body, which seemed to have been burned. The rest is basically the same as before. Daddy, Naruto, whose eyes were already blurry with tears, showed a smile. Seeing Naruto's smiling face, the third generation felt unbalanced in their hearts, and their hatred for Whitebeard also reached a new level. Whitebeard first looked at Naruto and gave him a reassuring look, and then his beastly eyes turned to the third generation and Danzo. Feeling the two extremely nervous gazes, Whitebeard finally couldn't help but smile and laughed up to the sky. The attack you performed together is comparable to that of the Magma Kid. Although they didn't know who the Magma Imp Whitebeard was talking about, they knew that Whitebeard looked down upon these attacks at all. Suzuki also widened his eyes. In his opinion, it was incredible that Whitebeard could withstand such an attack. Whitebeard walked forward with both feet, flexing his muscles as he walked, you have finished attacking. Now, is it my turn? Before third generation and Danzo could do anything, Whitebeard made a move. He stretched out his fist, and his fist was covered with a layer of white light. The flashing white light exuded an extremely terrifying and dangerous aura, whoosh. Whitebeard's figure suddenly disappeared. When he reacted, he only saw Whitebeard in the sky above third generation and Danzo, advertisement. Not good. The great sense of crisis caused the chakra in the bodies of third generation and Danzo to begin to surge rapidly. In the blink of an eye, Whitebeard's figure fell between the two, followed by a burst of white light. Boom. In an instant, the earth let out a miserable wail, and an extremely strong earthquake was felt. Suzuki jumped away quickly, and deep ravines had appeared on the hard ground. If he accidentally fell into it, he would be in danger. Kakashi also hugged the confused Naruto and evacuated quickly. Suzuki and Kakashi both came to a high place in the distance, and then looked back towards the direction of the earthquake. Looking around, Suzuki was speechless for a moment. What was before him was a grand scene that he had never seen since he was born. The ground was still shaking wildly, large tracks of trees fell one after another, and countless birds and beasts fled in a hurry. The cut-off river is like the blood of the torn earth, gushing out and spreading over the ravine terrain. The vast forest of death quickly opened up several avenues, and cracks like spider web spread rapidly across the land. The huge force caused violent friction with the earth, and a flame rose rapidly, and the flame stretched for thousands of meters along the crack. Suzuki stood in a high place, looking at this scene, he was completely stunned, and his eyes turned on the Sherinan unconsciously. The flame extending along the crack is like a huge fire snake. How beautiful and fascinating, the shaking and shattered earth is so ferocious and terrifying, how powerful is the power displayed by Whitebeard. How desirable, Suzuki's body trembled, and an emotion called excitement lingered in his heart. In fact, he was a little jealous of Naruto. Jealous of Naruto for recognizing such a powerful father. Advertisement. Suzuki clenched his fists, as long as he had that kind of power, that man can be killed easily. The destruction of this violent punch did not stop there, it also brought about a strong chain reaction, with landslides, ground collapse, and fire spreading across the entire forest of death. In an instant, most of the death forest was destroyed. Whitebeard's punch directly created hell, the tall figure stood in the sea of fire, and the firelight illuminated his majestic body with an indescribable aura, Whitebeard looked in a distant direction with a smile on his lips, he ran pretty fast, Danzo and third generation watched the scene of hell on earth from a distance, and their hearts could not calm down for a long time, the two of them had experienced the first to third ninja wars, but each time, they had never experienced such a mammoth and doomsday scene, such a huge scene seems to have only been seen in the battle between first Hokage and Uchiha Madara, third generation's eyes were a little downcast, he originally thought that Whitebeard's strength was at most equal to him, so he called Danzo along. Although he didn't use all his strength, he believed that Whitebeard didn't either. Third generation believes that the assessment of Whitebeard's strength may need to be estimated again. Call. A gust of wind roared, brought by Whitebeard's huge body. He jumped up and jumped in front of the two of them. Third generation pulled on the god's robe and revealed a black light armor. It was obvious that he had been preparing for the battle. Third generation has a sharp eye. If this continues, he may use that technique. Feeling the will to die from the third generation, Whitebeard is not afraid. Countless people have done this to him over the decades, and he is not afraid at all, just when the battle is about to start again. Advertisement. Whoosh, an orange figure sprang out from a short distance away and came between the two of them. Dad, Grandpa Hokage, stop fighting. Naruto stretched out his arms as if to stop the two men's movements. Danzo leaned next to third generation and whispered, Sarutobi, just use that technique on Whitebeard. 
As long as Whitebeard dies, no matter how sad Naruto is, he will only stay in Konoha without the risk of being kidnapped out of the village. The third generation frowned as they listened to Denso's words, with thoughts flashing in their eyes. As for Naruto's future after you leave, I will take good care of him. Third generation looked at Danzo's eyes that were almost emitting gamma rays and couldn't help but feel speechless. The abacus of your abacus is about to fall off my face, Danzo, so you can't be a hokage because you are too extreme. After saying that, third generation ignored Danzo's resentful eyes and smiled at Whitebeard. Your majesty Whitebeard is so powerful, my old bones really can't stand it. The third generation smiled like a politician, Naruto, I was just joking with Mr. Whitebeard. If it were before, Naruto would definitely nod his head and believe it. After all, Grandpa Hokage is such an amiable person, how could he lie to others? But when he released fire style just now, the fierce look and murderous intent on the third Hokage's face was still deeply engraved in Naruto's mind. So now, Naruto had doubts about third generation's words for the first time. Was that attack just now really just a joke? He turned to Whitebeard. I saw Whitebeard rubbing Naruto's head, then looking at the third generation, boy, I'm 72 years old. When it comes to being old, you can't compare to me, right? After hearing Whitebeard's words, third generation's expression froze. One thing to say is that with Whitebeard's strong body shape and appearance, you can't tell he is an old man in his 70s? Advertisement. Chapter 26 is okay, Dad? Advertisement. Whitebeard looked at Naruto's tearful eyes, and the surging fighting spirit quickly calmed down. He put his big hand on Naruto's head and looked at the third generation with a threatening look in his eyes. If it weren't for Naruto, the two old men in front of him would have been killed by him. The third generation has also experienced many years of war, and the strong intimidation on Whitebeard's body has no feeling for him. He took out a pipe from somewhere and put it in his mouth, Sir Whitebeard, I hope you know that this is Kanaha, Kanaha, the Kanaha of Kanaha people. With that said, he disappeared in an instant. The meaning is obvious, it is to warn Whitebeard not to attack people in the village again. Whitebeard naturally heard the warning in this sentence, but he didn't bother to pay attention. But he knew that no matter how time went on, there would definitely be a battle between him and this village. In that case, considering Naruto's character, what kind of entanglement will he get into? Looking at Naruto with a happy face under the giant hand, Whitebeard was lost in thought. Time gradually passed, and in these days, Kanaha no longer sent anyone to harass Whitebeard and Naruto, and the two of them continued to practice here with peace of mind. Naruto's strength has also increased significantly compared to before. Whether it is speed, power, or physical strength, it has reached a level that Whitebeard reluctantly recognized. It has to be said that Whitebeard agrees with Naruto's endurance. No matter how hard he trains or how injured he is, there will always be a burst of terrifying recovery power to help him recover. Whitebeard quickly thought that it should be the big fox inside Naruto. Thinking of that big fox, Whitebeard felt dissatisfied with Naruto. Is this big fox living in Naruto's body for free without paying some rent? It seemed like I had to find time to get into Naruto's body to collect the rent. Daddy, daddy, take a look at my latest technique. Naruto said as he ran towards Whitebeard. Whitebeard raised his eyebrows. Although he could indeed defeat the so-called Hokage easily, this did not mean that the Hokage was weak. If this Hokage's strength were put into the new world, he would be able to make a name for himself. Naruto was able to defeat Hokage with just one technique, which really made Whitebeard a little curious. Advertisement. Send it over. Whitebeard sat on the ground majestically, even so, he was still much taller than Naruto. I saw Naruto forming seals with his hands, and the chakra on his body began to operate. Transformation. Seduction technique. Oh a burst of white smoke rose up, and a girl with blonde hair and blue eyes protruding front and back appeared, and let out a sweet shout at the right time. Gula la la la. Whitebeard burst out laughing. I have to say that this ninjutsu called transformation technique is really interesting. At this time, a strange noise suddenly came from a big tree in the distance, and something fell from the tree. Naruto quickly deactivated the transformation technique, then looked over. Who is it? Suzuki walked over while covering his head, it's me. Naruto was happy when he saw it was Suzuki, but on the outside he looked anxious. What are you doing secretly? Are you here to secretly learn my new technique? Suzuki twitched his lips, and a tic-tac-toe symbol appeared on his forehead. Idiot, who would want to learn such a technique? I see, you're jealous of me. Naruto raised his head. Seeing that the two were about to fight again, Whitebeard said directly, Red-eyed brat, tell me, what's the matter with you coming here? The red-eyed kid. Suzuki forced himself to get used to Whitebeard's naming habit, and after some mental struggle, thump. Suzuki's knees touched the ground, his eyes fixed on Whitebeard. Naruto was stunned, and his angry face disappeared instantly. Suzuki, Suzuki, what are you doing? Suzuki did not answer Naruto's words, but looked at Whitebeard with determination. Father Whitebeard, just let me join you. After saying that, he leaned down and knocked his forehead hard on the ground. Naruto's face was shocked. He knew that Suzuki was the kind of extremely arrogant person who was not even polite at ordinary times. Now kneeling down, Naruto was frightened. Whitebeard looked at Suzuki's stubborn face, and slowly it merged with a person. Advertisement. Please, just let me join you. Hey, we are not fishermen, we are pirates. Please, I have nowhere to go. The dark-skinned child with the naturally afro hair was like this back then, kneeling with him and pleading with him, giving up his dignity in order to join him. The scenes continued to flow, and the scenes in Marineford seemed like just yesterday. Teach, I don't admit it, you are my son. The words spoken by myself are still echoing in my mind. Suzuki was very nervous. He thought that with his sherry non and talent, Whitebeard would accept him without hesitation. However, Whitebeard fell into long thought. Why, why? Suzuki placed his hands on the ground, his four fingers clenched tightly, dirt filling his nails. Whitebeard's thoughts were slowly brought back from his memory. He released observation hacky and felt Suzuki's emotions. Whitebeard grinned, hate. That is really an important nutrient for becoming stronger. After listening to Whitebeard's words, Suzuki looked up sharply. He wanted to say something, but didn't know what to say. Whitebeard and Suzuki looked at each other for a while, then said, very good, I allow you to follow me. Hearing Whitebeard's words, Suzuki's face lit up with joy, and ecstasy swept through his heart. Naruto also smiled. 
In his heart, he still longed to be Suzuki's friend and now his brother. That's even better, but... A turn of phrase made Suzuki's heart start to stir again. Is this what he is being asked to do? Or are there any harsh conditions? But he quickly put aside his worries. As long as he could kill that man, as long as he could get the same strength as Whitebeard. No matter how harsh the conditions are, whether it's going up a mountain of sorts or going down into a sea of fire, then he will not look back. That is, no matter what the reason, you are not allowed to hurt your companions. Whitebeard and Suzuki looked at each other, and their expressions were very serious when they said this. Advertisement. Suzuki was stunned for a moment, then smiled disdainfully, is it that simple? Whitebeard nodded, it was indeed that simple, for Whitebeard, for Naruto, and for Guy, this was very simple. But what about Suzuki? Whitebeard can see that Suzuki is an Avenger. If his companions stand in the way of his revenge, will he pick up the butcher knife? Whitebeard's biggest disappointment with Teach was that he killed his companions. He didn't want to have a son like this again, so at first, Whitebeard wanted to refuse. But when I look into those determined eyes, Suzuki looked happy and shouted loudly, thank you so much, Dad. Suzuki's cheeks couldn't help but blush slightly when he said the last word. At this time, Whitebeard suddenly discovered that the strength of his body had increased again. He clenched his fists in confusion. Indeed, his strength had truly increased again. The last time this happened was when he adopted Mike Guy as his son. Could it be? Suzuki, we are brothers. Naruto's cry brought Whitebeard back to reality and he looked over. I saw Naruto running to Suzuki's side, very happy. Compared to an uncle like Mike Guy, he still prefers Suzuki, a brother of the same age. Suzuki turned his head slightly, but the corners of his mouth still couldn't help but curl up, obviously very happy. Friendship, or family affection, he hadn't felt this kind of concern for a long time. As he thought about it, Suzuki's eyes became moist. Suzuki, are you crying? No, idiot. What did you say? That bastard Suzuki. Whitebeard looked at this scene and suddenly laughed loudly. Perhaps, even if he was reborn, he would still agree to Teach getting on the ship when faced with Teach's plea. Advertisement. Chapter 27 Recruitment. Advertisement. Chapter 27 Recruitment. While Whitebeard was a kind father and a filial son, the Hokage office was in chaos. Danzo, aren't you going to explain? Third generation sat in Hokage's seat with questioning eyes. The two elders Mitokato Homura and Yudoden Koharu also stood on both sides of the third generation, looking at Danzo seriously. Danzo snorted coldly. Pff, you believe whatever Whitebeard, a foreigner, says. This is the end of your Hokage, Yudoden Koharu said. Then why are you unwilling to take off the bandage and show us? Mitokato Homura also said, we have been old comrades for so many years, what is there not to show? You've been an old comrade for many years, but you don't even have the most basic trust. Danzo looked resentful, as if nothing happened to him. Everyone started to talk to each other, and after a flash of swords and swords, the matter just ended. Danzo doesn't want to show it, so he can't take off his clothes, right? Danzo looked a little gloomy. Although he did not expose Sherinan in the end, his attitude was so determined that Sarutobi and the others would definitely feel there was a problem. This suspicion was planted just like that. At this time, we can only change the topic. The problem with my bandage is secondary. Whitebeard, how are you going to solve it? Danzo banged his cane on the floor. The third generation had another headache. Whitebeard blew up the entire forest of death with one punch, and all the ninjas in the village were talking about it. A foreigner dared to show his face in the village. As a Hokage, he should be driven away or punished on the spot, but Whitebeard's strength was a little too strong. Third generation felt that it would not be able to defeat Whitebeard without using forbidden techniques such as Ghoul Seal. After thinking about it, third generation spoke, it's better to block it than to open it up, so let's incorporate Whitebeard. Advertisement. When Danzo heard this, his dentures almost burst out of anger, and the crutch in his hand continued to bang. Sarutobi, are you kidding me? The two elders also looked at the third generation. Would it really be beneficial to incorporate a dangerous and unstable person like Whitebeard? Third generation looked at a few people and revealed quite proudly. What's so surprising about this? Two countries with national hatred and family hatred can unite and reconcile for the sake of their own interests. What happened to an old man who had not caused any substantial harm to Kanaha? Moreover, Whitebeard is already over 70 years old now, so he probably doesn't have many more years to live. After dying for several years, isn't Naruto Suzuki still from Kanaha? Listening to third generation's words, even Danzo, an extremist, was a little shaken. Yes, no matter how powerful Whitebeard is, he can't survive the passage of time. No one in the entire ninja world can live beyond the age of 70, not to mention that for a person like Whitebeard who has gone through wars, his body must be full of hidden wounds. They won't be surprised if he burps tomorrow. The faces of Yudoden Koharu and Mitokato Homura also softened a little. Yet, instead of fighting with him and losing both sides, it's better to make good friends. As long as he joins us, maybe he can become a fighting force in the future. Yes, when the time comes, tell him about the will of fire, and maybe he will recognize us. The two elders talked to each other, and third generation coughed a few times, pulling them out of their fantasy. Even before I bought the lottery ticket, I was thinking about how to spend the winning prize, which was a bit embarrassing for the elder. Third generation stood up from his seat, that's how it's settled. If it doesn't work out, let him stay in the village first and deal with the problem later. Later, third generation called Kakashi over, and Kakashi was a little surprised to see the office full of elders. I'll give you a task. Advertisement. After hearing the content of the mission, Kakashi was a little confused, but he was smart enough to understand the intentions of third generation. Also, check the time when you go to collect. Naruto must be there. Even if things don't work out, Naruto must know that Kanaha will not be an enemy of his father. Third generation said as he knocked the ashes out of his cigarette. When Kakashi heard this, he resisted the urge to roll his eyes wildly and nodded in agreement. Kakashi quickly ran around the floors and quickly found Whitebeard's location. Kanaha is so big, and with Whitebeard's exaggerated size, it's a little harder to find him. Kakashi was obviously stunned when he saw Suzuki next to Whitebeard. At this time, Suzuki was competing with Naruto in push UPS. Naruto's progress and condition were obviously better than Suzuki's. This made Suzuki very dissatisfied, and he insisted on keeping up with Naruto's speed, and then was given a love education by Whitebeard. Snapped. Whitebeard slapped Suzuki on the butt with a stick. Stupid son, I told you that your physique is different from Naruto's. Don't act blindly. Feeling the burning pain in his butt, Suzuki shouted in shame, Yes, Dad. 
Kakashi looked at this scene, and his half-lidded eyes suddenly widened. Whitebeard turned to look in Kakashi's direction. White-haired kid, what's the matter? Whoosh! Kakashi flew out of the darkness and landed next to Whitebeard. Ah, uh, it's you, the white-haired uncle of the night. Naruto pointed at Kakashi and yelled. Kakashi scratched his head with a headache. He was obviously not even 30 years old, so why was he already an uncle? Naruto, exercise. Whitebeard said, Naruto could only continue doing push UPS. Is this kind of training really okay? Kakashi couldn't bear to see Naruto squeezing his body like crazy. Advertisement. This is very similar to Mike Guy's exercise method. Although the results are quick, it can also cause injuries. Gulala, you don't have to worry about this. I know Naruto better than you, a so-called teacher student. Kakashi knew that Whitebeard was saying that he had failed in his duty to take care of Naruto. Kakashi chose to bear it. I'm sorry. You shouldn't say this to me. After Whitebeard finished speaking, he went straight to the point. So, what does your monkey-like Hokage have to tell me? Kakashi directly said what Kanaha wanted to recruit Whitebeard. As soon as these words came out, Naruto was the first to show joy. Dad, you can stay in Kanaha. Boom. Whitebeard slapped Naruto on the head. Rules can't restrain pirates. They can't restrain men of the sea. Yes, Dad. Kakashi scratched his head. Refuse? Don't think about it again. Although he said this, Kakashi's tone was very weak. Obviously, he didn't have any hope for third generation's decision. However, he also knew that third generation also wanted to show a gentle attitude, hoping that everyone would take a step back and Whitebeard would also restrain himself. But it seems that the man named Whitebeard has no such intention at all. Kakashi looked at Whitebeard with dead eyes. Well, I'll leave first. Kakashi took out Xiao Lubei and started to leave. At this time, a loud shout appeared, my lifelong enemy, Kakashi. Kakashi looked over in surprise, why is Guy here? Guy flew to Whitebeard's side and gave Kakashi a thumbs up, do you know dad too? Kakashi, dad. The little Lubei in Kakashi's hand fell to the ground. Suzuki almost lost his breath and fell directly to the ground, looking at Guy in shock. Advertisement. Chapter 28 Azumaki Naruto, is my brother? Advertisement. Kakashi stretched out his finger and asked with a trembling voice, are you kidding me, Guy? Guy raised his arms, gula la la. Kakashi, you know, a young and passionate man, he can't lie. I even learned how to laugh. Kakashi was shocked. Ah, uh, Guy, how did you learn daddy's laugh? Naruto stood up from the ground with a look of dissatisfaction on his face. As the oldest son, he has not yet learned his father's iconic laugh. How could he let the second son learn it? Guy threw his head back and laughed, this is so easy. Gu la 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 la. Naruto laughed not to be outdone, Gu. Ha ha ha, ah, uh, I can't learn at all. Suzuki looked like I don't know them and took a few steps away from the two of them. Kakashi picked his ears, so, Guy, what's going on? Then Guy's face became a little serious, and he told Kakashi what he was thinking. After a few minutes, Guy finished speaking and looked at Whitebeard, who was also looking at him. I think Father Whitebeard deserves the title of father. Whitebeard grinned and stretched out his big hand to cover Guy's mushroom head. In Whitebeard's eyes, Guy, who is not yet 30 years old, is indeed like a child. Watching this scene, Kakashi's heart was touched unconsciously. He remembered that when he was tracking Whitebeard, Whitebeard was carrying Naruto on his back, laughing heartily under the moon. That scene of overflowing family affection, to be honest, made Kakashi feel a little bit more envious. Whitebeard seemed to sense Kakashi's heart, and he shouted directly. White-haired kid, since you are little guy's good friend, then, I will make an exception and let you be my son. Listening to Whitebeard's words, Kakashi smiled wryly and waved his hands repeatedly. Advertisement. Anyway, I'm going back first. Lord Hokage is still waiting for me to return to life. With that said, Kakashi picked up little Lube and ran towards the Hokage building as if he was running away. What a shame, it feels good to be daddy's son. Guy said, crossing his arms. Naruto nodded repeatedly. Suzuki twitched his lips. If it wasn't for the purpose of becoming stronger, he wouldn't recognize his son. At this time, he noticed a glance and saw Whitebeard looking at him. Looking into Whitebeard's eyes, Suzuki was stunned. This reminded him of Uchiha Fugaku's eyes for a moment, the kind of eyes that care about you but don't say it out loud. Suzuki turned his head, his face slightly red, watching Naruto and Guy comparing whose laughter was more like their father's, Suzuki couldn't help being amused by them. This feeling is not bad. After a while, Mike Guy walked away because he had to take care of students. Suzuki and Naruto were both exhausted and fell asleep due to competing with each other in training. Whitebeard grabbed the two of them with one hand, arrived at Naruto's house, and pushed Suzuki and Naruto onto the bed together. The night passed quickly, and the two of them were awakened by a strange scream. You guy, why do I sleep in the same bed with you? What's going on? We are brothers now. Whitebeard also woke up on the street nearby, listening to the two brothers arguing, and smiled. Soon, Suzuki and Naruto came out of the house, said goodbye to Whitebeard, and went to school together. After arriving at the class, everyone was surprised to see Naruto and Suzuki walking side by side, but when they saw the two sitting together and chatting happily, their jaws dropped. Well, how come these two people are so close all of a sudden? His, Naruto keeps pestering Suzuki. Isn't Suzuki annoyed by Naruto? TCH, two freaks, they are a perfect match. However, no matter what the people around them said, Naruto and Suzuki showed nothing. Advertisement. One is a crude person, and the other is a bit arrogant to begin with. Little Sakura came over timidly. Suzuki-kun, is it because Naruto is pestering you that? Little Sakura thought that Suzuki must have given in because he couldn't stand Naruto's interruption, so he wanted to step forward to persuade Suzuki. He didn't want Suzuki to play with a shady person like Naruto, just to show off his favor ability. What did you say? Suzuki looked over. Seeing Suzuki look over, Little Sakura thought she was right and quickly added. You see, Naruto has no parents and has no discipline since he was a child. Listening to Little Sakura's words, Naruto's happy smile slowly dropped. Bah! Suzuki stood up abruptly from his seat. Little Sakura was frightened and took two steps back because he saw Suzuki's eyes filled with disgust. Suzuki-kun, you're annoying, ugly girl. What? Little Sakura covered her heart and backed away with a look of disbelief. There was an uproar around him. After all, although Suzuki had been ignoring girls, he had never said anything bad. Unexpectedly, today would be different, and he would directly say something like ugly girl. Suzuki stopped looking at Little Sakura and looked around. 
Having experienced the night of genocide, Suzuki's eyes have already become like wolves under the baptism of blood. Every classmate who was stared at by his eyes unconsciously averted their eyes. Let me declare that Azumaki Naruto is my brother. If anyone dares to criticize or bully him, saying that, Suzuki looked at Little Sakura, and regardless of Little Sakura's feelings, he said harshly, Advertisement. Then I'll cut out his tongue. After that, continue to sit back in your seat. Everyone also breathed a sigh of relief. Those murderous eyes made these students who were still in school really unbearable. At the same time, everyone is also wondering, when did Naruto and Suzuki's relationship become so good? They actually got to the point of calling themselves brothers? But now no one dares to touch Suzuki's bad luck. Even if they discuss it, they only dare to whisper for fear of being overheard by Suzuki. Suzuki let out a breath and turned his head to see Naruto looking at him with tears on his face. Hey, don't look at me like that, it's so disgusting. Suzuki said with a look of disgust on his face. Thank you, Suzuki. Naruto said with some choking. Even though he had defeated Ya in school and became depressed, he was actually still very fragile inside. Although Whitebeard can protect him outside, he cannot at school. Seeing Naruto's appearance, Suzuki chuckled. Hey, we are brothers. Yeah, we are brothers. After saying that, Naruto wiped the tears from his eyes, and then said with determination, Dad said that men of the sea cannot cry. Suzuki picked up the book and suddenly said in a sarcastic tone, Man of the sea, have you ever seen the sea? The end of the crane. When Naruto heard this, all the gratitude in his heart turned into shame and anger. Ah, you said it as if you have seen it before. Suzuki said disdainfully, but I know where the sea is, do you know? Naruto was speechless for a moment, and held back a sentence for a long time, I will definitely take daddy there. The sea, new world, treasure. Suzuki shook his head and smiled, let's wait until you graduate successfully. Hineda watched Naruto and Suzuki bickering and couldn't help feeling happy. Naruto-kun, I finally have a good friend, so happy for Naruto-kun. Advertisement. Chapter 29 Mizuki. Advertisement. Late at night, a figure kept flying in Kanaha village. His figure was so fast that he stepped on the roofs of residence without making any sound. Arriving at the high wall, he skillfully dodged the investigation and arrived outside the village. Bang. The door was pushed open violently, and a figure quietly manipulated the bottles and jars in front of him. Kabuto, I hope you won't make such a loud noise next time. Orikimura turned around, a pair of snake-like eyes showing a sharp look. Kabuto was stunned for a moment, swallowed his saliva and said, I'm sorry, Orikimuru-sama. Orikimuru put down what he was doing, tell me, what's the matter, why are you in such a hurry? He knew that if Kabuto was in such a panic, something big must have happened in the village. Kabuto said, please allow me to start from half a month ago. Soon, Kabuto spoke out the information he had received in detail. You mean, Suzuki recognized that Whitebeard as his father. Even though Orikimuru is as well informed as he is, he still looks strange at this moment. And not only that, that Whitebeard's son also has Azumaki Naruto, my guy. Accepting others as sons is a habit that would be explosive even among rebel ninjas. Orikimuru's eyes flashed with an inexplicable light. His plan seemed to be disrupted. His original plan was to kidnap Suzuki out of the village while invading Kanaha during the Jinin exams in a few months. But now someone kidnapped Suzuki first. It seems that we have to replan. Orikimaru's tone was very calm, but if you listen carefully, you can hear a bit of sadness and cruelty. This is no wonder, after all, Suzuki's body Orikimaru has been coveting for a long time, but he didn't expect that someone would get there first. Advertisement. Orikimaru continued the experiment in his hands, Kabuto lowered his head, trying to figure out what Orikimaru was thinking. Kabuto, investigate the origins of Whitebeard and the ninja school teacher named Mizuki. His plan will be implemented today, so keep an eye on him. Yes. Daylight soon came and Suzuki and Naruto walked out of the house. Naruto clenched his fist, that's it, get the forehead protector in one go and become a ninja. Suzuki chuckled slightly, as long as the content of the exam is not a written test, then you should have no problem. Because he was addicted to Teijutsu training, Naruto knew nothing about the contents of the book. But it's not a big problem. The graduation exams in previous years were basically three body technique, and written exams were very rare. Whitebeard's tall figure appeared, and the shadow covered both of them. Glala, graduation exams, right? Then I'll send you there and cheer you up. Whitebeard raised his huge arm, creating a gust of breeze. Good. Soon, the three of them arrived at the entrance of the ninja school. Whitebeard waved and watched Suzuki and Naruto enter the school. Naruto, Suzuki, come on. A ninja with silver hair said to Naruto, Thank you, Mizuki-sensei. Mizuki looked back at Whitebeard, and when he saw Whitebeard looking at him, he forced a smile. However, Whitebeard didn't respond. Watching Mizuki walk into the campus, Whitebeard's eyes became sharp. He felt the obvious malice towards Naruto from Mizuki. If the average villager's ill will toward Naruto is 10, then Mizuki's is 100. In other words, this teacher named Mizuki is very likely to do something to Naruto today. What? There was a huge exclamation in the class. Advertisement. Naruto, be quiet. Irika pointed at Naruto and shouted. Naruto suppressed his emotions and said loudly, there is no reason. Teacher Irika, obviously, didn't I take the three body technique test before? Irika raised his forehead and said, this is not the reason why you ignored the written test. I told you to read more books, look at it. In fact, Irika was also a little confused. The content of the exam had been decided before, and it was clone technique, but the superiors suddenly ordered it to be changed to a written exam. But Irika didn't think much about it. After all, the ninja world has been peaceful for more than 10 years, so it is reasonable not to focus so much on fighting. Suzuki patted Naruto on the shoulder, it seems that I became a ninja earlier than you. Naruto was very dissatisfied, but there was nothing he could do, the exam started soon. There is no doubt that Naruto's ability in the written examination was very poor. Until the end of the examination, he had written nothing except his name. The students all rushed out of the school, holding forehead protectors in their hands to show off in front of their parents. Naruto, if you can't do it this year, come back next year. Suzuki looked at Naruto's disappointed look without any sarcasm. Naruto sat in his seat in despair, he was the only one in their class who failed to pass the exam. Naruto looked at Suzuki, Suzuki, first, go back and tell dad the good news. I want to be quiet here. Suzuki was stunned, and after looking at Naruto for a while, he walked out. He really didn't know how to comfort others. Everyone in the class left, leaving Naruto sitting alone in the classroom. Naruto, aren't you home yet? 
A kind voice came over, and Naruto looked back. It was Teacher Mizuki who had always been kind to him. Teacher Mizuki, I, I can't be a ninja anymore. I have betrayed the trust of my father and Teacher Iruka. Naruto's voice became lower and lower as he spoke. Listening to Naruto's words, Mizuki's smile gradually perverted. Then, he took two steps forward and said something to Naruto, and the light in Naruto's eyes lit up again. Really? Teacher Mizuki. Um, Naruto looked out the window. Whitebeard's tall figure was still outside. Naruto made up his mind. Dad, wait, I will come to you with a forehead protector? Advertisement. Naruto walked out of the school through the back door and ran directly to where Mizuki said he was. Outside the school, sensing Naruto running elsewhere, Whitebeard patted Suzuki on the head. You go back first, I'll go check on Naruto. Okay. Suzuki nodded doubtfully, but still went back very obediently. Dusk had fallen, and a figure was flying quickly in the deep forest, carrying a huge scroll on his back. Naruto is very happy now. As long as he learns a certain technique, he can successfully become a genin? Finding an open space, Naruto opened the scroll. The first one on the scroll was the multiple shadow clone technique. Naruto started studying straight away. Naruto, what are you doing? Hearing the sound, Naruto turned his head hurriedly, and his face lit up when he saw it was Iruka. Iruka sensei what are you doing with this scroll? Iruka looked serious. He was afraid Naruto would say something about rebelling against the village. I have already learned one of the techniques. In this case, can I become a ninja? Naruto looked at Iruka expectantly. Iruka breathed a sigh of relief first, and then asked Naruto, who told you? It's teacher Mizuki. Mizuki. Before Iruka could be surprised for long, several shurikens suddenly shot over. Iruka was about to hug Naruto and leave, but Naruto rolled in front of him, picked up the kunao and scattered all the shurikens. The two of them looked at where the shurikens were flying from, and saw a very familiar figure. Mizuki. Teacher Mizuki. Mizuki carried a huge Fuma shuriken on his back and smiled ferociously. Naruto, bring the ceiling scroll over. I've prepared your forehead protector. Advertisement. Chapter 30. Read the book of ceilings as you like. Kanaha owes you everything. Advertisement. What on earth is going on? Naruto the joy on Naruto's face slowly faded. He was not stupid, and he still felt deep malice from the words in Mizuki's mouth. At this time, Iruka stepped forward and protected Naruto behind him. Naruto, don't hand over this scroll even if you die. This scroll contains a forbidden and powerful secret technique in the village. In order to get this, Mizuki came to use you? Mizuki showed an extremely sinister smile. Don't listen to him, Naruto. He just doesn't want you to learn the things in the scroll, because you are too dangerous. Naruto was confused and looked at Iruka. Iruka took out a kunao from his ninja bag. Naruto, don't listen to his nonsense. Mizuki smiled and looked at Naruto. Naruto, do you know how Iruka's parents died? He was killed by the demon fox everyone calls him? That is, Naruto-kun, you? Stop talking. Iruka shouted, then looked at Naruto worriedly. However, to his surprise, Naruto's expression was very calm. Mizuki was also a little surprised. Logically speaking, Naruto should be extremely hesitant and at a loss now. Dad said, I'm not a demon fox. Naruto said firmly. Mizuki twitched his lips, that giant named Whitebeard really disrupted his plan. The three of them just faced off like this. Mizuki kept saying words like demon fox to Naruto, trying to anger Naruto. It would be great if Naruto is angered and the Nine Tails chaos happens again. He can take advantage of the chaos to take the sealed book out and give it to Orikimaru. However, things did not go as smoothly as Mizuki expected. Advertisement. Naruto was not as hysterical or despondent as he imagined. Naruto was expressionless, his eyes fixed on Mizuki. Mizuki took two steps back, with an angry look on his face. He is indeed a demon fox, an emotionless beast. After saying that, he took out the Fuma Shuriken behind him and swung it towards Naruto. Since the plan doesn't work, let's kill this demon fox. Who? 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 The huge shuriken rotated at high speed with a whistling sound. Iruka and Naruto both put on a stance, and they chose to receive the attack forcefully. Just when the Fuma Shuriken was about to hit. Bang! Click! A huge figure suddenly fell from the sky and landed on the Fuma Shuriken. In an instant, the ground cracked open, and the huge Fuma Shuriken turned into fragments and scattered everywhere. Old, dead. The mountain-like figure covered the moonlight and cast a huge shadow, covering the figures of Iruka and Naruto. It was also the first time that Iruka was so close to Whitebeard. He raised his head, opened his mouth, and had some shock in his eyes. Gulala LA, you are the white-haired brat. Do you call my son a demon fox? A vigorous and powerful voice sounded. Shuima's pupil shrank and his feet moved back unconsciously. Whitebeard slowly raised his lowered head, his eyes glowing like wild beasts. Ah, uh, Shuima was immediately frightened, the weapon in his hand fell to the ground, and his whole body started to tremble. Whitebeard didn't look at Mizuki again, because he knew that Mizuki couldn't escape now. Advertisement. He turned back to look at Naruto, my dear son, have you learned anything good? Naruto became excited as soon as he heard this, and immediately forgot what Mizuki said just now, Dad. Teacher Iruka, watch it. As he spoke, Naruto made a seal and crossed his index and middle fingers. Multiple shadow clone technique. The blue chakra began to surge in the body and even overflowed. Bang, bang, bang. A series of white smoke rose up, and then, Naruto's shadow clone filled the surrounding area. A rough count shows that there are as many as a thousand people. Whitebeard looked at the clones around him. Even he couldn't help but be slightly surprised. Oh, I finally saw some decent ninjutsu. Iruka was the most surprised. He didn't expect that Naruto could learn this forbidden technique in such a short period of time and perform it so well. Is he really a genius? Naruto looked at Iruka with proud eyes. How about it? Teacher Iruka, with my current skills, I am qualified to become a ninja. Iruka looked at Naruto's twinkling eyes and recalled the scene where Naruto defended him against Mizuki's attack just now and couldn't help but laugh. Of course, Naruto, you have surpassed me. Saying that, under Naruto's excited eyes, Iruka untied the forehead protector from his forehead and handed it to Naruto. Uzumaki Naruto, congratulations, you graduated. Looking at the forehead protector in his hand, Naruto couldn't suppress the smile on his face, and his eyes soon became moist. Naruto solemnly took the forehead protector and tied it on his forehead. 
After putting on the forehead protector, the first person Naruto showed to was Whitebeard. Gulalala, he is indeed my son, he is so beautiful. Whitebeard looked at Naruto's delighted face and was equally happy for it. Advertisement. Iruka also breathed a sigh of relief, Naruto, from now on, you will be a ninja in your own right. Naruto happily jumped up and down on the spot. At this time, Iruka remembered the purpose of his trip. By the way, Naruto, give me the sealed book. This is an extremely dangerous thing. Iruka looked at the scroll on Naruto's back. Naruto took the scroll down and was about to hand it to Iruka when a thunderous sound stopped Naruto's movements. No, Iruka was stunned and looked at Whitebeard and Nanny. Although Naruto was a little confused, he took the scroll back very obediently. Iruka's face became serious when he saw this, Naruto, this is not a child's play. Stealing the sealed book without permission is a serious act of treason to the village, give me the scroll quickly. Naruto was very determined and instead of handing the scroll to Iruka, he turned his attention to Whitebeard. Whitebeard looked at Iruka and said, Boy, you are Naruto's teacher. Let me ask you a question. Is what Naruto encountered in the village fair? Listening to Whitebeard's words, Iruka was stunned for a while, and then said, That's why Naruto needs to become a ninja, abide by the ninja's commandments, and perform tasks, so that the people in the village can change their minds. Confused. Whitebeard shouted loudly, and Iruka was yelled to the point where he fainted. If you really think that, then you are not worthy of being Naruto's teacher. Whitebeard said, Iruka actually knew that the village had deep feelings for Naruto, and when Whitebeard said this, he was too embarrassed to say anything else. Whitebeard looked at Naruto. Naruto, you can read whatever is in this scroll, Kanaha owes you this. Naruto heard this and said in surprise, I know, Dad. After saying that, Naruto opened the scroll and continued reading. Seeing this, Iruka opened his mouth to say something, but finally stopped. Advertisement. Chapter 31 We will leave the village in a moment. Advertisement. Chapter 31 We will leave the village in a moment. Third generation was running with a group of ninjas in the jungle, and his heart was very alive. According to the plan, Naruto should have learned the shadow clone technique now. He will go over now and forgive Naruto for stealing the sealed book. Presumably in this way, Naruto will feel grateful to him as Grandpa Hokage again, and the favorability level that has finally fallen will come back. Thinking of this, third generation showed a successful smile. Soon, he led a group of ninjas to the location. As soon as they approached, the smile on his face instantly solidified. Naruto was reading the sealed book eagerly, showing no remorse for committing a crime. Whitebeard was resting with his eyes closed, and Iruka had a complicated look on his face. He didn't know what he was thinking. Fire, Hokage-sama, forgive me for my dereliction of duty. Seeing the third generation, Iruka half knelt down, feeling ashamed that he had failed to stop Naruto. The third generation waved his hand, indicating that it was okay, and then looked at Naruto. Naruto looked up, saw the third generation, and smiled, Grandpa Hokage. But this smile was gentler and more perfunctory than before. Third generation knew that Naruto was frightened by the siege he and Danzo had on Whitebeard. There is a long way to go to get the favor ability back again. Naruto, do you know what you are looking at? Third generation said slowly. The ninjas behind him also looked serious, and they were all very unhappy about Naruto stealing the sealed book. Naruto said with some shame, the sealed book. Dad said that I can read it as I please. Your dad said you can just watch whatever you want? Your father asked you to kill me, do you want to do it too? The third generation felt depressed for a while, but still showed a kind smile. Naruto, please bring the sealed book. This is an extremely dangerous thing and cannot be taken away casually. Naruto stared at the third generation for a while, then looked at Whitebeard without saying anything. Hiss, this kid is becoming more and more rebellious. The smile on third generation's face was a little unbearable. At this time, Whitebeard also opened his eyes at the right time. Isn't this, Hokage boy, advertisement. Third generation looked at Whitebeard with a cold glint in his eyes, Sir Whitebeard, I warned you not to interfere in the affairs of Kanaha village anymore, right? Whitebeard smiled lowly and looked at third generation without fear. Kid Hokage, I also told you, Naruto is my son, how do I discipline him? I don't need you, an outsider, to tell me what to do. Hearing that he was an outsider, third generation was so angry that his fists almost bled. The two looked at each other tit for tat, and even Naruto, who had always been nervous, felt something was wrong and put down the sealed book in his hand. Whitebeard and Hokage looked at each other, and he could see that the Hokage size were a little different today. In fact, Whitebeard also knows that the many things he has done these days may have touched the Hokage boy's bottom line. In this case, instead of always being prepared for the Hokage kid's sneak attacks in the future, it's better to clarify everything today. Whitebeard slowly stood up from the ground, relying on his tall body to look down at third generation. Hokage boy, it looks like today is going to end. The third generation took off the Hokage hat on their heads, revealing the Kabuto from the Sengoku era. Yes, Sir Whitebeard. Feeling the growing momentum of the third generation, Whitebeard looked at Naruto, Naruto, go find Suzuki, we will leave the village together later. Whitebeard did not cover up his voice, and third generation also heard Whitebeard's words. Not only kidnapping Jinchuriki, but also kidnapping Uchiha's legacy, don't bully others too much. Naruto held the sealed book, Dad, what about you? Whitebeard turned to look at third generation, I want to talk to the Hokage boy, you and Suzuki first wait for me at the entrance of the village. Naruto nodded and flew directly towards home without looking at the third generation. At this moment, Whitebeard suddenly reached into the woods nearby. Bah, a masked Umbu was held in his hand, Gula LA, I can't let you follow. After saying that, he grabbed Umbu and threw him directly towards third generation. Third generation jumped up high and dodged the flying Umbu. At the same time, he took off all the god robes on his body, revealing a dark light armor. Third generation formed a seal in the air, and soon, a group of rocks enveloped third generation's arm. Advertisement. Earth style, rock fist technique. The hard rock wrapped around his fist and hit Whitebeard hard. Whitebeard was not afraid at all, but instead extended his fist with excitement. Arm color, hacky. Darkness instantly filled Whitebeard's fist, which directly collided with third generation's rock fist. Boom. The huge collision of power stirred up a flow of air, and the entire third generation flew backwards. Lord Hokage, are you okay? Several ninjas caught third generation. Third generation waved his hand, hurry up and catch up with Naruto. The sealed book is still in his hand. After receiving the order, several ninjas quickly dispersed, trying to avoid Whitebeard's attack. Whitebeard let out a strange laugh, and a burst of white light emitted from his hands. The white light seemed to have a spirit, flowing to the clouds. Zhang, 
Kong Yunki flashed with a dazzling white light, exuding an extremely dangerous aura. When third generation's pupil shrank, he knew something was wrong, and he quickly said, be careful. However, Whitebeard's arms were already outstretched. Boom. A crescent-shaped knife light suddenly surged out, and for a moment, a harsh roar came suddenly, and the surrounding air was torn apart instantly. The speed of the sword light was very fast, and it directly passed over several ninjas who scattered and fled. Crash. Several red flowers bloomed in the air, and a burst of red liquid began to float, dripping onto the gloomy face of third generation. Those ninjas were all dead. Advertisement. Boom. Whitebeard punched Kong Yunkai to the ground fiercely. I said, I won't let you catch up with Naruto. The third generation understands that if Whitebeard is not killed here, Naruto, Suzuki, and the sealed book will disappear in the village, that would be a huge loss to the village. Iruka wanted to go forward, but Whitebeard stopped Iruka. I won't kill you, but I advise you not to interfere with Naruto. Iruka sighed and finally had to retreat to the third generation. Everyone, kill Whitebeard with all your strength. Third generation waved his hand, and all the ninjas behind him started to move out. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. A ninja took the lead. With a wave of his hand, several black steel wires suddenly appeared and wrapped around Whitebeard. The ninja licked his lips. With just a slight pull, the white beard in front of him would be cut into a pile of minced meat by countless steel wires. Hey! The ninja's hands suddenly pulled back, and a strange sound of steel wires sounded. Whitebeard couldn't help laughing as he felt the slight pressure on his body. Not enough. Whitebeard raised his hands, and all the tight steel wires broke instantly. The huge force was also transmitted from the steel wire to the ninja, and the whole person was thrown away. Seeing this, the other ninjas launched a heavy rain of attacks on Whitebeard. Five escaped ninjutsu, various ninja tools, and even illusions were used, but they had no effect on Whitebeard. And Whitebeard only needs to swing his sword to take away the lives of at least three or two Kanaha shinobi. For a time, even the cohesiveness of the Kanaha shinobi could not help but retreat a little at this time. Third generation knew that if they didn't take action, their morale might collapse. You don't need to take action, let me do it. Third generation took a few steps forward, biting his finger as he spoke. Blood dripped on the ground. Third generation knew that Whitebeard was not weak, so from the beginning, they planned to use their full strength. Summoning Technique Ape Demon. Advertisement. Chapter 32, Betray the Village. Advertisement. Chapter 32, Betray the Village. As white smoke rose, an ape dressed in tiger skin appeared. What is this? The ape demon raised his eyes and saw Whitebeard, and let out a strange cry. Without him, Whitebeard is bigger than many summoning beasts. How could a human be so tall? Third generation shouted directly, Ape demon, the enemy is very difficult to deal with. It turns into a Vajrarui stick. After receiving the order, the monkey demon spun its body in the air, and then turned into a black and yellow stick and reached the hands of third generation. Grasping the Vajra wish fulfilling stick, third generation yelled, Grow longer. Sieve. In Whitebeard's slightly surprised gaze, the Vajra Rui rod suddenly stretched out and struck him directly. Whitebeard's feet did not move, but stood firmly on the ground. The huge thrust only moved his feet back four to five meters, plowing two deep ravines. Nanny. The monkey demon made an incredible sound. You know, back then it was able to push nine tails out of the village, but it only pushed this human a few meters away. Whitebeard was a little surprised and said, Not bad power, Hokage boy. There are few people in the new world who can knock him back. Third generation gritted his teeth. He didn't expect Whitebeard's defense to be so powerful. An eye appeared on the Vajra Rui rod, and then, the monkey demon's hand came out and grabbed Whitebeard's neck. Whitebeard didn't hesitate and activated Shock Fruit's ability directly. Buzz. There was a piercing sound, and the surrounding space began to distort like waves. The power brought by the distortion was directly applied to the ape demon. Aha. Uh -huh. The monkey demon let out a scream, escaped from the third generation's hand, and fell to the ground. Ape demon. Third generation screamed and summoned the Vajra Rui rod from Whitebeard's side into his hand. The voice of the ape demon appeared. I'm fine, it just hurts too much. How did you get into trouble with this human being? Advertisement. Third generation's eyes were cold. His name is Whitebeard, and he is the enemy of the village. I understand. The ape demon's voice became firm. Whitebeard clenched his fist in the distance, but he didn't expect this stick to be so hard. It seems that the Hokage boy still has a lot of good stuff. Picking up Kong Yunkai, Whitebeard shouted, Hokage boy, it's my turn now, let you see the power of the sea. There was a loud shout, like thunder from the sky, and the surrounding Kanaha shinobi took a few steps back unconsciously. For this battle, Kanaha's ninjas have no chance to take action. Going to help may put more constraints on the third generation. Although third generation was not affected, their expressions were more solemn than ever. Whoosh. Whitebeard's figure suddenly disappeared, and then appeared above the third generation in the blink of an eye. The Kanjayan key in Whitebeard's hand glowed with dazzling white light, and the surrounding space was also aroused by the momentum released by this white light, sending out shock waves. Third generation's pupil shrank, and the Vajra Rui rod in his hand quickly deformed. Get bigger. Soon, the two weapons collided, and the dazzling white light was extremely dazzling. Boom. The people in the village looked at Hokage Yin Yan in confusion. Behind Yin Yan was a forest, and a muffled thunder sound appeared there. Is this going to thunder? That's not right. There aren't even dark clouds in the sky. How can there be thunder? Naruto also looked at it with some confusion. Although he was curious, he could still hear Whitebeard's words. After a few flashes of his body, Naruto arrived at the training ground. Sure enough, Suzuki was practicing there. He was doing push UPS crazily, and the sweat all over his body was splashing in the air. Suzuki. Naruto shouted. Naruto, your forehead protector. When Suzuki saw Naruto, the first thing he saw was the forehead protector on Naruto's forehead. Naruto proudly mentioned the forehead protector, hee hee, how about it? This was given to me by Mr. Iruka himself. Advertisement. Suzuki smiled, if Naruto graduates successfully, then the possibility of being assigned to a team in the future will be higher. But he quickly hid his smile, it's just graduation, it's still far away. Then, Suzuki reacted immediately, where's dad? Didn't he go find you? Naruto was just about to argue with Suzuki, but he quickly reacted after hearing Suzuki's words, that's right. Dad asked us to prepare and leave the village later. Hearing Naruto's words, Suzuki was startled for a moment, but quickly calmed down. 
After all, he is pursuing power now, and his bond with the village is not too deep yet. As long as he can follow Whitebeard. Not to mention leaving the village, even if he went to other ninja villages and attacked Kanaha in turn, he had no complaints. Without further ado, I'm going to get my stuff first. Naruto and Suzuki went back to their respective homes and quickly packed their bags and gathered at the entrance of the village. Whoosh. A figure suddenly stopped in front of Naruto and Suzuki. Uncle with white hair. Naruto shouted pointing at Kakashi. Closing the little lubei in his hand, Kakashi said helplessly, I am less than 30 years old, am I about to become an uncle? Just as Naruto was about to step forward and say something, Suzuki stretched out his hand to stop Naruto. Suzuki. Naruto was confused. Suzuki was not stupid. When he heard Whitebeard say that he wanted to leave the village, he knew that he had become a traitor. Since they are rebel ninjas, Kanaha's ninjas are enemies that need to be wary of. Suzuki looked at Kakashi, what can I do for you? Kakashi looked at Naruto and Suzuki, even he didn't know what to say. After a while, he spoke. I hope you will remember that Kanaha is your hometown. Before Suzuki and Naruto could react, Kakashi's figure disappeared, and with it, the sealed book in Naruto's hand. Ah, my scroll is gone. Naruto shouted. Suzuki directly covered Naruto's mouth, idiot. Don't you know that our rebellion against the village has been discovered? Get out of the village immediately. Advertisement. Ah, betray the village. Before Naruto could say anything, Suzuki dragged Naruto out of the village. The forest behind Hokujin Yan is more like a ruin than a forest. Under the power of Whitebeard, the originally ecologically intact forest was bombarded by Whitebeard into what it looked like after an 8 magnitude earthquake. Boom, boom, boom. The boulder rolled down, and a cage composed of the Vitra Wishful Rod came into view. Inside the cage, third Hokage Sarutobi Hirazan was panting. The Vitra Rui Rod disappeared, and the scarred figure of the monkey demon appeared in front of third generation. Sarutobi, I can't hold it any longer. Next, it's up to you. As a burst of white smoke rose, the ape demon turned into a ball of white smoke and disappeared. The monkey demon felt very tired. He had never been so tired after playing Nine Tails. When the third generation saw the monkey demon returning, he felt a sense of despair. He had almost used up all his chakra in the battle just now. Kid Hokage, can't you handle it anymore? I'll leave first. My two sons are still waiting for me. Whitebeard looked at third generation and smiled. Listening to Whitebeard's words, third generation gradually felt a sense of determination in their hearts. As long as Whitebeard stays here forever, Suzuki and Naruto will never leave. The village will not lose two big killers. The zombie sealing technique, which is enough to seal everything in the world, must also be able to deal with Whitebeard. Third generation thought this way, and the few chakras in his body began to operate. Whitebeard glanced at third generation in surprise. He felt the determination in third generation's heart and its rising momentum. He knew that third generation, as the so-called shadow of a village, would definitely have a trump card. Gula li la. I didn't expect that a conspirator like you would sometimes fight to the death. Whitebeard showed an incomprehensible smile. Third generation's eyes flashed. What did Whitebeard see? Whitebeard didn't say anything more, but turned around, his smooth and traceless back exposed, and the flag of the Whitebeard pirates group was very eye-catching. Third generation's eyes lit up when they saw this, the opportunity has come. How could he let Whitebeard go? While forming seals, he stepped forward and ran, ghoul. However, before the seal was completed, he fell to the ground due to loss of strength and passed out directly. Advertisement. Chapter 33, I have to be strong in my life, dad. Advertisement. Chapter 33, I have to be strong in my life, dad. At the gate of Kanaha, Whitebeard appeared. He felt Suzuki and Naruto outside the village, smiled and walked out. Dad. Naruto and Suzuki walked up, both carrying backpacks. Whitebeard stretched out two giant hands and rubbed their heads. Naruto accepted it with a smile on his face, while Suzuki was a little shy, and then smoothed his messed up hair with his hands. By the way, Dad, how was your talk with Grandpa Hokage? Naruto looked at him with an innocent expression, which made Suzuki speechless. Suzuki heard what was happening on the Hokage's rock, and didn't believe Whitebeard's just talk. Sure enough, Whitebeard didn't hide it at all and said directly, I gave the Hokage boy a beating. Nanny. Naruto was a little anxious. Dad, are you not hurt? Whitebeard laughed and said, of course I'm fine, but the Hokage boy may have to stay in bed for a while. Naruto is not as anxious as before. Without the interference of Nine Tails, not only can he use Chakra very smoothly, even his personality is not as anxious as before. Although he is still lively and a bit silly, at least he will not act out of emotion on many things. Suzuki's eyes were full of excitement. He knew that his father was very strong, but he didn't expect that even the Hokage was no match for his father. Plus, his father looked relaxed now. This means that dad's strength has surpassed Hokage by a lot. No matter how powerful Achiha Itaki is, can he be as powerful as Hokage? As long as you practice well with Father Whitebeard, you will definitely be able to kill Achiha Itaki in the near future. Thinking like this, Suzuki felt very excited and wanted to start practicing right there. Advertisement. Daddy, Daddy, where are we going now? Naruto's eyes sparkled. Going out of the village for the first time, following his father and brothers, Naruto couldn't help but feel excited. When I'm in the village, even when I'm most free, I still feel the vague sight, which makes me completely uncomfortable. Even Suzuki was excited, but he didn't show it on his face. Whitebeard looked to the east. He remembered that Suzuki said that the east of the fire country is the sea. The sea. Whitebeard blurted. The sea. Suzuki and Naruto were also excited. They have never seen what the sea looks like since they were young. Whitebeard knew that the sea of this ninja world was probably not as majestic as the Grand Line. But Whitebeard still wanted to see if the sea in the ninja world felt different. That's right. I remember my father said that your pirate group is the Whitebeard pirate group, right? Naruto chattered with a rare flash of memory. Whitebeard chuckled, good son, he has a good memory? Now that he has come to this ninja world, he has been reborn. If we don't make the name Whitebeard in the ninja world, it would be unreasonable. Listening to Whitebeard's words, Suzuki and Naruto also felt excited. Whitebeard waved his hand, then, target, the sea of the kingdom of fire. Suzuki also took out a map from his backpack, the nearest town is Kaikyoyama Castle, I can add some information there. Before Suzuki could finish speaking, Naruto suddenly ran forward in a hurry. Hey, where are you going? Suzuki yelled. Whoever arrives last is the clown. As Naruto ran, he turned around and stuck out his tongue to make faces at Suzuki, patting his butt at the same time. A tic-tac-toe symbol raised on Suzuki's forehead, that crane tail. Advertisement. 
Just when Whitebeard thought Suzuki would disdain such a childlike challenge, whoosh, Suzuki also rushed towards Naruto with a swish, and at that speed, it seemed that he was using all his strength. Whitebeard looked at this scene and couldn't help but sigh that young people still have energy. While thinking this, Whitebeard gathered strength in his legs. Call. A whirlwind arose on the spot, and Whitebeard flew out like a rocket. Suzuki, you're too slow, ha 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 ha. Naruto laughed happily as he ran. Damn, stop talking nonsense, you scoundrel. Suzuki showed unwillingness and accelerated as hard as he could. Just as the two were chasing each other, a whirlwind suddenly blew over, blowing their hair to flutter. What followed was a cry like thunder. Goo la la la, you are still too slow. Whitebeard quickly came to the front of the two of them, and stepped on the ground with a pair of giant feet, making a thumping sound. The birds around him were frightened by the movement and flew away. Dad, that's not fair. Naruto shouted, speeding up, but it was still less than one-tenth of Whitebeard's speed. Suzuki's eyes widened as well, he didn't expect this dad to be so shameless. Goo la la la, the tsunami won't wait for you. As he said that, Whitebeard swung his arms and moved forward quickly. It was late at night, and the three finally arrived at Kikyo Mountain Castle. Whitebeard slept on the street while Naruto and Suzuki checked into a hotel. It was late at night and the moon was shining brightly in the sky. Whitebeard opened his eyes and looked into a dark place. There is no one else here, so there is no need to hide. Advertisement. I saw a thin figure walking out of the darkness. He has white hair tied up and a pair of round-rimmed glasses. The harmless smile on his face makes people feel very friendly at first sight. However, Whitebeard has traveled all over the country for so many years and has seen everyone. He does not despise this person because he is harmless to humans and animals. Especially in this world filled with chakra. Looking at the forehead protector that the man was wearing, what appeared was the symbol of a musical note. Whitebeard didn't recognize it, so he only thought it was Xiao Ninja Village. Hello, Mr. Whitebeard, or Mr. Edward Newgate. My name is Yakushi Kabuto. Kabuto showed an amiable smile and began to introduce himself. Whitebeard was a little surprised. His real name was rarely spoken in the ninja world, but this Yakushi Kabuto could say it completely. This means that Yakushi Kabuto, or the force behind Yakushi Kabuto, has a good intelligence system in Kanaha. What's the matter? Whitebeard didn't show his face to Kabuto who was smiling. Seeing this, Kabuto seemed to be relieved, and then stepped forward and said, Sir Edward, judging from your name, you are from the Kingdom of Thunder, right? With such a strong strength, but coming from the Kingdom of Thunder, there is something unspeakable. Kabuto speculated that there was a reason why Whitebeard was from the Kingdom of Thunder. His name, appearance, and even his exaggerated muscles could hardly be said to have anything to do with the Kingdom of Thunder. Whitebeard squinted his eyes, I'm not from the Kingdom of Thunder. I have something to say. Whitebeard has always been straightforward in his speech, and he can't stand Kabuto's way of being too tactful and polite at the same time. Seeing this, Kabuto also figured out Whitebeard's character. My lord, I am very interested in Uchiha Suzuki. If you ask for a price, or if you need any secret skills, we can provide them. As long as I can leave Uchiha Suzuki in the hands of my lord. After listening to Kabuto's words, Whitebeard looked over. He had no expression at all, but it made Kabuto feel like a light on his back. Sir Edward. Kabuto adjusted his glasses nervously. Who is your master? What do you want Suzuki for? Whitebeard asked two questions succinctly. Hearing this, Kabuto gained some confidence. After all, orikimaru sama's name still carries weight in the entire ninja world. Lord Orikimaru, you are my lord. He said, lifting his glasses, and the lenses reflected light. Advertisement. Chapter 34 Buying a Boat. Advertisement. Chapter 34 Buying a Boat. Do not know. With Whitebeard's words, Kabuto almost pulled his glasses off. He didn't believe that such a strong man didn't know Orikimaru? Are you kidding me? But when he saw Whitebeard's eyes, Kabuto felt that Whitebeard was not lying. Since Lord Edward is so happy, I won't hide it anymore. Lord Orikimaru needs Uchiha Suzuki's body. Do you understand? I didn't expect your master to have such a hobby. Whitebeard looked incomprehensible. Kabuto waved his hands repeatedly. No, in short, I hope you will seriously consider it. As long as you give Uchiha Suzuki to me, Orikimaru sama will give you everything you want. Everything you want. Whitebeard asked suspiciously. Ninjutsu, money, women, including eternal life. Kabuto said, his eyes flashing with enthusiasm. Kabuto felt that his conditions were very interesting. He knew that Suzuki and Whitebeard had not known each other for a long time, so how could they establish such a deep bond? This guy named Whitebeard seems to be quite young. It's the time when he is most interested in things like immortality and longevity. With this as a condition, are you afraid that this Whitebeard won't agree? Eternal life? Goo la 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 la. Whitebeard burst into laughter, lighting up several surrounding houses. Who is that late at night? Everyone poked their heads out and saw the giant Whitebeard. That's okay. Everyone turned off the lights again and went back to their houses to sleep. Kabuto was almost dumbfounded. Not only did this Whitebeard look weird, but he didn't even have the feeling of a ninja at all whose ninja screams in the middle of the night. Not only will his whereabouts be exposed, he will also be targeted by other ninjas. Don't get involved with things like immortality. And let me tell you, Suzuki is my Whitebeard's son. No one can take him away. After saying that, Whitebeard leaned against the wall and continued to narrow his eyes. Kabuto was stunned by Whitebeard's words at first, but then he realized that this Whitebeard is a real character? Advertisement. But people like this are also the ones he and Orikimaru have the most trouble with. Akunao slowly slipped from Kabuto's sleeve and fell into his hand. In this case, let's kill this Whitebeard. Although Kabuto specializes in research and medical skills, he is still quite confident in his own strength. A fierce light flashed in Kabuto's eyes, and the kunao in his hand emitted a strange light under the moonlight. Zheng, stretching out his arms, the cold light of kunao quickly approached Whitebeard. Bah! Kabuto felt a white shadow flash before his eyes, and before he could notice anything, a sharp pain came from his chest. Tick tock, tick tock. Kabuto looked down little by little and saw that his chest had been punched through by Whitebeard. Blood was dripping down the body and Whitebeard's fist to the ground. Kabuto's face was shocked for a while, and then he spoke, Edward, your excellency, I hope you will think about it. After saying that, Kabuto immediately died, and Whitebeard threw the body to the ground with some confusion. Thump. 
Kabuto's body fell to the ground, and its skin began to rot rapidly at a speed visible to the naked eye, and soon became like a corpse that had been dead for many years. Whitebeard also discovered something was wrong. The blood on Kabuto's body did not look like that of a living person, but more like the blood of a dead person who had been dead for many days. Whitebeard looked around, and finally his eyes settled on one place. The main body Kabuto in the distance was still breathing a sigh of relief, secretly thinking that he was acting cautiously. Fortunately, he only used the body of technique, the dead soul, to find Whitebeard. If he had gone there in person, he would probably have hated himself on the spot. Whoosh. At this moment, a gust of breeze blew, and Kabuto's eyes changed from thankfulness to horror. I saw that Whitebeard had arrived beside him at some unknown time. Love, Sir Edward. Kabuto swallowed his saliva and asked with a trembling voice. Advertisement. He could clearly feel Whitebeard's punch just now with the death soul technique. He could guarantee that speed and power. If you try it again, he won't be able to react. Whitebeard put his head next to Kabuto's ear. Tell Orikimura not to play Suzuki's plan, do you understand? Kabuto tried his best to control the trembling of his body and forced out a smile. Yes, Sir Edward. Afterwards, Whitebeard left Kabuto. Kabuto felt as if he had been granted amnesty. At some point, the sweat on his head had soaked into his clothes. He was breathing heavily. The feeling of escaping death made him understand that it was good to be alive. Soon, daytime arrived, and Whitebeard took Naruto and Suzuki on their way. After recharging their energy for a night, the three of them were all very fast. For half a day, a salty and humid sea breeze blew in my face. Huh? Is this the sea? Naruto looked at the endless blue in front of him and felt excited. Suzuki also stared wide-eyed. He had only seen the sea in books. Whitebeard was also feeling very excited at this time. Before coming to the ninja world, he spent most of his time at the sea. He had not seen the sea for so many days, and he felt very happy. Although as a demon fruit power, Whitebeard has a natural resistance to the sea. But this does not affect Whitebeard's love and admiration for the sea. Seeing a port, several people walked over excitedly. How much does it cost to buy a boat? When the careless businessman heard that the business was coming, he showed a cunning look in his eyes, then turned around and said, What to buy? Before he finished speaking, the businessman was stunned. His head slowly raised, his eyes finally fixed on Whitebeard's face. Giant, giant. Impolite brat, Whitebeard said. Advertisement. At this time, Naruto said, Uncle, how much does it cost to buy a boat? It's best to get a big one, one that can fit my dad. The businessman also breathed a sigh of relief after hearing Naruto's words. The ninja world is full of wonders, and for a giant, businessmen are quite accepting of it. A trace of cruelty flashed in the businessman's eyes, and then a smile quickly appeared on his face, of course I have the boat you mentioned. With that said, he took Naruto and others on a tour. A row of ships looked over, and Whitebeard finally understood. The development of ships in the ninja world is average, and compared to the pirate world, there are still much fewer tricks. There is neither a recording pointer nor a coding technology. It can be said to be very original. Whitebeard was also considered an expert at sea and chose the best of these ships. It's him. The businessman's eyes also lit up, my guest, you have good eyesight. This ship is really good. Soon, the merchant quoted the price. As the saying goes, there is no business without treachery, and as a member of Cardo Shipping Company, he cannot let this order go. Whitebeard and Naruto had no idea about Kagam, but Suzuki knew it very well. He had just supplemented his knowledge in this area on the way. He knew that this businessman was selling them at a high price, dozens of times higher than ordinary people. Suzuki said directly, hey, is the price wrong? Suzuki was very unhappy. You know, the expenses along the way came out of his pocket, and he didn't want to be ripped off for no reason. Upon hearing Suzuki's words, the flattery on the businessman's face disappeared instantly. Sir, it's wrong to say that. As he said that, the businessman waved his hand. Are you really not going to buy it? What? At this time, Naruto and Suzuki realized that a circle of people had gathered around them, including some ronin holding katana swords. They held various weapons in their hands and looked at the three white beards with fierce eyes. Advertisement. Chapter 35 Pirates are synonymous with freedom. Advertisement. Chapter 35 Pirates are synonymous with freedom. Children, let's see the reputation of Cardo Company early. After saying that, the businessman also took out a dagger from his pocket. I'll give you two choices, buy the boat, or, hand over all your money. Looking at the people gradually surrounding them, the three of them didn't panic at all. Suzuki sighed, it seems that Kanaha's forehead protector is not useful. Naruto hit each other with his fists and palms, let me test the results of my training. Whitebeard even sat directly on the ground and said to the two of them, you two, solve it quickly. When the businessman saw the three people being so arrogant, he couldn't help but feel angry, young men, come on. The crowd quickly surged up, they let out strange screams, and swung the objects in their hands towards Naruto and Suzuki. Phew, bang. Suzuki dodged the attack and then punched the attacker in the face. Then he rushed directly into the crowd and used the familiar Uchiha fluid technique. Soon, many figures in the crowd were knocked into the air and then fell hard. Naruto was not to be outdone. Under Whitebeard's love education, his strength, speed, and perception reached new heights. Even Shadow Clone didn't bother to use it to deal with these gangsters. There was a crackle, and a group of people were knocked away by Naruto. The businessman looked horrified. The giant who looked the most threatening didn't make a move, but the two little kids exploded with such great strength. It's simply unimaginable. Soon, all the people around him were eliminated, leaving only the profiteer standing there, at a loss, and messy in the sea breeze. Whitebeard stood up on the ground and looked at the profiteers, is this how you have always done business? If placed in the pirate world, such a profiteer would have been hacked to death by pirates long ago. The profiteer swallowed his saliva and began to show off his strength. Don't be too proud. Do you know who our boss is? Advertisement. Whitebeard said nothing and quietly watched the profiteer's performance. My boss is Cardo, the Emperor of the Sea. This is the territory of Cardo Company. Emperor of the Sea? Are there four emperors here too? Whitebeard's expression changed. Seeing Whitebeard's expression change, the profiteer instantly became emboldened. You see, he actually beat my people so badly. Pay compensation. Suzuki and Naruto also looked at Whitebeard helplessly. Is this Cardo really so powerful? Even my dad, who knows nothing about it, has heard of it. Whitebeard lowered his head and approached the profiteer. 
Feeling the beast-like aura approaching suddenly, the profiteer almost fainted, and the fear in his heart was aroused again. Guest, guest, I didn't mean to threaten you. Whitebeard said, that cardo you are talking about is the emperor of the sea. The profiteer shrank his neck, everyone said so. Whitebeard grinned and frightened the profiteer with a mouthful of white fang. This giant can't eat people, right? Where is he? Bo, the country of waves. The profiteer replied. After getting the answer, Whitebeard did not get on the boat immediately, but ordered the profiteers to wake up the gangsters on the ground. Let them move supplies to the ship and get a flag. The pattern, click on it. Whitebeard pointed at the tattoo on his back. The artist tremblingly drew the flag of the Whitebeard pirates on the flag. Wow, wow, wow. Advertisement. The black flag slowly went up through the pulley and finally reached the top. Naruto and Suzuki looked at the high flag with excitement in their eyes, although they didn't know what Whitebeard was going to do. But this adventure-like experience and strong sense of ritual still made the two teenagers very excited. Just when the profiteer thought he could finally send these three men away, Whitebeard picked him up with one hand and threw him on the boat. It's up to you to take the helm. The purpose is the kingdom of waves. Whitebeard said loudly. Yes, yes. The profiteer was already numb, but as soon as he felt Whitebeard's breath, he was stunned. He had no choice but to take the steering wheel himself and drive Whitebeard and others towards the kingdom of waves. Nami country? Wow, you are going abroad. Naruto jumped up and down on the deck. Suzuki looked at the vastness of the sea and felt very good. Whitebeard ate and drank the supplies he had just plundered, and was in a very good mood about being able to go to sea again. The Kingdom of Fire is very close to the Kingdom of Waves, and it took less than two hours to sail to the Kingdom of Waves. After disembarking, the Profiteer was released, and Whitebeard and others observed the Kingdom of Waves. The Country of Waves is an island country with no bridges connecting it to the mainland, so it feels quite isolated from the world. A light mist enveloped the island, and Whitebeard smelled it, feeling the smell of blood. It seems that this island is not peaceful. Whitebeard murmured, leading Naruto and Suzuki towards the direction of the smell of blood. After pushing aside the last leaf, the noise and shouts of death finally became clear in my ears. What came into view was a village that was being massacred. A group of people like bandits were plundering the village, and the people in the village were rushing to escape. All the women were violated, and all the men were killed. Even the children and the elderly were not spared. Looking at this scene, Whitebeard had no expression. He had seen too many such things. He turned his attention to his two sons. Advertisement. Naruto looked at this scene and trembled all over. He was kind-hearted and couldn't bear to see such a scene, but what was more in his heart was the shattering of his three views. Why, massacre civilians? Why do you want to kill defenseless people? Is this what the world is like? Suzuki was better than Naruto, but he was not at peace inside because everything in front of him reminded him of Uchiha's night of genocide. The current scene was the same scene that Itaki used Tsukuyomi to let him see. It will be even more brutal, more disordered, and even more like hell. Suzuki unconsciously turned on the Sherinon. It wasn't until his eyes heard that Suzuki turned it off belatedly. Sons, these things are not unique. This kind of thing happens all over the world. Whitebeard said, Dad, why is this happening? Why can't we all get along well? Naruto's eyes were even filled with tears. If it hadn't been for Whitebeard before, Naruto would have shed tears. Whitebeard also disliked such things very much. He could vaguely feel that these were done by the man named Cardo. What are you thinking now? Whitebeard asked instead of answering Naruto's question directly. Suzuki clenched his fists and looked at Whitebeard, Dad. I want to kill them. Although Naruto was not so bloody, the resentment in his heart was already on his face, and the beard on his face became a little ferocious. Whitebeard smiled slightly and patted their heads. Just do whatever you want to do, no need for me, an old man, to give orders? Pirates are synonymous with freedom. Listening to Whitebeard's words, Naruto and Suzuki smiled at first, and then rushed towards the village in unison. Whitebeard looked at Suzuki and Naruto's retreating figures and murmured, Come on, sons, the first shot that will make the Whitebeard pirates famous. Advertisement. Chapter 36 Dasna. Advertisement. Chapter 36 Dasna. Naruto held a kunau and used the killing technique learned from Kanaha subconsciously for the first time. Bah! The kunau stabbed the enemy's throat, and blood splashed onto Naruto's body like a fountain. Naruto was stunned, the villain covered his neck and watched as Naruto made a whooshing sound and then died. Naruto's eyes widened slightly, this was his first time killing someone. Is this what it feels like to stab a kunau into someone's neck? The cut blood vessels were like broken strings. The blood gushing out was like hot water from a shower. All of this was strange yet familiar, which made Naruto feel a little confused. Thank you, thank you, Ninja-sama. A female voice suddenly came, causing Naruto to wake up from his daze. The pregnant woman who was saved from the villain was in tears and thanked Naruto profusely. Naruto finally came to his senses, you and the villagers go away first, I'll deal with them. At this time, Suzuki's voice suddenly came from the distance. The one at the back of the crane? Behind. Suzuki noticed Naruto's situation and quickly warned him. Naruto's head tilted subconsciously, and a dagger grazed his ear. Short, spin, kick, advertisement. After a set of moves, the sneak attacker behind him was kicked away by Naruto, and several of his ribs were broken. The appearance of Naruto and Suzuki was like putting effervescent tablets in warm water, and all the villains instantly boiled. It's a ninja. The ninja is coming. Everyone, run quickly. The villains made a noise and ran away in a hurry, but then they found a tall giant standing in front of them. Whitebeard grinned, and with a mouthful of white fang, the villains were frightened. With a thought, a burst of white light appeared on Kong Yunki. Ha! Whitebeard shouted loudly, and waved Kong Yunki forward in his hand. The strong white light turned into a crescent moon, like a breeze blowing on the villains. Call. Groups of bloody flowers bloomed on them, followed by bursts of shrill shouts. The villains who tried to escape were cut into two pieces. They stretched out their only hands and squirmed slowly on the ground like insects, dragging out a bright red trail of blood. On the other side, Suzuki and Naruto's cleaning work was also over. In the end, only a few thieves were left, and Whitebeard planned to let them go and let them report to Cardo. Remember, we are the Whitebeard pirates. Whitebeard, covered in blood, is like a god of death. These little thieves were scared to death, and after repeatedly saying yes, they stumbled towards a place. Naruto, are you okay? Suzuki breathed heavily, not sure whether he was excited or tired. He looked at Naruto with concern. 
He had also noticed just now that something was not right with Naruto. Naruto wiped the bloodline from his face, it's okay. Advertisement. In an environment like that just now, even if Naruto wanted to adjust his condition, he would unconsciously go to the rescue as soon as he saw someone in danger. In this battle, Naruto killed 16 villains. Suzuki was a little surprised to see how quickly Naruto adapted. At this moment, the villagers in the village began to flock to Whitebeard and others. Thank you all. Thank you, Ninjasama. Thank you, you have avenged my old mother. The villagers surrounded the three people, and many even knelt down and sat down in front of the three people. Suzuki and Naruto had never seen this scene before. They both blushed and waved their hands saying no. After finally breaking free from the crowd, Naruto finally returned to his original state. He waved his fists, this Cardo is so abominable, when I see him, I will give him a slap in the face. Although Suzuki didn't express any opinions, he secretly clenched his fists. These villains who burned, killed, and looted reminded him of Ataki. He felt no psychological pressure at all by killing these villains. Instead, he could vent the pent-up pressure. Whitebeard didn't say anything. He knew that Naruto and Suzuki had to go through this step if they wanted to gain a foothold in the ninja world and even become famous. Just when the three of them were about to go to Cardo Company, a man stood in front of them. Three ninja masters, I am Dejuna. Can I ask you a favor? I will be paid. Dejuna is an old man wearing glasses and seems to have some wisdom. I am a bridge building engineer. I originally wanted to build a bridge to connect the Kingdom of Waves with the mainland. Who knew that Demcardo wanted to control the Kingdom of Waves for his shipping business? I repeatedly blocked the bridge building plan, and several bridge builders were killed, even me. Dasna swallowed his saliva, with deep fear in his eyes, even me, they seem to be targeting me. These villains seem to be just to deal with me. I, I'm sorry to the villagers here. Naruto quickly said, it's not my fault, Grandpa, it's all this Cardo's fault. Suzuki nodded too. Advertisement. Dejuna was very happy to see Naruto and Suzuki being so sensible. Three ninjas, my request is that you can protect me while I am building the bridge. When I finish building the bridge, you can give me everyone is rewarded. Oh, it's a ninja mission. Dad, Naruto said, looking at Whitebeard with hope. Suzuki also looked at Whitebeard and acted righteously, asking for his life for the people. What middle school boy wouldn't like this kind of thing? In fact, this is exactly what Whitebeard wants. Instead of waiting for Cardo to come to his door, he might as well help Dasna, so that he can also get in touch with Cardo's men. Then follow the clues and find Cardo directly. Seeing Whitebeard nod, the stone in Dasna's heart finally fell. The three of them walked on the wet road of the Land of Waves, heading towards Dejuna's house. Along the way, in order to be less boring, or perhaps to give Naruto and Suzuki more moral baggage, Dejuna talked about his son, Gaisha. Gaisha was a passionate man who willingly died on the cross in order to resist Cardo's evil rule. Cardo invited many people to watch the execution, in order to shock the people of the Country of Waves. And because of the death of his son, Dejuna began to look for a way to revive the Country of Waves. Then he learned that. The Country of Wave is poor because of the lack of supplies and wants to communicate with the land. However, transportation is firmly controlled by Cardo, and tariffs have become extremely high in the hands of Cardo. This made the Country of Waves, which was already overwhelmed, even worse. Listening to Tajuna's words, not to mention Naruto, even Suzuki looked sullen and wished he could kill Cardo right now. Whitebeard greatly appreciated the actions of Dasna and Gaisha. Don't worry, glasses boy, you will definitely build this bridge safely. Whitebeard smiled heartily and patted Dasna on the head with his big hand. Dasna was speechless, but couldn't say anything. After knowing that Whitebeard was 72 years old, he could only recognize the boy in Whitebeard's words. The country of waves is very small, and the four of them soon arrived at the village where Dasna lived. The village was very close to the construction bridge, which was convenient for work. As soon as the four arrived at the village, the villagers did not welcome Dasna as usual, but stared at Dasna's back in surprise. Whitebeard's height of 6.6 .6 meters is even taller than many low houses in the village. Advertisement. Chapter 37 Undercurrent. Advertisement. Chapter 37, Undercurrent. In Kanaha village, the news of the third generation's injury was strictly sealed. Not to mention the ninja world, even in the entire village, only a handful of people knew about it. After all, third generation is the person who claims to be the strongest Hokage. The strongest Hokage was beaten by an old man in his 70s. No matter how you say it, such a thing is disgraceful. In Kanaha hospital, the third generation slowly opened its eyes. Hokage-sama, are you awake? A voice came from the side. Third generation turned its head with difficulty and saw Kakashi, opening its dry mouth. I slept for how long? Kakashi replied. Report to Lord Hokage, it's been three days. It's been three days. At this time, third generation seemed to have come to its senses and began to ask. Naruto, and Suzuki, how's it going? Lord Hokage, I'm sorry for letting them run away from the village, but I got the sealed book back. Kakashi has a pair of dead eyes, neither sad nor happy. Listening to Kakashi's words, third generation also understood the meaning of Kakashi's words. Since they even got the sealed book back, why couldn't Naruto and Suzuki catch it? Kakashi is Jonin? Obviously, Kakashi deliberately let Naruto and Kakashi go. As for why Kakashi let the two go, third generation also knows it in its heart. Hasn't Sakumo's death been diluted by time? Third generation thought this in his heart, glanced at Kakashi, and saw that Kakashi still had dead eyes. Advertisement. Okay, got it. Third generation said weakly. Kakashi is Kanaha's top combat power. It can be said that unless Kakashi does something extremely sinful, third generation will not punish Kakashi in any way. At this time, the door of the hospital was opened, and three old figures walked in. Danzo was the first to speak when he saw third generation. You woke up pretty quickly, Sarutobi. Third generation turned its head slightly and passed. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Danzo. Danzo snorted coldly, but he was also secretly happy. The third generation was so seriously injured, and although it has woken up now, its end is approaching. In other words, the hokage position that Danzo has been coveting for decades is likely to be vacant again. You two should stop bickering and talk about business first. Yudin Koharu said. Let's brainstorm about Whitebeard and Suzuki and Naruto. Mitokato Homura pulled up a chair and sat down. Looking at these old ghosts, Kakashi felt a chill in his heart and was about to bow out when third generation retained him. Kakashi, just listen here. After all, you are also Minato's student. Yes, Hokage-sama. 
Soon, the elders of Kanaha began a meeting. My proposal is that Whitebeard is wanted. Third generation looked at the ceiling of the ward and said leisurely. The other three elders frowned upon hearing this. Sarutobi, are you sleepy? Naruto and Suzuki are in Whitebeard's hands. Aren't they afraid that other countries will covet them? Danzo stabbed out. Advertisement. Third generation smiled softly. Of course it's not that simple. This person is wanted, not that person. Everyone looked at third generation with doubtful eyes. When you are wanted, describe Whitebeard as more powerful, and at the same time, don't give a large bounty. In this case, no one will deliberately look for Whitebeard. If they see Whitebeard, they will only provide relevant information. This can prevent ninjas from other villages from coming into contact with Naruto and Suzuki. And after we get the information, we can send our own troops and find a way to bring Naruto and Suzuki back. Everyone listened quietly, and third generation continued. Also, the news of Naruto and Suzuki's rebellion against the village must be blocked. If that person finds out, he may cause some trouble. The so-called that person refers to Uchiha Itaki. If he knew about this, he would definitely take action. It is even possible to point the finger at Kanaha. Third generation knew that the only one Itaka cared about was Suzuki. Kakashi was also a little emotional. He was indeed a third generation adult who had been Hokage for decades. Just after waking up, you can tell a lot of strategies, and you can make tricks even with a wanted order. The three elders also nodded. There is nothing wrong with what third generation said. On the other side of the ninja world, in a dark cave, several colorful humanoid phantoms stood together in a ring. The speaking phantom has a pair of lavender eyes, and in the lavender pupils, black circles are arranged in an orderly manner. Everyone is here, the meeting begins now. Pain glanced at several phantoms and said, Sorry, the tailed beasts haven't even started to capture them yet, they're arresting us for meetings every three days. Haydn said somewhat unhappily, Indeed, disturbing my artistic creation. Sia controlled Fei Laihu and made a hoarse, low voice. Brother Scorpion, your artistic recreations are just like that. You might as well learn from me the explosion style. Art that blooms instantly is the way to go. Deodera, we will practice later. As soon as the topic opened, Kisame and Haydn started to make noises, causing the two to fight. Advertisement. For a time, the entire crypt was filled with joyful air. Quiet. Pain started to speak, and as soon as he spoke, there was silence all around. Pain also had some headaches. The members of the Akatsuki organization were indeed very strong, but they were just not easy to discipline. After all, these people are all outlaws, and if it weren't for the Rinnegan, they would have killed Pain long ago. Right now, I have important information to share. Ju, tell me. A giant pitcher plant appeared, and he opened his mouth and told the story of Whitebeard entering the village, injuring the third generation, and taking Suzuki and Naruto away. Hearing this, the Akatsuki members were a little surprised and started talking about it. Third Hokage? Isn't that the strongest Hokage? Even he can defeat him, so this Whitebeard's strength is a bit scary. Kisame held his chin with his hand, thoughtfully. But Kakuza said unconvinced, Hey, the strongest Hokage? I have fought against the god of ninja. How dare Sarutobi Hiruzen dare to touch porcelain? Although Sia couldn't see his face, he still showed a hint of indifference. Who is the strongest Hokage? Even the strongest Kaze cage is no match for him. Zee secretly turned his gaze to Itaki, trying to see something from Itaki's exposed eyes. However, Itaki's eyes were very calm, and he didn't seem to care at all about Suzuki's life or death. But unknown to everyone, Itaki's heart was already in turmoil. Suzuki, actually rebelled against the village? Itaka felt very tired. The reason why he kept Suzuki was because he wanted Suzuki to kill him personally so that Suzuki could revive the Uchiha clan as the hero of Kanaha. To rebel against the village was completely out of his plan? Itaka's heart was filled with uncertainty. What did he think of Suzuki in the third Hokage? And, the most important question is, who is Whitebeard? At the same time, in the Kingdom of Waves, after two days of getting along, the three Whitebeards were getting along very happily with Dasna's family. Today, the bridge builders and workers have gathered and can start building the bridge. Advertisement. Chapter 38, Fight Zabuza? Advertisement. Chapter 38, Fight Zabuza? Kakaka. The landing gear transported various materials, and Dasna waved his hands to direct the workers. As an engineer, Dasna has high technical skills and does not need to use his hands very much. The three white beards stood in a suitable position, overlooking the construction progress of the entire bridge. Just as the workers were sweating profusely, suddenly, a burst of white mist began to fill the air. Dejuna murmured in confusion. It's strange. At this time, it shouldn't be foggy. At this time, three figures suddenly fell behind Dasna. Uncle Dejuna, stop work quickly. Suzuki said as he and Naruto stopped in front of Tejuna. Dasna also realized something was wrong, and he immediately shouted. Call it off? Call it a day. The workers walked very fast, and soon, only three members of the Whitebeard Pirates and Dejuna were left on the bridge. At this time, a voice came over. This voice came from all directions, like a ghost. Oh, not a bad reaction. Naruto and Suzuki looked around in surprise. Suzuki opened the Sherry Non, but still couldn't find the enemy's location. The Uchiha clan? Looks like I'm about to add something more important to my killing manual. The voice came again. At this time, a black shadow suddenly appeared in front, and an exaggeratedly shaped sword suddenly appeared from the black shadow. Quickly rushed towards several people, whizzing. Several people dispersed in an instant, and the big knife struck the ground fiercely, piercing deeply into the ground. A figure landed steadily next to the sword, his eyes staring at Dasna like a wild beast. Ninjas of Kanaha, hand over Tatsuna, and I won't take your lives. Naruto immediately shouted. Don't even think about it. He is our mission client. Advertisement. Zabuza chuckled. I remember that Tajuna had no chance to go to Kanaha to entrust ninjas. Suzuki took out a kunao from his ninja bag. Then you don't have to worry about it. You just know that you can just get out of here now. Hearing Suzuki's words, the murderous intent in Zabuza's eyes became even stronger. It seems Kirigakura's news is still too closed. Let me show you what a ghost is. With that said, Zabuza's figure escaped into the mist again. Heart, kidneys, liver, head, which part do you want to lose? Zabuza's voice appeared, and it was accompanied by a very strong murderous aura. Naruto and Suzuki were stunned as soon as the murderous intent came. In their eyes, the thick murderous aura has simply turned into reality, corroding their souls. Wah, what? 
Suzuki and Naruto found that they couldn't move. Even with all his strength, he could only move his feet slightly. It's decided, it's your eyes, Uchiha. As the sound exploded, a huge bright light suddenly appeared and struck Uchiha Suzuki's eyes. In a great crisis, Suzuki was finally able to move. With Sharingan's excellent dynamic vision, he barely escaped the attack of the decapitating sword. Suzuki was not idle after dodging the attack, and began to quickly form seals with his hands. Fire style great fireball technique. A huge fireball spurted out and hit Zabuza. Kid, it's not a wise choice to use fire style in such an environment. Zabuza formed a seal with his hands and was much faster than Suzuki. Water style water prison technique. An oversized round water ball appeared in front of the fireball. The two collided, and a burst of hot steam rolled out, causing Suzuki and Naruto to grimace in pain. Whitebeard never took action, just quietly watching the fight between his two sons. Naruto and Suzuki didn't even look at Whitebeard. They knew that Whitebeard was testing their training results. Advertisement. The thick steam tore open a hole, and the decapitating sword struck out, swiping hard at Naruto. Call. The beheading sword made a powerful and heavy sound, and Naruto dodged sideways. Who? 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 The beheading sword was swung continuously, each time bringing out a whistling wind. But Naruto was able to dodge in time every time? This brat. Zabuza's eyes flashed with surprise. Naruto smiled quite proudly and said, It's far worse than dad's speed. Zabuza was also horrified inside. This kid's reaction and speed are actually faster than by. Zabuza's eyes flashed, and in a flash, he came directly to Naruto's side, and swung the decapitating sword in his hand again. Just when Naruto was about to continue using his reflexes to dodge, Zabuza's figure suddenly turned around, and at a very tricky angle, he stabbed Suzuki with his decapitating sword. Suzuki didn't expect Zabuza's move. Although Sherinan saw the opponent's movements clearly, his body's reaction still couldn't keep up. When he saw Zabuza about to kill his commander, Naruto suddenly formed a rare seal. Ninja Technique Golden Binding A string of golden light suddenly appeared, like a thick golden rope, tightly binding Zabuza? What? Zabuza tried to break free, but found it difficult. Naruto smiled confidently and continued to dance with his hands. Illusion Darkness Technique In Zabuza's eyes, the surroundings suddenly fell into darkness, without any light at all. It's not an exaggeration to say that you can't see your fingers when you reach out. In the eyes of everyone, what they saw was Zabuza suddenly waving his hands like a madman, and then quickly stepped back with his feet. Very weird. Advertisement. You little brat, what on earth did you do? Zabuza was like a blind man. When he spoke, he was not facing Naruto's direction. Crane tail, how do you know these powerful techniques? There was a hint of shock and a hint of unwillingness on Suzuki's face. Naruto scratched his head and smiled. Ha ha ha, I saw it from the book of ceilings. No one knows how much Naruto learned from the sealed book when he fell to the ground, but what is known is that without the restraint of nine tails, Naruto's speed in learning ninjutsu can be described as fast. After hearing this, Suzuki felt a little unwilling. No, now he wants to exert his strength. We can't be looked down upon by Naruto. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Several shurikens flew out sharply, but they did not fly towards Zabuza, but instead flew around Zabuza. If you look carefully, you can see that each shuriken is tied with a steel wire. Sherinon FKS the windmill san no tachi. There was a sound of steel wires rubbing together, and Zabuza was directly tied up. Coupled with Naruto's golden restraint, it could be said that Zabuza found it difficult to break free. Grasping a few wires, Suzuki smiled evilly and held one of them to his mouth. Fire style dragon fire technique. A bit of fire steamed up, and then the fire began to rapidly expand and accelerate, following the wire and hitting Zabuza directly. The flames burned, and the leaping firelight gradually made Zabuza's figure invisible. When all the firelight disappeared, Zabuza's body had disappeared, leaving only the hot wire falling to the ground with white smoke. Haha, <laughs> Suzuki breathed heavily and looked at Naruto rather proudly. Although your jutsu is indeed very strong, I, Uchiha Suzuki, can handle this guy. In his opinion, Zabuza had been burned to ashes. At this time, Whitebeard, who had been silent until now, suddenly spoke. Pride will lead to great suffering. Advertisement. Chapter 39 Take the Move, Young People, Advertisement. Chapter 39 Take the Move, Young People. Hearing this, Suzuki was stunned for a moment. Just when he was about to ask something, he saw a figure appearing not far away. It was Zabuza holding a decapitating sword. How, how is it possible? Suzuki's eyes widened. How did Zabuza escape suddenly? His sherry non is impossible to miss. Zabuza felt bad, he didn't expect to be forced to this point by two Kanaha Jenin. Fortunately, he had quick eyesight and quick hands. When the flames were about to hit, he untied both restraints and quickly used the body replacement technique to escape. Otherwise, he would have capsized in the gutter. At this time, Zabuza lowered his head, but the aura he exuded was like a furious beast. An extremely violent aura spread. Gilo, an even greater murderous aura than before came over. Naruto and Suzuki were frightened again, their pupils trembling. Dasna had already fainted from fright. Zabuza's deep voice sounded. It's your honor to be able to push the ghost man to this point. Zabuza slowly raised his head, his eyes seemed to contain thousands of evil spirits, let me teach you a lesson. Suzuki gritted his teeth, grabbed the kunao with trembling hands, and was about to stab it into his thigh, forcing himself to wake up. Snapped. A large hand grasped Suzuki's. The warmth of the big hands and the rough calluses greatly weakened Suzuki's inner fear of murderous intent. The other big hand also covered Naruto's head and comforted him. Don't be afraid, Dad, I'm behind you. As soon as these words came out, a huge sense of security swept over the two of them. All the fear and emotions affected by murderous intent disappeared. Just when the two regained their confidence and wanted to face Sabiza. Advertisement. This kind of enemy is not something you have to face yet. Let me teach this arrogant guy a lesson. Whitebeard's figure walked forward. He lifted up the captain's cloak, and the pattern of Whitebeard's pirate flag rolled like waves on the cloak. This is really... So handsome, Naruto's eyes seemed to be filled with stars, and he clasped his hands tightly, feeling excited in his heart. He would also learn from his father in the future, even Suzuki's eyes contain fire. In his heart, a real man should be like Father Whitebeard. Zabuza was stunned for a moment when he saw the giant approaching suddenly. 
He had always thought that this giant was just an insignificant person. Although he was tall and strong, he had no chakra fluctuation at all. Not to mention ninjas, now even samurai have chakra. In Zabuza's eyes, Whitebeard is just an ordinary person who supports the scene. Zabuza snorted. It just so happens that the beheading sword is a little broken and needs nourishment with human blood. Whitebeard grinned. Come on, young man. Call. Zabuza turned into an afterimage, dragging the huge beheading sword and slashing at Whitebeard like a heavy hammer. Whitebeard raised his knife to block. Dang. The harsh sound of gold and iron sounded, echoing in the empty construction site. Zabuza's pupils shrank, he had been very strong since he was a child, otherwise he would not have become the heir to the beheading sword. But despite his proud strength, Whitebeard remained motionless. He even just held a knife in one hand to resist, and put the other hand on his waist, which seemed very relaxed. Whitebeard couldn't help but laugh when he saw Zabuza's expression. Young man, it seems that you are very dissatisfied with me. After speaking, he clenched his free hand into a fist, and a dazzling white light ball appeared on his fist. This? What is this? Even Zabuza couldn't help but scream in surprise at this time. Whitebeard didn't speak, but there was a gleam in his eyes. Take the move, young man. The fist glowing with white light slammed into Zabuza's chest. Advertisement. Click. Under Zabuza's surprised gaze, a crack like a spider web appeared out of thin air. Space is broken. Before Zabuza could be confused for a long time, a huge force came from the broken space, followed by a dazzling white light flashing again. Boom. Zabuza's body was directly blasted out and hit the house not far away. The huge force even smashed the house. So handsome. Naruto raised his arms and shouted. Even Suzuki clenched his fists and couldn't hide the fire in his eyes. He also wants to have such power. Stones rolled down from his body, and Zabuza stood up with difficulty. Damn it, what is that? Blood inheritance limit? But why is there no chakra fluctuation? Zabuza murmured, full of disbelief. However, Whitebeard would not give Zabuza a chance to remain dazed. He tapped his feet lightly on the ground. Whoosh. Zabuza felt his eye shadow flicker, and the figure that covered the sky and sun appeared again. Whitebeard wielded the cloud cutter, and the shock fruit's ability was transmitted to the cloud cutter, causing the sword to emit bursts of white light. That's it again? There is no chakra fluctuation at all. Zabuza was horrified in his heart, but he knew that he couldn't escape. He must catch this move. A trace of determination flashed through his heart. Zabuza suddenly raised his decapitating sword and faced Whitebeard's Bushankari. Bang. A harsh roar suddenly sounded, and Zabuza felt that his eardrums were about to burst. Where the two weapons collided, the dazzling light kept flashing, almost blinding Zabuza's eyes. His arms soon shook like chaff, but he still managed to hold on. Whitebeard raised his eyebrows slightly. You are quite capable of catching my sword. Advertisement. Zabuza couldn't make any response, he could only clench his teeth and resist with bloodshot eyes. Whitebeard grinned. Nice eyes, okay. Just let me make it happen for you. The next second, the muscles on Whitebeard's arm suddenly swelled, and several prominent blood vessels began to protrude. Boom, a shocking explosion appeared, but unlike the explosion of the detonating talisman, this explosion was white. When the light gradually dissipated, Suzuki and Naruto looked over and saw that a very large gash had been cut into Zabuza's abdomen. Blood and intestines had flowed all over the floor, and the whole person was dying. As for the decapitating sword, it had also flown out to one side, and the decapitating sword was even severed from the middle part, which was quite tragic. Whitebeard picked up the Kong Yunkai and swung it violently. With the howling of the wind, the blood on the blade was also shaken clean. Zabuza gasped and looked at Whitebeard in disbelief. Two moves? Just two moves? His Cajun Zabuza was defeated by this unknown giant? When he was trying to assassinate the fourth Mizu Cage, he was still able to escape unscathed after a few attacks. But this giant, with the most domineering power, easily severely injured him in two blows. This giant was already a man of shadow strength. Why would such a person do such a task as protecting Dasna? What can I do if I'm not full? Whitebeard felt Zabuza's rich psychological activities and was about to say something. Whoosh. A figure quickly passed by and came to Zabuza's side. Whitebeard didn't feel the murderous intention from it, so he didn't take action. However, he did feel that the visitor was extremely anxious. Soon, Whitebeard made a guess. The visitor seemed to be a woman. She pointed to the logo on the mask. I am from the Mist Shinobi Pursuit Force. This Zabuza is wanted in our village. We need to bring him back. As she said that, seeing that Whitebeard made no move, the woman carefully lifted Zabuza on her shoulders. Then, he nodded slightly to Whitebeard and others. Thank you all. Then, a body flicker technique disappeared. Looking at the place where the woman disappeared, Whitebeard's eyes shone with an inexplicable light. Advertisement. Chapter 40 Suzuki, are you blushing? Advertisement. Chapter 40 Suzuki, are you blushing? Seeing that he had left a safe enough place, Shiro took off his mask and looked at the unconscious Zabuza anxiously. Mr. Zabuza? Mr. Zabuza? Don't sleep. Zabuza heard the voice and opened his eyelids with great difficulty. Bai, where is the giant? Bai said, I have successfully deceived them, now I will take you to Cardo's place. Bai's speed was already very fast, and coupled with his anxiety, he quickly returned to Cardo company. After entering, Shiro directly directed people to prepare things and began to treat Zabuza. At this moment, Kato walked in. When he saw Zabuza's miserable state, he immediately knew that the mission had failed. Ninja, I spent so much money to hire you, is this how you do things? Even an ordinary person who can only build bridges cannot be killed. What's the use of you? When Kato wanted to continue cursing, Bai Yi stretched out his hand. Susu, 2000 sticks passed by Kato's ears. Kadua was silent for a moment, cold sweat fell from his forehead, and his expression turned into flattery. I have spoken harshly, Ninjasama. Then he immediately said to the men around him with a stern expression. Hurry, rescue Mr. Zabuza with all your strength. When Bai continued to treat him, Cardo turned around, a hint of danger flashing in his eyes. Damn ninjas, let you be proud first. When I am ready, I will kill you. After Cardo felt mentally victorious, he walked back to his office with a sinister smile. As time passed, it became night, and Bai's treatment was finally successful. He wiped the sweat from his forehead, feeling grateful but also a little confused. Could it be that he and Mr. Zabuza have been living like this, wandering and having no fixed place to live? 
although he was very satisfied just being with Mr. Zabuza. Advertisement. But he also didn't want to see Mr. Zabuza working so hard just to help some criminals earn dirty bounties. If possible, he really wanted to take Zabuza with him to live in seclusion and live a pastoral life. Thinking of this, Shiro sighed mockingly, he could have Mr. Zabuza by his side, so he shouldn't expect so much. What he has to do is to take good care of Mr. Zabuza as much as possible and serve as Mr. Zabuza's tool. When necessary, block the knife for him. Shiro packed up the surgical instruments and left, letting Zabuza have a good rest. At this time, Zabuza's slightly squinted eyes were all opened, looking at where Shiro left, he sighed. He saw all the changes in the expression on Bai's face just now. After living together for so many years, he also knew what Bai was thinking. However, no matter how much he is Buza, he has enemies in all the ninja world, not to mention Umbu who is chasing Umbu in Kirigakur and is still chasing him to the ends of the earth. Even if you really want to live in seclusion, you will only be found and killed. Unless he has great strength, but this is no longer realistic. At his age, unless there are any opportunities, his strength has basically come to an end. The most likely thing is to rely on a powerful force. Only in this way can we bring safety. After thinking about it, Zabuza slowly fell asleep, perhaps because he was too tired from fighting. In the early morning, rays of sunlight shone down, and the warm feeling made Naruto slowly wake up after practicing for a day. When he woke up, he saw a big sister looking at him. Ah, who are you? Naruto put his hands on the ground and stepped back. But because of the beautiful face of the woman in front of her, she couldn't help but blush. Seeing Naruto's appearance, Shiro couldn't help but cover his mouth and laugh. Naruto looked at Shiro and smiled, the two blushes on his face getting redder, and at the same time he also knew that Shiro didn't mean any harm. Shiro looked at Naruto and said, Why did you fall asleep here? You'll catch a cold. Naruto immediately rolled up his sleeves and showed off his non-existent muscles. I'm a ninja? How can a ninja catch a cold? Bai smiled and was about to say something when suddenly, a huge figure emerged from the woods nearby. Advertisement. Shiro's pupil shrank. It was the giant who seriously injured Mr. Zabuza. However, Bai's concealment skills were very good. He immediately covered his mouth and exclaimed, Okay, what a big man. Naruto immediately jumped up from the ground. Let me introduce you. This is my dad. Bai couldn't help but be stunned for a moment. Is this giant your father? Then why are you so short? Of course, Bai did not say these words, but behaved very politely and bent down to say hello to Whitebeard. Whitebeard also smiled and agreed. At this time, Whitebeard stepped forward and rubbed Naruto's head fiercely. Son, how are you practicing? Naruto immediately said. Of course it went very well, watch out, dad. With that said, Naruto stretched out his palm, and the next second, a ball of blue chakra began to appear in his palm, and then rotated at high speed. Gradually, the chakra rotated faster and even brought a breeze. Bai looked at the scene, his mouth opened slightly, he could feel that Naruto's technique would be very powerful. Raise non. Naruto hit a ball on the tree. Boom. There was a huge roar, and the tree exploded, and the surrounding trees were swayed by the remaining power of Raise non. Obviously, this is also a technique Naruto learned from the sealed book. Naruto also found that this technique suited him very well, and he spent two days mastering this technique. Naruto's face was full of fighting spirit. Yoshi, I'm definitely faster than that guy Suzuki, I'm going to find that guy. After taking two steps, Suzuki came over. He also had scars all over his body. He looked at Naruto, put one hand in his pocket, stretched out the other hand, and then opened it. Look at the end of the crane. Advertisement. Raise non. A formed raise non also appeared in Suzuki's palm. What to buy? Before he finished speaking, the businessman was stunned. His head slowly raised, his eyes finally fixed on Whitebeard's face. Giant, giant, impolite rat, Whitebeard said, advertisement. At this time, Naruto said, uncle, how much does it cost to buy a boat? It's best to get a big one, one that can fit my dad. The businessman also breathed a sigh of relief after hearing Naruto's words. The ninja world is full of wonders, and for a giant, businessmen are quite accepting of it. A trace of cruelty flashed in the businessman's eyes, and then a smile quickly appeared on his face, of course I have the boat you mentioned. With that said, he took Naruto and others on a tour. A row of ships looked over, and Whitebeard finally understood. The development of ships in the ninja world is average, and compared to the pirate world, there are still much fewer tricks. There is neither a recording pointer nor a coding technology. It can be said to be very original. Whitebeard was also considered an expert at sea and chose the best of these ships. It's him. The businessman's eyes also lit up, my guest, you have good eyesight. This ship is really good. Soon, the merchant quoted the price. As the saying goes, there is no business without treachery, and as a member of Cardo Shipping Company, he cannot let this order go. Whitebeard and Naruto had no idea about Kagam, but Suzuki knew it very well. He had just supplemented his knowledge in this area on the way. He knew that this businessman was selling them at a high price, dozens of times higher than ordinary people. Suzuki said directly, hey, is the price wrong? Suzuki was very unhappy. You know, the expenses along the way came out of his pocket, and he didn't want to be ripped off for no reason. Upon hearing Suzuki's words, the flattery on the businessman's face disappeared instantly. Sir, it's wrong to say that. As he said that, the businessman waved his hand. Are you really not going to buy it? What? At this time, Naruto and Suzuki realized that a circle of people had gathered around them, including some ronin holding katana swords. They held various weapons in their hands and looked at the three white beards with fierce eyes. Advertisement. Chapter 35 Pirates are synonymous with freedom. Advertisement. Chapter 35 Pirates are synonymous with freedom. Children, let's see the reputation of Cardo Company early. After saying that, the businessman also took out a dagger from his pocket. I'll give you two choices, buy the boat, or hand over all your money. Looking at the people gradually surrounding them, the three of them didn't panic at all. Suzuki sighed, it seems that Kanaha's forehead protector is not useful. Naruto hit each other with his fists and palms, let me test the results of my training. Whitebeard even sat directly on the ground and said to the two of them, you two, solve it quickly. When the businessman saw the three people being so arrogant, he couldn't help but feel angry, young men, come on. The crowd quickly surged up, they let out strange screams, and swung the objects in their hands towards Naruto and Suzuki. Phew, bang. Suzuki dodged the attack and then punched the attacker in the face. Then he rushed directly into the crowd and used the familiar Uchiha fluid technique. Soon, many figures in the crowd were knocked into the air and then fell hard. Naruto was not to be outdone. 
Under Whitebeard's love education, his strength, speed, and perception reached new heights. Even Shadow Clone didn't bother to use it to deal with these gangsters. There was a crackle, and a group of people were knocked away by Naruto. The businessman looked horrified. The giant who looked the most threatening didn't make a move, but the two little kids exploded with such great strength. It's simply unimaginable. Soon, all the people around him were eliminated, leaving only the profiteer standing there, at a loss, and messy in the sea breeze. Whitebeard stood up on the ground and looked at the profiteers, is this how you have always done business? If placed in the pirate world, such a profiteer would have been hacked to death by pirates long ago. The profiteer swallowed his saliva and began to show off his strength, don't be too proud. Do you know who our boss is? Advertisement. Whitebeard said nothing and quietly watched the profiteer's performance. My boss is Cardo, the Emperor of the Sea. This is the territory of Cardo Company. Emperor of the Sea? Are there four emperors here too? Whitebeard's expression changed. Seeing Whitebeard's expression change, the profiteer instantly became emboldened. You see, he actually beat my people so badly. Pay compensation. Suzuki and Naruto also looked at Whitebeard helplessly. Is this Cardo really so powerful? Even my dad, who knows nothing about it, has heard of it. Whitebeard lowered his head and approached the profiteer. Feeling the beast-like aura approaching suddenly, the profiteer almost fainted, and the fear in his heart was aroused again. Guest, guest, I didn't mean to threaten you. Whitebeard said, that Cardo you are talking about is the Emperor of the Sea. The profiteer shrank his neck, everyone said so. Whitebeard grinned and frightened the profiteer with a mouthful of white fang. This giant can't eat people, right? Where is he? Bo, the country of waves. The profiteer replied. After getting the answer, Whitebeard did not get on the boat immediately, but ordered the profiteers to wake up the gangsters on the ground. Let them move supplies to the ship and get a flag. The pattern, click on it. Whitebeard pointed at the tattoo on his back. The artist tremblingly drew the flag of the Whitebeard pirates on the flag. Wow, wow, wow. Advertisement. The black flag slowly went up through the pulley and finally reached the top. Naruto and Suzuki looked at the high flag with excitement in their eyes, although they didn't know what Whitebeard was going to do. But this adventure-like experience and strong sense of ritual still made the two teenagers very excited. Just when the profiteer thought he could finally send these three men away, Whitebeard picked him up with one hand and threw him on the boat. It's up to you to take the helm. The purpose is the kingdom of waves. Whitebeard said loudly, yes yes. The profiteer was already numb, but as soon as he felt Whitebeard's breath, he was stunned. He had no choice but to take the steering wheel himself and drive Whitebeard and others towards the kingdom of waves. Nami country? Wow, you are going abroad. Naruto jumped up and down on the deck. Suzuki looked at the vastness of the sea and felt very good. Whitebeard ate and drank the supplies he had just plundered, and was in a very good mood about being able to go to sea again. The kingdom of fire is very close to the kingdom of waves, and it took less than two hours to sail to the kingdom of waves. After disembarking, the profiteer was released, and Whitebeard and others observed the kingdom of waves. The country of waves is an island country with no bridges connecting it to the mainland, so it feels quite isolated from the world. A light mist enveloped the island, and Whitebeard smelled it, feeling the smell of blood. It seems that this island is not peaceful. Whitebeard murmured, leading Naruto and Suzuki towards the direction of the smell of blood. After pushing aside the last leaf, the noise and shouts of death finally became clear in my ears. What came into view was a village that was being massacred. A group of people like bandits were plundering the village, and the people in the village were rushing to escape. All the women were violated, and all the men were killed. Even the children and the elderly were not spared. Looking at this scene, Whitebeard had no expression. He had seen too many such things. He turned his attention to his two sons. Advertisement. Naruto looked at this scene and trembled all over. He was kind-hearted and couldn't bear to see such a scene, but what was more in his heart was the shattering of his three views. Why, massacre civilians? Why do you want to kill defenseless people? Is this what the world is like? Suzuki was better than Naruto, but he was not at peace inside because everything in front of him reminded him of Uchiha's night of genocide. The current scene was the same scene that Itaka used Tsukuyomi to let him see. It will be even more brutal, more disordered, and even more like hell. Suzuki unconsciously turned on the Sherinon. It wasn't until his eyes heard that Suzuki turned it off belatedly. Sons, these things are not unique. This kind of thing happens all over the world. Whitebeard said, Dad, why is this happening? Why can't we all get along well? Naruto's eyes were even filled with tears. If it hadn't been for Whitebeard before, Naruto would have shed tears. Whitebeard also disliked such things very much. He could vaguely feel that these were done by the man named Cardo. What are you thinking now? Whitebeard asked instead of answering Naruto's question directly. Suzuki clenched his fists and looked at Whitebeard, Dad. I want to kill them. Although Naruto was not so bloody, the resentment in his heart was already on his face, and the beard on his face became a little ferocious. Whitebeard smiled slightly and patted their heads. Just do whatever you want to do, no need for me, an old man, to give orders? Pirates are synonymous with freedom. Listening to Whitebeard's words, Naruto and Suzuki smiled at first, and then rushed towards the village in unison. Whitebeard looked at Suzuki and Naruto's retreating figures and murmured, Come on, sons, the first shot that will make the Whitebeard pirates famous. Advertisement. Chapter 36 Dasna. Advertisement. Chapter 36 Dasna. Naruto held a kunau and used the killing technique learned from Kanaha subconsciously for the first time. Va. The kunau stabbed the enemy's throat, and blood splashed onto Naruto's body like a fountain. Naruto was stunned, the villain covered his neck and watched as Naruto made a whooshing sound and then died. Naruto's eyes widened slightly, this was his first time killing someone. Is this what it feels like to stab a kunau into someone's neck? The cut blood vessels were like broken strings. The blood gushing out was like hot water from a shower. All of this was strange yet familiar, which made Naruto feel a little confused. Thank you, thank you, Ninjasama. A female voice suddenly came, causing Naruto to wake up from his days. The pregnant woman who was saved from the villain was in tears and thanked Naruto profusely. Naruto finally came to his senses, you and the villagers go away first, I'll deal with them. At this time, Suzuki's voice suddenly came from the distance. The one at the back of the crane? Behind. Suzuki noticed Naruto's situation and quickly warned him. Naruto's head tilted subconsciously, and a dagger grazed his ear. 
Short, spin, kick, advertisement. After a set of moves, the sneak attacker behind him was kicked away by Naruto, and several of his ribs were broken. The appearance of Naruto and Suzuki was like putting effervescent tablets in warm water, and all the villains instantly boiled. It's a ninja. The ninja is coming. Everyone, run quickly. The villains made a noise and ran away in a hurry, but then they found a tall giant standing in front of them. Whitebeard grinned, and with a mouthful of white fang, the villains were frightened. With a thought, a burst of white light appeared on Kong Yunki. Ha! Huh. Whitebeard shouted loudly, and waved Kong Yunki forward in his hand. The strong white light turned into a crescent moon, like a breeze blowing on the villains. Call. Groups of bloody flowers bloomed on them, followed by bursts of shrill shouts. The villains who tried to escape were cut into two pieces. They stretched out their only hands and squirmed slowly on the ground like insects, dragging out a bright red trail of blood. On the other side, Suzuki and Naruto's cleaning work was also over. In the end, only a few thieves were left, and Whitebeard planned to let them go and let them report to Cardo. Remember, we are the Whitebeard pirates. Whitebeard, covered in blood, is like a god of death. These little thieves were scared to death, and after repeatedly saying yes, they stumbled towards a place. Naruto, are you okay? Suzuki breathed heavily, not sure whether he was excited or tired. He looked at Naruto with concern. He had also noticed just now that something was not right with Naruto. Naruto wiped the bloodline from his face, it's okay. Advertisement. In an environment like that just now, even if Naruto wanted to adjust his condition, he would unconsciously go to the rescue as soon as he saw someone in danger. In this battle, Naruto killed 16 villains. Suzuki was a little surprised to see how quickly Naruto adapted. At this moment, the villagers in the village began to flock to Whitebeard and others. Thank you all. Thank you, Ninjasama. Thank you, you have avenged my old mother. The villagers surrounded the three people, and many even knelt down and sat down in front of the three people. Suzuki and Naruto had never seen this scene before. They both blushed and waved their hands saying no. After finally breaking free from the crowd, Naruto finally returned to his original state. He waved his fists, this Cardo is so abominable, when I see him, I will give him a slap in the face. Although Suzuki didn't express any opinions, he secretly clenched his fists. These villains who burned, killed, and looted reminded him of Itaki. He felt no psychological pressure at all by killing these villains. Instead, he could vent the pent up pressure. Whitebeard didn't say anything. He knew that Naruto and Suzuki had to go through this step if they wanted to gain a foothold in the ninja world and even become famous. Just when the three of them were about to go to Cardo Company, a man stood in front of them. Three ninja masters, I am Dejuna. Can I ask you a favor? I will be paid. Dejuna is an old man wearing glasses and seems to have some wisdom. I am a bridge building engineer. I originally wanted to build a bridge to connect the Kingdom of Waves with the mainland. Who knew that Demcardo wanted to control the Kingdom of Waves for his shipping business? I repeatedly blocked the bridge building plan, and several bridge builders were killed, even me. Dasna swallowed his saliva, with deep fear in his eyes, even me. They seem to be targeting me. These villains seem to be just to deal with me. I, I'm sorry to the villagers here. Naruto quickly said, it's not my fault, Grandpa, it's all this Cardo's fault. Suzuki nodded too. Advertisement. Dejuna was very happy to see Naruto and Suzuki being so sensible. Three ninjas, my request is that you can protect me while I am building the bridge. When I finish building the bridge, you can give me everyone is rewarded. Oh, it's a ninja mission. Dad. Naruto said, looking at Whitebeard with hope. Suzuki also looked at Whitebeard and acted righteously, asking for his life for the people. What middle school boy wouldn't like this kind of thing? In fact, this is exactly what Whitebeard wants. Instead of waiting for Cardo to come to his door, he might as well help Dasna, so that he can also get in touch with Cardo's men. Then follow the clues and find Cardo directly. Seeing Whitebeard nod, the stone in Dasna's heart finally fell. The three of them walked on the wet road of the Land of Waves, heading towards Dejuna's house. Along the way, in order to be less boring, or perhaps to give Naruto and Suzuki more moral baggage, Dejuna talked about his son, Gaisha. Gaisha was a passionate man who willingly died on the cross in order to resist Cardo's evil rule. Cardo invited many people to watch the execution, in order to shock the people of the country of waves. And because of the death of his son, Dejuna began to look for a way to revive the country of waves. Then he learned that. The country of wave is poor because of the lack of supplies and wants to communicate with the land. However, transportation is firmly controlled by Cardo, and tariffs have become extremely high in the hands of Cardo. This made the country of waves, which was already overwhelmed, even worse. Listening to Tajuna's words, not to mention Naruto, even Suzuki looked sullen and wished he could kill Cardo right now. Whitebeard greatly appreciated the actions of Dasna and Gaisha. Don't worry, glasses boy, you will definitely build this bridge safely. Whitebeard smiled heartily and patted Dasna on the head with his big hand. Dasna was speechless, but couldn't say anything. After knowing that Whitebeard was 72 years old, he could only recognize the boy in Whitebeard's words. The country of waves is very small, and the four of them soon arrived at the village where Dasna lived. The village was very close to the construction bridge, which was convenient for work. As soon as the four arrived at the village, the villagers did not welcome Dasna as usual, but stared at Dasna's back in surprise. Whitebeard's height of 6.6 .6 meters is even taller than many low houses in the village. Advertisement. Chapter 37 Undercurrent. Advertisement. Chapter 37, Undercurrent. In Kanaha village, the news of the third generation's injury was strictly sealed. Not to mention the ninja world, even in the entire village, only a handful of people knew about it. After all, third generation is the person who claims to be the strongest Hokage. The strongest Hokage was beaten by an old man in his 70s. No matter how you say it, such a thing is disgraceful. In Kanaha hospital, the third generation slowly opened its eyes. Hokage-sama, are you awake? A voice came from the side. Third generation turned its head with difficulty and saw Kakashi, opening its dry mouth. I slept for how long? Kakashi replied. Report to Lord Hokage, it's been three days. It's been three days. At this time, third generation seemed to have come to its senses and began to ask. Naruto, and Suzuki, how's it going? Lord Hokage, I'm sorry for letting them run away from the village, but I got the sealed book back. 
Kakashi has a pair of dead eyes, neither sad nor happy. Listening to Kakashi's words, third generation also understood the meaning of Kakashi's words. Since they even got the sealed book back, why couldn't Naruto and Suzuki catch it? Kakashi is Jonin? Obviously, Kakashi deliberately let Naruto and Kakashi go. As for why Kakashi let the two go, third generation also knows it in its heart. Hasn't Sakumo's death been deluded by time? Third generation thought this in his heart, glanced at Kakashi, and saw that Kakashi still had dead eyes. Advertisement. Okay, got it. Third generation said weakly. Kakashi is Kanaha's top combat power. It can be said that unless Kakashi does something extremely sinful, third generation will not punish Kakashi in any way. At this time, the door of the hospital was opened, and three old figures walked in. Danzo was the first to speak when he saw third generation. He woke up pretty quickly, Sarutobi. Third generation turned its head slightly and passed. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Danzo. Danzo snorted coldly, but he was also secretly happy. The third generation was so seriously injured, and although it has woken up now, its end is approaching. In other words, the hokage position that Danzo has been coveting for decades is likely to be vacant again. You two should stop bickering and talk about business first. Yudin Koharu said. Let's brainstorm about Whitebeard and Suzuki and Naruto. Mitokato Homura pulled up a chair and sat down. Looking at these old ghosts, Kakashi felt a chill in his heart and was about to bow out when third generation retained him. Kakashi, just listen here. After all, you are also Minato's student. Yes, Hokage-sama. Soon, the elders of Kanaha began a meeting. My proposal is that Whitebeard is wanted. Third generation looked at the ceiling of the ward and said leisurely. The other three elders frowned upon hearing this. Sarutobi, are you sleepy? Naruto and Suzuki are in Whitebeard's hands. Aren't they afraid that other countries will covet them? Danzo stabbed out. Advertisement. Third generation smiled softly. Of course it's not that simple. This person is wanted, not that person. Everyone looked at third generation with doubtful eyes. When you are wanted, describe Whitebeard as more powerful, and at the same time, don't give a large bounty. In this case, no one will deliberately look for Whitebeard. If they see Whitebeard, they will only provide relevant information. This can prevent ninjas from other villages from coming into contact with Naruto and Suzuki. And after we get the information, we can send our own troops and find a way to bring Naruto and Suzuki back. Everyone listened quietly, and third generation continued. Also, the news of Naruto and Suzuki's rebellion against the village must be blocked. If that person finds out, he may cause some trouble. The so-called that person refers to Uchiha Itaki. If he knew about this, he would definitely take action. It is even possible to point the finger at Kanaha. Third generation knew that the only one Itaka cared about was Suzuki. Kakashi was also a little emotional. He was indeed a third generation adult who had been Hokage for decades. Just after waking up, you can tell a lot of strategies, and you can make tricks even with a wanted order. The three elders also nodded. There is nothing wrong with what third generation said. On the other side of the ninja world, in a dark cave, several colorful humanoid phantoms stood together in a ring. The speaking phantom has a pair of lavender eyes, and in the lavender pupils, black circles are arranged in an orderly manner. Everyone is here, the meeting begins now. Pain glanced at several phantoms and said, Sorry, the tailed beasts haven't even started to capture them yet, they're arresting us for meetings every three days. Haydn said somewhat unhappily, Indeed, disturbing my artistic creation. Sia controlled Fei Laihu and made a hoarse, low voice. Brother Scorpion, your artistic recreations are just like that. You might as well learn from me the explosion style. Art that blooms instantly is the way to go. Deodera, we will practice later. As soon as the topic opened, Kisame and Haydn started to make noises, causing the two to fight. Advertisement. For a time, the entire crypt was filled with joyful air. Quiet. Pain started to speak, and as soon as he spoke, there was silence all around. Pain also had some headaches. The members of the Akatsuki organization were indeed very strong, but they were just not easy to discipline. After all, these people are all outlaws, and if it weren't for the Rinnegan, they would have killed Pain long ago. Right now, I have important information to share. Ju, tell me. A giant pitcher plant appeared, and he opened his mouth and told the story of Whitebeard entering the village, injuring the third generation, and taking Suzuki and Naruto away. Hearing this, the Akatsuki members were a little surprised and started talking about it. Third Hokage? Isn't that the strongest Hokage? Even he can defeat him, so this Whitebeard's strength is a bit scary. Kisame held his chin with his hand, thoughtfully. But Kakuza said unconvinced, Hey, the strongest Hokage? I have fought against the god of ninja. How dare Sarutobi Hiruzen dare to touch porcelain? Although Sia couldn't see his face, he still showed a hint of indifference. Who is the strongest Hokage? Even the strongest Kaze cage is no match for him. Zi secretly turned his gaze to Itaki, trying to see something from Itaka's exposed eyes. However, Itaka's eyes were very calm, and he didn't seem to care at all about Suzuki's life or death. But unknown to everyone, Itaka's heart was already in turmoil. Suzuki, actually rebelled against the village? Itaka felt very tired. The reason why he kept Suzuki was because he wanted Suzuki to kill him personally so that Suzuki could revive the Uchiha clan as the hero of Kanaha. To rebel against the village was completely out of his plan? Itaka's heart was filled with uncertainty. What did he think of Suzuki in the third Hokage? And, the most important question is, who is Whitebeard? At the same time, in the Kingdom of Waves, after two days of getting along, the three Whitebeards were getting along very happily with Dasna's family. Today, the bridge builders and workers have gathered and can start building the bridge. Advertisement. Chapter 38, Fight Zabuza? Advertisement. Chapter 38, Fight Zabuza? Kakaka. The landing gear transported various materials, and Dasna waved his hands to direct the workers. As an engineer, Dasna has high technical skills and does not need to use his hands very much. The three white beards stood in a suitable position, overlooking the construction progress of the entire bridge. Just as the workers were sweating profusely, suddenly, a burst of white mist began to fill the air. Dejana murmured in confusion. It's strange. At this time, it shouldn't be foggy. At this time, three figures suddenly fell behind Dasna. Uncle Dejana, stop work quickly. Suzuki said as he and Naruto stopped in front of Tejana. Dasna also realized something was wrong, and he immediately shouted. Call it off. 
Call it a day. The workers walked very fast, and soon, only three members of the Whitebeard Pirates and Dejana were left on the bridge. At this time, a voice came over. This voice came from all directions, like a ghost. Oh, not a bad reaction. Naruto and Suzuki looked around in surprise. Suzuki opened the Sherinan, but still couldn't find the enemy's location. The Achiha clan? Looks like I'm about to add something more important to my killing manual. The voice came again. At this time, a black shadow suddenly appeared in front, and an exaggeratedly shaped sword suddenly appeared from the black shadow. Quickly rushed towards several people, whizzing. Several people dispersed in an instant, and the big knife struck the ground fiercely, piercing deeply into the ground. A figure landed steadily next to the sword, his eyes staring at Dasna like a wild beast. Ninjas of Konoha, hand over Tatsuna, and I won't take your lives. Naruto immediately shouted. Don't even think about it. He is our mission client. Advertisement. Zabuza chuckled. I remember that Tajuna had no chance to go to Konoha to entrust ninjas. Suzuki took out a Konao from his ninja bag. Then you don't have to worry about it. You just know that you can just get out of here now. Hearing Suzuki's words, the murderous intent in Zabuza's eyes became even stronger. It seems Kirigakura's news is still too closed. Let me show you what a ghost is. With that said, Zabuza's figure escaped into the mist again. Heart, kidneys, liver, head, which part do you want to lose? Zabuza's voice appeared, and it was accompanied by a very strong murderous aura. Naruto and Suzuki were stunned as soon as the murderous intent came. In their eyes, the thick murderous aura has simply turned into reality, corroding their souls. What? What? Suzuki and Naruto found that they couldn't move. Even with all his strength, he could only move his feet slightly. It's decided, it's your eyes, Uchiha. As the sound exploded, a huge bright light suddenly appeared and struck Uchiha Suzuki's eyes. In a great crisis, Suzuki was finally able to move. With Sheringan's excellent dynamic vision, he barely escaped the attack of the decapitating sword. Suzuki was not idle after dodging the attack, and began to quickly form seals with his hands. Fire-style great fireball technique. A huge fireball spurted out and hit Zabuza. Kid, it's not a wise choice to use fire style in such an environment. Zabuza formed a seal with his hands and was much faster than Suzuki. Water style water prison technique. An oversized round water ball appeared in front of the fire ball. The two collided, and a burst of hot steam rolled out, causing Suzuki and Naruto to grimace in pain. Whitebeard never took action, just quietly watching the fight between his two sons. Naruto and Suzuki didn't even look at Whitebeard. They knew that Whitebeard was testing their training results. Advertisement. The thick steam tore open a hole, and the decapitating sword struck out, swiping hard at Naruto. Call. The beheading sword made a powerful and heavy sound, and Naruto dodged sideways. Who? 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 The beheading sword was swung continuously, each time bringing out a whistling wind. But Naruto was able to dodge in time every time? This brat. Zabuza's eyes flashed with surprise. Naruto smiled quite proudly and said, It's far worse than dad's speed. Zabuza was also horrified inside. This kid's reaction and speed are actually faster than by. Zabuza's eyes flashed, and in a flash, he came directly to Naruto's side, and swung the decapitating sword in his hand again. Just when Naruto was about to continue using his reflexes to dodge, Zabuza's figure suddenly turned around, and at a very tricky angle, he stabbed Suzuki with his decapitating sword. Suzuki didn't expect Zabuza's move. Although Sherinan saw the opponent's movements clearly, his body's reaction still couldn't keep up. When he saw Zabuza about to kill his commander, Naruto suddenly formed a rare seal. Ninja technique golden binding. A string of golden light suddenly appeared, like a thick golden rope, tightly binding Zabuza. What? Zabuza tried to break free, but found it difficult. Naruto smiled confidently and continued to dance with his hands. Illusion darkness technique. In Zabuza's eyes, the surrounding suddenly fell into darkness, without any light at all. It's not an exaggeration to say that you can't see your fingers when you reach out. In the eyes of everyone, what they saw was Zabuza suddenly waving his hands like a madman, and then quickly stepped back with his feet. Very weird. Advertisement. You little brat, what on earth did you do? Zabuza was like a blind man. When he spoke, he was not facing Naruto's direction. Crane tail, how do you know these powerful techniques? There was a hint of shock and a hint of unwillingness on Suzuki's face. Naruto scratched his head and smiled. Ha ha ha, I saw it from the book of ceilings. No one knows how much Naruto learned from the sealed book when he fell to the ground, but what is known is that without the restraint of nine tails, Naruto's speed in learning ninjutsu can be described as fast. After hearing this, Suzuki felt a little unwilling. No, now he wants to exert his strength. We can't be looked down upon by Naruto. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Several shurikens flew out sharply, but they did not fly towards Zabuza, but instead flew around Zabuza. If you look carefully, you can see that each shuriken is tied with a steel wire. Sherry non FKS the windmill san no tachi. There was a sound of steel wires rubbing together, and Zabuza was directly tied up. Coupled with Naruto's golden restraint, it could be said that Zabuza found it difficult to break free. Grasping a few wires, Suzuki smiled evilly and held one of them to his mouth. Fire style dragon fire technique. A bit of fire steamed up, and then the fire began to rapidly expand and accelerate, following the wire and hitting Zabuza directly. The flames burned, and the leaping firelight gradually made Zabuza's figure invisible. When all the firelight disappeared, Zabuza's body had disappeared, leaving only the hot wire falling to the ground with white smoke. Haha, ha. Suzuki breathed heavily and looked at Naruto rather proudly. Although your jutsu is indeed very strong, I, Uchiha Suzuki, can handle this guy. In his opinion, Zabuza had been burned to ashes. At this time, Whitebeard, who had been silent until now, suddenly spoke. Pride will lead to great suffering. Advertisement. Chapter 39 Take the Move, Young People. Advertisement. Chapter 39 Take the Move, Young People. Hearing this, Suzuki was stunned for a moment. Just when he was about to ask something, he saw a figure appearing not far away. It was Zabuza holding a decapitating sword. How, how is it possible? Suzuki's eyes widened. How did Zabuza escape suddenly? His sherry non is impossible to miss. Zabuza felt bad, he didn't expect to be forced to this point by two Kanaha genin. Fortunately, he had quick eyesight and quick hands. When the flames were about to hit, he untied both restraints and quickly used the body replacement technique to escape. Otherwise, he would have capsized in the gutter. At this time, Zabuza lowered his head, but the aura he exuded was like a furious beast. An extremely violent aura spread. 
Gilu, an even greater murderous aura than before came over. Naruto and Suzuki were frightened again, their pupils trembling. Dasna had already fainted from fright. Zabuza's deep voice sounded. It's your honor to be able to push the ghost man to this point. Zabuza slowly raised his head, his eyes seemed to contain thousands of evil spirits, let me teach you a lesson. Suzuki gritted his teeth, grabbed the kunao with trembling hands, and was about to stab it into his thigh, forcing himself to wake up. Snapped. A large hand grasped Suzuki's. The warmth of the big hands and the rough calluses greatly weakened Suzuki's inner fear of murderous intent. The other big hand also covered Naruto's head and comforted him. Don't be afraid, Dad, I'm behind you. As soon as these words came out, a huge sense of security swept over the two of them. All the fear and emotions affected by murderous intent disappeared. Just when the two regained their confidence and wanted to face Zabuza. Advertisement. This kind of enemy is not something you have to face yet. Let me teach this arrogant guy a lesson. Whitebeard's figure walked forward. He lifted up the captain's cloak, and the pattern of Whitebeard's pirate flag rolled like waves on the cloak. This is really... So handsome, Naruto's eyes seemed to be filled with stars, and he clasped his hands tightly, feeling excited in his heart. He would also learn from his father in the future, even Suzuki's eyes contained fire. In his heart, a real man should be like Father Whitebeard. Zabuza was stunned for a moment when he saw the giant approaching suddenly. He had always thought that this giant was just an insignificant person. Although he was tall and strong, he had no chakra fluctuation at all. Not to mention ninjas, now even samurai have chakra. In Zabuza's eyes, Whitebeard is just an ordinary person who supports the scene. Zabuza snorted. It just so happens that the beheading sword is a little broken and needs nourishment with human blood. Whitebeard grinned. Come on, young man. Call. Zabuza turned into an afterimage, dragging the huge beheading sword and slashing at Whitebeard like a heavy hammer. Whitebeard raised his knife to block. Dang. The harsh sound of gold and iron sounded, echoing in the empty construction site. Zabuza's pupils shrank, he had been very strong since he was a child, otherwise he would not have become the heir to the beheading sword. But despite his proud strength, Whitebeard remained motionless. He even just held a knife in one hand to resist, and put the other hand on his waist, which seemed very relaxed. Whitebeard couldn't help but laugh when he saw Zabuza's expression. Young man, it seems that you are very dissatisfied with me. After speaking, he clenched his free hand into a fist, and a dazzling white light ball appeared on his fist. This, what is this? Even Zabuza couldn't help but scream in surprise at this time. Whitebeard didn't speak, but there was a gleam in his eyes. Take the move, young man. The fist glowing with white light slammed into Zabuza's chest. Advertisement. Click. Under Zabuza's surprised gaze, a crack like a spider web appeared out of thin air. Space is broken. Before Zabuza could be confused for a long time, a huge force came from the broken space, followed by a dazzling white light flashing again. Boom. Zabuza's body was directly blasted out and hit the house not far away. The huge force even smashed the house. So handsome. Naruto raised his arms and shouted. Even Suzuki clenched his fists and couldn't hide the fire in his eyes. He also wants to have such power. Stones rolled down from his body, and Zabuza stood up with difficulty. Damn it, what is that? Blood inheritance limit? But why is there no chakra fluctuation? Zabuza murmured, full of disbelief. However, Whitebeard would not give Zabuza a chance to remain dazed. He tapped his feet lightly on the ground. Whoosh. Zabuza felt his eye shadow flicker, and the figure that covered the sky and sun appeared again. Whitebeard wielded the cloud cutter, and the shock fruit's ability was transmitted to the cloud cutter, causing the sword to emit bursts of white light. That's it again? There is no chakra fluctuation at all. Zabuza was horrified in his heart, but he knew that he couldn't escape. He must catch this move. A trace of determination flashed through his heart. Zabuza suddenly raised his decapitating sword and faced Whitebeard's Bushankari. Bang. A harsh roar suddenly sounded, and Zabuza felt that his eardrums were about to burst. Where the two weapons collided, the dazzling light kept flashing, almost blinding Zabuza's eyes. His arms soon shook like chaff, but he still managed to hold on. Whitebeard raised his eyebrows slightly. You are quite capable of catching my sword. Advertisement. Zabuza couldn't make any response, he could only clench his teeth and resist with bloodshot eyes. Whitebeard grinned. Nice eyes, okay, just let me make it happen for you. The next second, the muscles on Whitebeard's arm suddenly swelled, and several prominent blood vessels began to protrude. Boom, a shocking explosion appeared, but unlike the explosion of the detonating talisman, this explosion was white. When the light gradually dissipated, Suzuki and Naruto looked over and saw that a very large gash had been cut into Zabuza's abdomen. Blood and intestines had flowed all over the floor, and the whole person was dying. As for the decapitating sword, it had also flown out to one side, and the decapitating sword was even severed from the middle part, which was quite tragic. Whitebeard picked up the Kong Yunkai and swung it violently. With the howling of the wind, the blood on the blade was also shaken clean. Zabuza gasped and looked at Whitebeard in disbelief. Two moves? Just two moves? His Cajun Zabuza was defeated by this unknown giant? When he was trying to assassinate the fourth Mizu Cage, he was still able to escape unscathed after a few attacks. But this giant, with the most domineering power, easily severely injured him in two blows. This giant was already a man of shadow strength. Why would such a person do such a task as protecting Dasna? What can I do if I'm not full? Whitebeard felt Zabuza's rich psychological activities and was about to say something. Whoosh. A figure quickly passed by and came to Zabuza's side. Whitebeard didn't feel the murderous intention from it, so he didn't take action. However, he did feel that the visitor was extremely anxious. Soon, Whitebeard made a guess. The visitor seemed to be a woman. She pointed to the logo on the mask. I am from the Mist Shinobi Pursuit Force. This Zabuza is wanted in our village. We need to bring him back. As she said that, seeing that Whitebeard made no move, the woman carefully lifted Zabuza on her shoulders. Then, he nodded slightly to Whitebeard and others. Thank you all. Then, a body flicker technique disappeared. Looking at the place where the woman disappeared, Whitebeard's eyes shone with an inexplicable light. Advertisement. Advertisement. Chapter 40 Suzuki, are you blushing? Seeing that he had left a safe enough place, Shiro took off his mask and looked at the unconscious Zabuza anxiously. Mr. Zabuza? Mr. Zabuza? Don't sleep. 
Zabuza heard the voice and opened his eyelids with great difficulty. Bai, where is the giant? Bai said, I have successfully deceived them, now I will take you to Cardo's place. Bai's speed was already very fast, and coupled with his anxiety, he quickly returned to Cardo company. After entering, Shiro directly directed people to prepare things and began to treat Zabuza. At this moment, Kato walked in. When he saw Zabuza's miserable state, he immediately knew that the mission had failed. Ninja, I spent so much money to hire you, is this how you do things? Even an ordinary person who can only build bridges cannot be killed. What's the use of you? When Kato wanted to continue cursing, Bai Yi stretched out his hand. Susu, 2000 sticks passed by Kato's ears. Kadua was silent for a moment, cold sweat fell from his forehead, and his expression turned into flattery. I have spoken harshly, Ninja-sama. Then he immediately said to the men around him with a stern expression. Hurry, rescue Mr. Zabuza with all your strength. When Bai continued to treat him, Cardo turned around, a hint of danger flashing in his eyes. Damn ninjas, let you be proud first. When I am ready, I will kill you. After Cardo felt mentally victorious, he walked back to his office with a sinister smile. As time passed, it became night, and Bai's treatment was finally successful. He wiped the sweat from his forehead, feeling grateful but also a little confused. Could it be that he and Mr. Zabuza have been living like this, wandering and having no fixed place to live? Although he was very satisfied just being with Mr. Zabuza. Advertisement. But he also didn't want to see Mr. Zabuza working so hard just to help some criminals earn dirty bounties. If possible, he really wanted to take Zabuza with him to live in seclusion and live a pastoral life. Thinking of this, Shiro sighed mockingly, he could have Mr. Zabuza by his side, so he shouldn't expect so much. What he has to do is to take good care of Mr. Zabuza as much as possible and serve as Mr. Zabuza's tool. When necessary, block the knife for him. Shiro packed up the surgical instruments and left, letting Zabuza have a good rest. At this time, Zabuza's slightly squinted eyes were all opened, looking at where Shiro left, he sighed. He saw all the changes in the expression on Bai's face just now. After living together for so many years, he also knew what Bai was thinking. However, no matter how much he is Buza, he has enemies in all the ninja world, not to mention Umbu who is chasing Umbu in Kirigakur and is still chasing him to the ends of the earth. Even if you really want to live in seclusion, you will only be found and killed. Unless he has great strength, but this is no longer realistic. At his age, unless there are any opportunities, his strength has basically come to an end. The most likely thing is to rely on a powerful force. Only in this way can we bring safety. After thinking about it, Zabuza slowly fell asleep, perhaps because he was too tired from fighting. In the early morning, rays of sunlight shone down, and the warm feeling made Naruto slowly wake up after practicing for a day. When he woke up, he saw a big sister looking at him. Ah, who are you? Naruto put his hands on the ground and stepped back. But because of the beautiful face of the woman in front of her, she couldn't help but blush. Seeing Naruto's appearance, Shiro couldn't help but cover his mouth and laugh. Naruto looked at Shiro and smiled, the two blushes on his face getting redder, and at the same time he also knew that Shiro didn't mean any harm. Shiro looked at Naruto and said, Why did you fall asleep here? You'll catch a cold. Naruto immediately rolled up his sleeves and showed off his non-existent muscles. I'm a ninja? How can a ninja catch a cold? Bai smiled and was about to say something when suddenly, a huge figure emerged from the woods nearby. Advertisement. Shiro's pupils shrank, it was the giant who seriously injured Mr. Zabuza. However, Bai's concealment skills were very good. He immediately covered his mouth and exclaimed, Okay, what a big man. Naruto immediately jumped up from the ground. Let me introduce you, this is my dad. Bai couldn't help but be stunned for a moment. Is this giant your father? Then why are you so short? Of course, Bai did not say these words, but behaved very politely and bent down to say hello to Whitebeard. Whitebeard also smiled and agreed. At this time, Whitebeard stepped forward and rubbed Naruto's head fiercely. Son, how are you practicing? Naruto immediately said. Of course it went very well, watch out, dad. With that said, Naruto stretched out his palm, and the next second, a ball of blue chakra began to appear in his palm, and then rotated at high speed. Gradually, the chakra rotated faster and even brought a breeze. Bai looked at the scene, his mouth opened slightly, he could feel that Naruto's technique would be very powerful. Raise non. Naruto hit a ball on the tree. Boom. There was a huge roar, and the tree exploded, and the surrounding trees were swayed by the remaining power of Raise non. Obviously, this is also a technique Naruto learned from the sealed book. Naruto also found that this technique suited him very well, and he spent two days mastering this technique. Naruto's face was full of fighting spirit. Yoshi, I'm definitely faster than that guy Suzuki, I'm going to find that guy. After taking two steps, Suzuki came over. He also had scars all over his body. He looked at Naruto, put one hand in his pocket, stretched out the other hand, and then opened it. Look at the end of the crane. Advertisement. Raise non. A formed raise non also appeared in Suzuki's palm. How? Faster than you. Suzuki was a little proud. Naruto was dissatisfied and said, TCH, I'm faster than you. Dad and big sister have seen it. Seeing the two of them bickering, Bai couldn't help but cover his mouth and chuckle. Suzuki glanced at Shiro in confusion and said nothing, thinking he was just a passerby. At this time, Bai stepped forward, looked at the scars on their hands, and said, Don't you know how to treat wounds? If you don't, it will be very troublesome for you to practice in the future. Both Naruto and Suzuki have a don't care attitude, as long as they can become stronger, a little scar is nothing. Bai grabbed the arms of the two of them, pulled them to the ground without any explanation, and then took out a special ointment and applied it to their wounds. Shiro carefully applied the medicine on the two of them. The gentle touch and the faint fragrance of the medicine made not to mention Naruto and even Suzuki's cheeks slightly red. Whitebeard scratched his head. What a pity. I really don't know any medical skills. Bai smiled slightly, then said with a bit of loneliness in his eyes. Having said that, I really envy your father-son relationship. It's not easy to bring them up from childhood, isn't it? Naruto interrupted at this time. No, dad is not our biological father, we are his recognized sons. Eh? Is that so? Bai was a little surprised. However, dad is the better person to me in this world. Naruto raised his arms, and the ointment fell from his hands without even realizing it. Although Suzuki didn't say anything, it could be seen from the faint smile on his lips that he also recognized Whitebeard. This surprised Bai even more. 
Can a father and son who are not biological parents have such a father-son relationship? This couldn't help but remind him of his relationship with Zabuza. Advertisement. Chapter 41i, Cardo, Emperor of the Sea. Advertisement. Chapter 41i, Cardo, Emperor of the Sea. Looking at Bai's lonely expression, Whitebeard, who saw through everything, suddenly said, Hey, medicine boy, my pirate group is lacking a doctor. How about you become my son? Eh. Shiro was surprised, then looked at Suzuki. Is this how he recognized you as his sons before? Suzuki felt a little embarrassed, but nodded anyway. At this time, Naruto and Suzuki realized, son, this eldest sister is obviously a woman. Naruto pointed at Whitebeard and laughed. Ha ha ha. Dad, the eldest sister is a girl, how can she be your son? If she is, she should be a daughter. Suzuki also chuckled. He didn't expect that his wise father would also be confused sometimes. Boom. Whitebeard punched Naruto directly on the head, and the touch made Suzuki's teeth ache. Idiot? Can't you tell whether it's a boy or a girl? After hearing this, Naruto no longer cared about the pain in his head and looked at Shiro in surprise. Suzuki's expression was not very calm, and his small eyes were full of doubts. Bai was stunned for a moment, sighing inwardly that this giant was really sensitive. Then, he nodded generously and admitted, That's right, I'm a boy. After saying that, Bai tilted his head slightly, showing a naughty look. Boom, it was like thunder falling, splitting the hearts of the two inexperienced teenagers into pieces. Click, advertisement. It's the sound of heartbreak. Bai covered his mouth and smiled softly. It was obvious that he seemed to do this often. Whitebeard looked at Bai and said, How do you think about it? I can tell that you are a very kind person. In fact, you have never killed anyone. Listening to Whitebeard's words, White's pupils shrank. What did this giant see? Naruto was still talking stupidly. Eldest sister, eldest brother is just a collector of medicine. Isn't it normal that he has never killed anyone? Whitebeard didn't say anything, but looked at Bai, wanting Bai to tell the answer. Shiro looked at the distant sky and said that he was very envious of the father-son relationship between Naruto Suzuki and Whitebeard, especially after knowing that they were not related by blood. Whitebeard is sure that if he had not met Mr. Zabuza, he would have agreed to Whitebeard without hesitation, but now, he already has Mr. Zabuza. At this time, Whitebeard continued to make shocking remarks. You can talk to that person. I can also see from his eyes that he is very tired of this kind of life. He is like a lonely wolf who has failed to compete for the position of Wolf King. Am I right? Hearing Whitebeard's words, Bai's face couldn't stand up. How did this giant know? How did he know that Mr. Zabuza rebelled against the village because he was dissatisfied with the tyranny and failed to assassinate Mizukage? Whitebeard smiled faintly. In fact, from the previous battle with Zabuza, he could see that Zabuza was not that kind of vicious person. If it was true, the village would have been massacred by him long ago. When he assassinated Dasna, he also told Whitebeard and the others that he would not kill Whitebeard and the others if Dasna was handed over. At least compared to many other ninjas, Zabuza is a very principled person. Haku, on the other hand, understood Zabuza better. Zabuza was not a vicious person, but his defection from the village and the failed coup made him feel confused. This will allow him to take on those sinful tasks that he would not normally take on. Even if he does, he will not kill irrelevant people. Listening to Whitebeard's words, Bai fell into deep thought. After a while, he turned back to look at Whitebeard. Advertisement. I think I need to talk to him. With that said, he didn't bother to maintain his civilian persona and left in a blink of an eye. This frightened Naruto. This big brother is also a ninja. Suzuki chuckled slightly. Idiot, you didn't even notice this. Before Naruto could retort, Suzuki looked at Whitebeard. Dad, is this person the so-called Mist Shinobi pursuit force a few days ago? Whitebeard nodded. Yes, he is a kind boy. After saying that, he suddenly grabbed Suzuki and Naruto's necks, and in the two shocked eyes, Whitebeard shouted. Now that you've almost rested, special training, officially begins. Just when the special training was in full swing, someone suddenly ran over, and it was Dasna's grandson. White, Grandpa Whitebeard, there are enemies on the bridge. Upon hearing this, Suzuki and Naruto put down their exercises and ran towards the bridge. Whitebeard jumped up, cast Moonwalk, and walked through the air. Whitebeard was the first to resist the bridge. Sure enough, a group of thugs were making a noise on the bridge. They had weapons in their hands, so that the workers did not dare to resist at all. Seeing Whitebeard coming, the gang of villains dispersed instantly, as if they had a plan. As soon as Whitebeard saw this scene, he knew there was something fishy. He directly let go of Observation Hacky and found that there was no strong enemy ambushing around. Tweaking the tiger away from the mountain can be ruled out. Whitebeard, who has experienced many battles, quickly understood what the other party was thinking. Will you please enter the urn? Okay, let me see what kind of strength this so-called Emperor of the Sea in the Ninja world will have. Whitebeard muttered. With that said, he began to follow the group of villains unhurriedly, following them to the trap where Cardo ambush. Advertisement. Dad has gone far. Let's follow him quickly. Naruto shouted anxiously. Suzuki stretched out his hand to stop Naruto. Don't be impulsive, be careful this is the enemy's plan to lure the tiger away from the mountain. Naruto was not as irritable as before, and felt that Suzuki's words made sense, and then he stayed on the bridge obediently. Kato Company. There is a line of names written on a huge port. The originally bustling port, for some reason, was silent. Whitebeard chased him here, and all the villains from before were hiding. Whitebeard looked at the silent sea, grinned, and then strode towards the port without any fear. When I walked to the middle of the port, I saw a sudden sound coming from the distance. Super invisibility, solution. As the words fell, dozens of warships suddenly appeared on the originally silent sea, and behind the port, enemies suddenly appeared all over the mountains and plains. Sandwiched the Whitebeard between the two sides to form two buns sandwiched with cheese. Whitebeard stood with a knife in his hand, without any fear on his face, but looked around. There are many warships on the sea, and the densely packed black gun barrels reflect the stunning light under the sunlight. The land behind them was filled with thugs and samurai, and there were even some ninjas with scratches on their forehead protectors. This scene is more than enough to wipe out a small country, Gula LA. You are worthy of being the emperor of the sea, Kato, for dealing with such a nameless pirate like me. On the sea, a short figure walked out of a boat. He looked at Whitebeard and laughed arrogantly. Ha 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 ha. Giant? I, Kato, am not called the emperor of the sea for nothing. Cardona held a cigar between his ringed hands, looking very proud of himself. 
Whitebeard only found it a little funny. If those guys from Marine were to see Cardo, their teeth would probably fall out of laughter. Do you dare to call him the Emperor of the Sea? If you put it in East Blue, you might not even be able to touch the door of the Grand Line. Advertisement. Chapter 42 shocked the whole audience. Advertisement. Chapter 42 shocked the whole audience. A ninja stood next to Cardo. He had just used the so-called super invisibility technique to hide all enemies. This guy Kato is such a big watch. Zabuza was supported by Shiro and peered into the situation outside from a window. Bai looked at Whitebeard who was alone, and for some reason, he felt a little worried in his heart. Mr. Zabuza, what I just told you. Bai hesitated for a moment, then spoke. After Shiro saw Zabuza wake up just now, he told Zabuza everything that happened this morning. Zabuza looked at the scene outside, an inexplicable look flashed in his eyes, but the look quickly disappeared silently. Look, even if you join Whitebeard, so what, won't you still die at the hands of Cardo? Bai was a little dissatisfied and said, Mr. Whitebeard won't necessarily lose, right? Zabuza snorted. Dozens of warships, hundreds of cannons, and thousands of people including ninjas. Such a lineup is enough to destroy a small country. Although Whitebeard is strong, it can't withstand the siege of thousands of people. Unless, unless he is someone like Third Rakage. Listening to Zabuza's words, Shiro's heart, which was originally alive, also fell silent. With such a lineup, it's better to watch the opportunity. When Whitebeard is destroyed, we can take the opportunity to run away. I'm afraid, these people from Cardo were originally going to use it against me. Shiro said nothing, supported Zabuza, and watched the tense situation quietly. After Cardo finished speaking, he raised his hand holding the cigar high, ready. Release. Bang 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 bang. Following Cardo's order, hundreds of cannon barrels were fired simultaneously, and the black projectiles dragged their fiery red tails and flew rapidly towards Whitebeard. Looking at the gradually enlarging black spots in front of his eyes, Whitebeard recalled the days when he was chased by Marine. Unfortunately, it's still far from enough. After saying that, Whitebeard raised his big hand and punched directly in the direction of the hail of artillery. Advertisement. Boom. When the fist hits the air, the sound is like thunder. The next second, hideous cracks appeared in front of Whitebeard's fist, and bright white light flashed through the cracks. Zabuza's eyes twitched, it was this ability again? Thinking of the previous scene where he was knocked away by Whitebeard's punch, he felt lingering fear. But this time, Whitebeard wants to use this move to withstand hundreds of artillery shells. Zabuza was doubtful. Soon, the cracks in the air exploded, releasing a huge force, and a ball of white light began to expand rapidly. Buzz, boom. A majestic force quickly spread out like exploding fireworks, and the space fluctuated like ocean waves, even tearing apart. The speeding shell briefly stayed in the air for a while, and then like a boomerang, it returned directly to the original path. What? What? What kind of technique is this? Run quickly. The sailors on the ship were instantly panicked. They had never thought that the enemy would also have such an attack, so they were not prepared at all. Bang, bang, bang. The cannonballs returned the same way and hit dozens of warships. For a moment, rocks penetrated the air and sawdust flew. Some shells hit the sea, raising water columns several meters high. Countless sailors who were originally proud were smashed into pulp by the flying shells. Countless broken finger fragments scattered in the sky, and then sank to the bottom of the sea. Seeing this, Kaduo hid in the cabin in a hurry, not daring to show his head. Whitebeard slowly grabbed a cannonball from the ground. He sensed the strange movement behind him, and an inexplicable force emerged from his body and transferred to the cannonball in his hand. In an instant, the cannonball became as black as ink. If anyone in the pirate world sees it, they will definitely exclaim, this is armament hacky. Lifting his muscular arm, Whitebeard turned sharply behind him, stepped back with his right foot, and raised the hand holding the cannonball slightly backward. Advertisement. Before the mobs all over the mountain understood Whitebeard's actions, Whitebeard suddenly moved. The hand holding the cannonball pushed it out boldly, in the direction of thugs all over the mountains and plains. Base. A circular shockwave surged, and the shells broke through layers of sound barriers, causing a harsh air explosion. The mob could not react at all. The shell was like a black shadow, rushing into the crowd at high speed. The cannonballs did not stop the crowd at all. Blood and flesh flew everywhere for a while, and the cannonballs scraped a long bloody trail in the crowd. Then, the shells hit the mountain directly behind the crowd. Boom. Cracks were all over the mountain, and before the thugs could recover from the intense attack, the mountain collapsed. Countless rocks fell, causing casualties again. Just like this, under Whitebeard's move, the combat effectiveness and morale of the thugs on the land were greatly reduced, and the tragedy was everywhere. Zabuza looked at this scene, his mouth slightly open under the bandage. Bai on the side was also extremely horrified, and his pair of eyes that looked very much like a woman were trembling slightly. Looking at the grand occasion in front of him, Whitebeard chuckled. No wonder Garp likes to use this trick, it's really interesting. As he spoke, he turned his head to look at the sea again. At this time, the thugs on the sea saw that Whitebeard could cause so many casualties with one blow, and their morale had already been halved. Kato couldn't believe it either. He saw that there was no name Whitebeard in the ninja world and thought that Whitebeard was just a weak and unknown person. He never expected that the strength displayed by Whitebeard was more powerful than any ninja he had ever seen. However, the matter has come to this, and the arrow has to be fired. Cardo can't give up. If he gives up, there is a high chance that he will be killed by Whitebeard. Why not give it a try? Maybe this is Whitebeard's ultimate ninjutsu? After using it once, it's gone? Thinking like this, Cardo shouted repeatedly. Don't panic. Whoever kills the giant will be rewarded one million tails. Under heavy money, there must be a brave man. Advertisement. What's more, these are people who are used to licking blood from the edge of a knife. When they heard that there was a huge bounty, all the hesitation in their hearts disappeared. Ah, some samurai and ninjas, screaming, got off the ship and rushed towards Whitebeard. A ninja spit out fireballs at Whitebeard. Whitebeard stepped forward and scattered the fireballs with one punch. At this time, several wandering samurai took the opportunity to step forward and slashed at Whitebeard with their katana swords. Whitebeard swung his feet quickly and came behind several wandering warriors at extremely fast speeds. Buried. Several wandering warrior generals reacted, and Whitebeard swept past their necks with the cloud blade in his hand. S.A. In an instant, several heads flew into the sky, followed by several pillars of blood. Whitebeard did not stop the movement in his hand, his body quickly spun, and the sharp knife quickly swung behind him. A burst of tangible sword energy roared out, directly cutting several rare ninjas to death. Wow! The crew members exclaimed one after another. 
Seeing Whitebeard killing people like melons and vegetables, their brains that were knocked unconscious by a million tails suddenly sobered up a lot. You have the money to take it, but you also have to have the life to spend it. Of the thousands of crew members, no one dared to step forward, and some ships had even sneaked away. Cardo clenched his fists, knowing that the situation was now very clear. The strength of this giant far exceeded his expectations. He has only one choice now, and that is Curran. Although this will throw away years of hard work, fortunately, he also has some assets in other countries, so making a comeback is not a problem. Cardo quickly ordered his men to prepare their speedboats and quickly get away from this place of right and wrong. However, Whitebeard's action was far from over. He stepped on his feet and jumped into the air. Looking at the demoralized fleet in front of him, Whitebeard smiled and stretched out his hands, seemingly grasping something tightly. Immediately afterwards, a little white airflow appeared in the gap between the fingers. Zavuza looked at this scene and stepped back slightly. Although he was far away from Whitebeard, he still felt the inhuman power from it. Advertisement. Chapter 43 The Sea is Split. Advertisement. Chapter 43 The Sea is Divided. I saw Whitebeard's hands tightly grabbing the air. The two arms swelled slightly. Then, a majestic force came from the body and was applied to both arms. Click. There was a strange cracking sound. I saw blue and white cracks appearing in front of Whitebeard's hands. The cracks were as intricate as a spider web. As Whitebeard continued to increase his strength, the cracks began to widen rapidly. The thugs also saw that this giant seemed to be holding back some big move, and they must not let this giant succeed. Soon, the thugs launched an attack on Whitebeard in midair. Whizzing. Bang. Scattered arrows and cannonballs hit Whitebeard's body, but they did not cause any injuries, and Whitebeard's figure did not move at all. Aha. Uh -huh. Whitebeard roared, and his hands with protruding veins seemed to really tear something open, and several blue gaps were torn in midair. Before everyone could realize what happened, the people on the boat suddenly discovered that the sea surface below suddenly began to fluctuate violently. Cardo hid in the cabin, feeling the violent shaking of the ship, and immediately asked, What happened? What happened? However, no one answered him now. Listening to the noise outside, Cardo couldn't resist his curiosity and poked his head out of the cabin. As soon as he stood up, he was stunned by the scene in front of him, and the pupils under his glasses began to tremble crazily. Advertisement. I saw that the originally calm sea surface was now being cut into pieces like a sliced cake. Several pieces of sea surface were cut into pieces, staggered up and down. Just looking at it this way, the visual effect is terrifying enough. Zabuza was speechless as he watched this scene, and he couldn't even feel the pain in his abdomen. Even Shiro almost forgot to support Zabuza. Looking at the split sea, he thought in his heart. Even if he is a god, his strength is no more than this, right? The ninja who was following Cardo seemed to be mentally disturbed at this time. He murmured. The sea is split. Impossible, this is impossible. The god of ninja would not be so powerful. Cardo secretly cursed trash, but now he could do nothing. Originally, he wanted to escape by speedboat. But now the sea has been cut, and there are dozens of warships. They have all become lambs to be slaughtered. Dozens of warships were lifted high by the cut sea surface. Many crew members fainted when they saw the scene. Whitebeard grinned, and the next second, the cut sea surface began to deform. The high-rise waves fell from the sky in an instant and slapped hard on the sea. And following the waves back, there were dozens of warships. Crash. How can dozens of boats still hit the sea and fall apart like biscuits falling on the ground? The aftermath of shock fruit has not ended yet, and crazy waves and tsunamis are still rolling on the sea. These waves swept in those warships that were not smashed into pieces and collided with other warships. The huge force directly smashed the warships into pieces. Ah. Uh, crash. Countless crew members let out shrill wails, but they were all drowned out by the sound of huge waves. On the entire sea area, there was only the sound of the roaring sea, and it seemed that the scene of warships just now was just an illusion of Kyoka Suijitsu. Finally, the power of shock fruit dissipated, the tide receded, and countless wrecks of the warships were left on the shore. Advertisement. At the same time, there were many soaked and swollen corpses left on the shore. Is this really something humans can do? Zabuza murmured. If it weren't for Whitebeard, seeing this scene, Zabuza would sigh. Nature is so wonderful, and the power of nature is beyond the reach of humans. However, Zabuza saw with his own eyes that this scene was not caused by nature, but by Whitebeard. An old man? Whitebeard exuded observation hacky, danced his feet, soared into the air, and reached the sky above the sea. Pinpoint a location and activate shock fruit's ability directly. A column of water rose into the sky, and Whitebeard stretched out his big hand and swept it forward. Bah! A person was held in his hand, and this person was Kato. You 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 you. Cardo was lucky and didn't faint or get hurt. He stretched out his finger and pointed at Whitebeard. His hand was shaking and his words were a little incoherent. I don't know if it's because I'm angry or because I'm scared. But Whitebeard didn't tolerate him. Whitebeard picked him up and threw him into the ruins of the port. Looking at Whitebeard, whose figure could cover the sky and the sun, Cardo felt extremely shocked and angry, but he was still a businessman after all. No hesitation, beg for mercy immediately. Thump. Cardo knelt directly in front of Whitebeard, his throat hoarse with tears streaming down his face. This, this ninjasama, it was my fault. It was my fault. I shouldn't have assassinated Taijuna. Please spare my life. After saying that, Kaduo kept kowtowing, looking completely different from his arrogant appearance on the boat just now. It's not a ninja, it's a pirate. Whitebeard corrected him. Advertisement. Yes, yes, pirate-sama. Cardo was overwhelmed with fear. Not to mention being a pirate, even if Whitebeard calls himself a cat girl, he will always say cat lady. Whitebeard was too lazy to argue with such a rotten person, so he said directly, Boy, let me ask you, where is your treasure? The loud voice once again frightened Cardo. After seeing Whitebeard's power, Cardo dared not refuse, and he directly gave away all his property. Hi, Master Pirate. Now, you can let me go. Cardo's expression was a little frightened, but it was much better than before. After all, he thought he had not offended Whitebeard, and he did not kill Dasna, who was protected by Whitebeard. In addition, he has now given away all his assets, so the probability of Whitebeard letting him go is still very high. Sure enough, a smile appeared on Whitebeard's face. Boy, you are quite sensible. Let me ask you, are you saying that your title is Emperor of the Sea? Whitebeard asked. Kato looked ashamed. No, no, it's all a name forced on me by people from outside. It doesn't count. Then what do you think of your own power on the sea? Answer truthfully. Whitebeard's smile changed instantly. Cardo felt that Whitebeard had let him go, and he felt more relaxed. He even said in a rather proud tone, 
Although I can't compete with those ninjas on land, I dare say that in the entire sea, if I am ranked second, then no one dares to be ranked first. Whitebeard instantly had a preliminary understanding of the ocean power in this world. The ocean power in this world can only be described in one word. Weak? Even a guy like Cardo can become the so-called emperor of the sea. The oceans in this world are much weaker than East Blue. Whitebeard looked thoughtful. This shows that if you really want to make the Whitebeard pirates famous, making some noise on the sea is not enough. Land is the leader of this world. Advertisement. Chapter 44, Protect the Country of Waves. Advertisement. Chapter 44, Protect the Country of Waves. Master Pirate, look, can you let me go? Cardo rubbed his hands together, his face showing the unique flattery of a businessman. Whitebeard glanced at Cardo and said aloud, Of course I can let you go. After hearing Whitebeard's words, Cardo's heart finally fell, and he let out a long sigh of relief. Thank you very much, Pirate Sama. Cardo's heart began to feel alive again. In fact, he didn't give away all his treasure just now, but now he has the funds to make a comeback. Maybe he can make friends with Whitebeard because of this. In the future, with Whitebeard as his backer, wouldn't he be the only one in this business? Thinking about it, Cardo even had a smile on his face. Whitebeard also smiled, I can let you go, but they may not. Who are they? Kaduo was stunned for a moment, unable to react. Whitebeard looked towards the hillside not far away. Soon, several figures emerged from behind the hillside. Before they could be recognized, more figures ran out from behind the hillside. They, who are they? Cardo felt something was wrong and stepped back unconsciously. Whitebeard grinned, Gula la la, these are the people of the Kingdom of Waves. Listening to Whitebeard's words, Cardo's heart that had just calmed down was stirred up again. Does he know what he did in the country of Waves? Over the past few years, the people of Wave Country have hated him to the core. If he hadn't hired powerful ninjas, he would have been hacked to death by the people of Wave Country. Cardo grabbed Whitebeard's trouser leg. Master Pirate, help me, I, I still have treasures. I will tell you the location of those treasures, please save me. Whitebeard didn't speak, just stared ahead. Looking at the faces of the people of the Kingdom of Waves, they were filled with anger. Advertisement. Seeing that Whitebeard didn't respond, Cardo swung his feet wildly and stepped back tremblingly. Zabuza-sama, Shiro-sama, save me. Cardo called again, but there was still no response. Soon, when the people of Wave Country saw the lonely Cardo, their inner anger quickly turned into fierce faces. Kato, give back my son's life. It's you, Cardo. Kill my wife and daughter, I want revenge. Not killing is not enough to vent your hatred. Boom. First, he punched Kato in the face. Then all kinds of fists, kicks, and tools were thrown at Cardo. Cardo made a cry for mercy, but it was quickly drowned out by the wave of people. Whitebeard no longer paid attention to this place, but looked at a house not far away, where there were two very familiar chakras. We have been discovered, Zabuza-sama, how should we act? Shiro looked at Zabuza and asked hurriedly. Although Shiro prefers the atmosphere of the Whitebeard pirates, but he still listened to Zabuza's words. If Zabuza asked Haku to commit suicide now, Haku would never hesitate. Zabuza sighed. Then, go out and talk to him. Shiro was also overjoyed after hearing this, and helped Zabuza walk out of the house. Sir Whitebeard, your power is really terrifying. Zabuza said sincerely, eyes fixed on Whitebeard. Gula la la. Many people have said this before. Whitebeard laughed at first, without the slightest hint of humility. Sengoku calls him a man with enough power to destroy the world. Seeing Whitebeard like this, Zabuza felt relieved for some reason. Is that so? Then, Sir Whitebeard, you can adopt Bai as your son. Zabuza said. Advertisement. When Shiro heard Zabuza's words, he was overjoyed at first. Then he found out why and quickly asked. Mr. Zabuza, what will you do then? Zabuza looked at Shiro's concerned face, and his expression suddenly changed. Bai, as a tool, don't you understand? Haku was startled by Zabuza's sudden gloomy tone, his eyes showing surprise. Zabuza broke away from Shiro's support and said harshly, You are the tool of my demon Zabuza, but you haven't even killed a single person. I wanted to throw you away a long time ago. Listening to Zabuza's words, tears began to well up in Haku's eyes, and a look of loneliness appeared on his face. Zabuza didn't look at Shiro anymore, but looked at Whitebeard. Sir Whitebeard, I leave this tool to you, and I am freed from a burden. Zabuza said and turned around. There was disdain in the words, but when the word burden was mentioned, there was a softness. After saying that, Zabuza covered the wound that had just been treated by Shiro and walked away bit by bit. Hey, bandage brat. Hearing Whitebeard's cry, Zabuza twitched the corner of his mouth. What the hell is the word bandage kid? But Zabuza turned around anyway, and what he saw when he turned his head was a fist as big as a sandbag. Boom. Zabuza's body spun in the air for two and a half weeks, and then fell hard to the ground. Mr. Zabuza. Shiro shouted. Zabuza struggled to get up, and just as he was about to say something to Whitebeard, Whitebeard had already arrived in front of him. Bandage kid, if you call your companions a tool or something, you will be beaten on my ship. Zabuza's voice was a little weak. Companion? He is just a tool that is not so handy. What I'm interested in is his bloodline, second only. As he spoke, Zabuza lowered his head, as if he didn't want Shiro to see his eyes. Advertisement. Shiro didn't say anything, just kept staring at Zabuza. Whitebeard suddenly smiled. What a tough talking brat. Since you use him as a tool, how come you still have love for him in your heart? Like? Shiro was shocked, looking at Zabuza with an inexplicable look in his eyes. Zabuza suddenly raised his head and looked at Whitebeard with eyes full of disbelief. Who? Who said that? Zabuza said with a slight stutter. Whitebeard said, Idiot? Of course I sensed it. Then, Whitebeard lifted Zabuza up without any explanation and put it in front of Shiro. Hey, hey, Whitebeard. Whitebeard acted as if he didn't hear anything and left directly. Due to his serious injury, Zabuza was unable to activate chakra at all, so he had to stand awkwardly. The sea breeze blew gently, and the salty sea breeze and the bloody smell of the battle filled their nostrils. There is a building inside the port, which is the headquarters of Cardo Company. At the company's entrance, there are dozens of sacks. A group of villagers stood neatly in front of the sack, and were surprised when they saw Whitebeard coming. Lord Whitebeard, these are Cardo's assets, please accept them. Hundreds of villagers were very respectful and bowed to Whitebeard. Bah. Picking up a sack of banknotes, Whitebeard carried it on his shoulders. You can take the rest. The money itself is yours. Whitebeard was about to turn around and leave when he heard a thumping sound. Looking back, hundreds of villagers were kowtowing respectfully to Whitebeard. Lord Whitebeard, 
Please protect us, the country of waves. This money should be regarded as the taxes we give you. If you don't protect us, there will be another cardo. Advertisement. Chapter 45 Nine Tales. Pay rent to my son. Advertisement. Chapter 45 Nine Tales. Pay rent to my son. Sheltering a place is not uncommon in the world of pirates, especially with four emperors. Kaido protects Wanakuni, Whitebeard protects his hometown, Big Mom protects all nations. Because these countries have the protection of the four emperors, they all live a better life than other people. Of course, once the four emperors lose power, the country they protect can easily be destroyed by Marine. The country of waves will also face such a crisis. You must think clearly, once I am gone, you will face the revenge of the five major countries. Whitebeard said in a deep voice, Villagers, look at me and I look at you. His vision gradually became firmer. They no longer want to live a life like Cardo rule, they would rather die spectacularly than live in such a humiliating way. So, they spoke loudly again, hoping that Whitebeard could protect the country of waves. I see. Whitebeard placed the money bag on the ground. He looked down at the people of the country of waves and smiled. Very good, I would rather be in pieces than in ruins. You are worthy of being a citizen of the sea. Whitebeard smiled heartily. When the people of the kingdom of waves heard Whitebeard's words, their hearts became hot. Just then, Suzuki and Naruto also ran over. They learned that Cardo had been destroyed and hurried to see Whitebeard. When he learned that there was an entire country willing to follow the Whitebeard pirates, Naruto and Suzuki were also excited. Just when the two were about to express their inner thoughts, two figures came from afar. Seeing the person coming, Suzuki and Naruto took out their weapons. It was Haku and Zabuza who came. Don't worry, Bai and I are already one of you, right, Dad? Zabuza said slowly and looked at Whitebeard. Eh. Suzuki and Naruto both looked confused. How come they are brothers now when they were shouting about fighting and killing a few days ago? Advertisement. Then, under the strange looks of Suzuki and Naruto, Shiro bowed slightly to them. Naruto, Suzuki, please give me some advice. Naruto and Suzuki bowed rather stiffly, warming even more when they saw Shiro's soft face. They became even more awkward inside. Whitebeard was also quite pleased. It was obvious that Haku had talked about something with Zabuza, and it seemed like he had said a lot to persuade Zabuza who was so determined. Looking at the harmonious side of the surroundings, the smile on Whitebeard's face cannot be removed. This is what he likes most, the feeling of family. Everyone is happy on this day. Naruto and Suzuki were happy to have two more brothers. Zabuza and Shiro were happy, finally getting rid of the daily fear. The happiest people are the people of Wave Country. For two full days, the entire kingdom of Waves was in celebration. Killing chickens and cows, drinking fine wine. These two days have been more festive than the Chinese New Year. Tick tock, tick tock. The sound of water dripping became extremely clear in this empty sewer pipe. A flash of white light suddenly appeared, and a tall figure appeared in the sewer pipe. Um, Nine Tails opened its eyes, and when it saw the person coming, its whole body immediately burst into flames. Edward, along with a huge roar, strong wind, and water droplets splashed on Whitebeard's body. Whitebeard showed a confident smile. Big Fox, how do you think about it? Do you want to be my son? Nine Tails shouted directly. Huh? What stupid things are you talking about, human? I, the leader of tailed beasts who have lived for thousands of years, will not treat you as the son of a human being. Nine Tails' voice echoed in the sewer pipes, and there were even waves of echoes due to the empty space. That's really a pity. However, I came to see you for another matter. Whitebeard walked directly into the cage and sat side by side with Nine Tails. Seeing Whitebeard act on his own initiative, Nine Tails rarely stopped him. If you fart, hurry up. Advertisement. Nine Tails' tone was very dissatisfied. It's time to pay the rent, Big Fox. Whitebeard's words immediately stunned Nine Tails. Pay rent. What are you saying? Nine Tails's red pupils exuded great doubts. Whitebeard said directly, You have lived in Naruto's body for more than ten years, so it is reasonable to pay some rent. Hearing Whitebeard's words, Nine Tails was stunned at first, and then infinite anger arose in his heart. Human, I was sealed in, do you understand? Do you think I really want to live here? Nine Tails yelled. Boom. A harsh sound suddenly appeared in the sewer, and even the water on the ground was shaken to cause ripples. Whitebeard's fist was on the ground, and Nine Tails stood in front of Whitebeard with an ugly expression. Nine Tails, who was originally noisy, was as quiet as a virgin at this time. Although I really don't want to admit it. However, it was indeed frightened by Whitebeard's fist just now. Nine Tails looked into Whitebeard's eyes with some reluctance. He found that Whitebeard was staring at it closely. I give. Suddenly, Nine Tails said from the bottom of his heart. Whitebeard slowly put away his fist, stretched out his hand, and patted Nine Tails' fox thigh. I knew the big fox was a sensible animal. Whitebeard had a smile on his face, completely unable to see the way he had just punched Nine Tails. Nine Tails said angrily, How do I pay the rent? Whitebeard touched his chin and said, Just lend your power to Naruto. Nine Tails didn't say anything after hearing this. The Jinchuriki of all generations have wanted to have a good relationship with the tailed beasts, and the purpose was to use the tailed beast's chakra. Nine Tails raised its eyebrows. Okay, advertisement. After saying that, Nine Tails closed his eyes, as if seeing off a guest. Whitebeard looked at Nine Tails' face and suddenly smiled. Don't feel lonely, Big Fox, I will often come to chat with you. Nine Tails opened his eyes. What a shame, when did I become lonely? Even a lonely person wouldn't want to chat with a human like you. After saying that, he continued to lie down and closed his eyes. After Whitebeard smiled, he turned into a white light and disappeared. In reality, Whitebeard opened his eyes, looked at Naruto in front of him, and said, Keep feeling it. Naruto closed his eyes and silently felt the power within his body. At this moment, Naruto's body suddenly glowed with red light. This red light exudes an ominous and evil aura. In Suzuki's surprised gaze, the red light continued to spread until Naruto's whole body turned into a chakra coat. Naruto looked at his hands very curiously. He could feel that the power in his body became endless. Dad, what did you do? Have a chat with the big fox in your body. After saying that, Whitebeard hooked his hand at Naruto. Attack here. Naruto was stunned for a moment, then showed a confident smile. Dad, be careful. Whoosh. I saw a red afterimage suddenly passing by, and Naruto suddenly appeared in front of Whitebeard. Suzuki rubbed his eyes in disbelief. He couldn't keep up with Naruto's speed. Although I didn't open my eyes. But this is enough to prove how quickly Naruto's speed increases. Boom. This punch is powerful and heavy. Compared to each of Naruto's previous punches. Even stronger. It's quite capable, but it's still not enough. 
Whitebeard looked at the smug Naruto and shouted loudly. Naruto's expression changed, and after a few kicks, he rolled and distanced himself from Whitebeard. He stretched out his hand, and the majestic chakra appeared and swirled in his palm. Raise non. Advertisement. Chapter 46, You Can Become Stronger By Accepting a Sun. First order requested. Advertisement. The eerie red and blue combined to form a raisin of purple light. The momentum that burst out was several times that of an ordinary raisin. The powerful raisin blasted directly towards Whitebeard. Whitebeard grinned and stretched out his fist to directly face the high-speed spinning raisin. However, Whitebeard also saw how extraordinary this raisin was, so he did not choose to resist directly with his physical body. In the blink of an eye, the dark-armed aura wrapped around Whitebeard's fist. Soon, the two collided. Boom. A violent stream of air surged out, blowing the hair of Zabuza and Suzuki who were watching. After one move, Armament Haki faded away. Although Naruto did not break through Whitebeard's defense, he still had a look of joy on his face. Naruto continued to feel the power of Nine Tails Chakra, and after secretly accepting the Nine Tails Chakra, he still had an unfinished expression. Sure enough, being powerful can be addictive. Suzuki watched Naruto's strength increase again. Although he was happy for it, he was also unwilling to do so. Naruto has mysterious power, and it seems that his strength can continue to soar. Although he has a Sharingan, no one can give him guidance. Only he and Uchiha Itake have a Sharingan in the entire ninja world. Suzuki looked around, it seemed that only Zabuza could provide him with a blind spot. Dad's strength is indeed very strong, and the training methods provided by him have indeed made his strength grow very quickly, but when it comes to ninjas, he can't give any special advice. After hearing Suzuki's request, Zabuza also sighed. It seems that Dad doesn't have a very deep understanding of the profession of ninja. In these days, Zabuza also understood some of Whitebeard's situation. Father Whitebeard knows nothing about the profession of ninja. Naruto, take a look at it too. These are all you need to learn. Later, under the curious eyes of Suzuki and Naruto, Zabuza took out the chakra test paper. After introducing the functions, Suzuki and Naruto tested their respective chakra properties. Naruto is wind, Suzuki is fire and thunder. Zabuza murmured and began to look troubled. The chakra attributes of these two people perfectly avoid Zabuza's water attribute. Whitebeard on the side also saw Suzuki's disappointed expression. Snapped. He stretched out his big hand and directly covered Suzuki's head. Silly son, what are you worried about? You know, we are pirates. 763 Suzuki was stunned for a moment, with a trace of confusion on his face. Pirate, what happened? Whitebeard raised his hand and directly expressed his inner thoughts. They are pirates? Just grab whatever you need. Isn't this a basic act? Isn't it just that there is a lack of ninjutsu? Just go and grab it? Upon hearing this, Suzuki's expression was stunned at first, and then became excited. In order to become stronger, he even rebelled against the village, so what if he stole some ninjutsu? Without breaking his own bottom line. As long as he can become stronger, he can do anything? Zabuza showed a ferocious smile, this dad is exactly what he likes. Naruto wanted to say something, but when he thought about stealing the sealed book before, he had nothing to say. Advertisement. Just when Whitebeard wanted to ask Zabuza where was a good place to rob ninjutsu, a figure suddenly appeared from a distance. Big brother. Naruto greeted happily. Since knowing that Bai is a boy, the title of her has changed from big sister to big brother. However, Bai did not respond with a smile. Instead, he looked very serious and held something in his hand. Bai looked at Whitebeard with a solemn expression, Dad, it's not good. With that said, Bai picked up the thing in his hand and took a closer look. It was a wanted notice. But unlike the pirate world, which has clear photos, the wanted posters in the ninja world are just black and white letters on paper. Even the portraits were drawn with a brush. If Whitebeard hadn't looked so distinctive, Bai wouldn't have been able to recognize him. Wanted order. Both Naruto and Suzuki's expressions changed. They grew up in the well-behaved Kanaha village. After hearing that their fathers became criminals, their expressions naturally did not look good. Zabuza's face was expressionless, or in other words, he was happy that Whitebeard was wanted, so that everyone's identity would be better recognized. Whitebeard behaved differently than everyone else. He showed an interesting expression. Gulai LA. How much is the reward? Seeing Whitebeard's excited face, Bai said strangely, the reward is, 100,000 tails. Bai only noticed the bounty now, and the pupils under his beautiful eyes suddenly shrank. It's not that the bounty is too much, it's that it's too little. 10,000 tails is just the reward for a B-level mission. A wanted person with 100,000 tails, in the underground world of the ninja world, only targeted some thieves with chinin strength. And with Whitebeard's strength, not to mention a million tails, a bounty of tens of millions, Svi, is considered small. Bai's expression softened a lot, fortunately, although I don't know why, the bounty is not large. If the bounty is not large, not many people will care about it. Naruto and Suzuki also breathed a sigh of relief. However, at this time, Whitebeard's eyebrows stood up, showing a dissatisfied look. That's it. Whitebeard's voice immediately stunned all the sons. Don't like the money? This is not a salary, this is a bounty, eh Laoji? It's ridiculous. I beat up the Hokage boy, it's only 100,000 tails. Whitebeard said carelessly with a dissatisfied look on his face. Both Zabuza and Haku looked shocked, Hokage. Is it the strongest Hokage, Sarutobi Hiruzen? If there is only one Hokage, it would be him. Whitebeard said nonchalantly. In this case, Kanaha obviously has other motives for giving such a small bounty. Zabuza looked at Suzuki and understood something. It must be that Kanaha didn't want people to know that Suzuki had defected, so they were so cautious. At this time, Naruto suddenly asked, Dad, since you think the bounty here is small, what was your previous bounty? Everyone knew that Whitebeard came from a distant place, and they were all curious. Whitebeard grinned, his white teeth exposed, and the next second, a thunderous voice burst out from Whitebeard's throat. 5 billion 46 million. The sound like a loud bell echoed around, all the suns were silent, and their eyes were wide open. At this time, only Zabuza could barely break free from the shock. 5 5 5, 5 billion. Even the well-informed Zabuza stuttered. In the ninja world, even the elite jonin level, such as Asuma and Jilla, the bounty is only about 30 million. And Whitebeard's 5 billion 46 million, just a fraction of it, exceeds 90% of ninjas. Advertisement. 
Whitebeard said, yes, that's the number? Many of my sons also have bounties worth hundreds of millions. Zebuza wiped the cold sweat from his forehead. If he hadn't seen Whitebeard's terrifying strength, Zebuza would never have believed it. Amid a burst of cheers, the bridge connecting the mainland and the country of waves was finally repaired. Desna looked at Whitebeard, stretched out his hand and pointed upward. Mr. Whitebeard, look, I named this bridge after you. Several people looked up and saw the words Whitebeard Bridge written on the bridge. Glala lala, well done, you little glasses guy. Whitebeard patted Desna's back with his big hand. Desna leaned forward a few times to take off his glasses. At this time, with the combined efforts of everyone, the flag of the Whitebeard Pirates was hung high on the bridge. Although this flag is incompatible with the atmosphere of the ninja world, the people of Wave Country are very happy. With a strong man like Whitebeard protecting them, they would be happy to fly any flag. With the completion of the Whitebeard Bridge, businessmen from other countries came to the country of Waves one after another. Coupled with Whitebeard's thunderous methods, all the gangsters in the country of Waves disappeared. It can be said that the entire country of Waves has been completely transformed and has become completely new. The lifeless country is gradually coming to life. Just when Whitebeard and Zabuza were thinking about where to grab a batch of ninjutsu, Lord Whitebeard, someone is coming to cause trouble. Several warriors ran over in a hurry, looking a little panicked. There are almost no ninjas in the land of waves, and the only fighting power is these samurai. And to make these warriors so panicked, I'm afraid it's not ordinary people who are causing trouble, but ninjas. Zabuza grabbed the decapitating sword and put it on his back. Dad, I just need to go and take a look. Naruto, Suzuki, and Shiro have all gone to practice. If you follow, this place will not be under guard. Whitebeard nodded, and he also guessed that this was probably some kind of plan to lure the tiger away from the mountain. Waving his hand, Zabuza ran towards the bridge. Whitebeard grabbed the large bottle of red wine on the side and poured it into his mouth. Gilu gilu, ah. After making a comfortable sound, Whitebeard looked at his hands. He is now completely sure that as long as someone recognizes him as his father, his strength will increase. Whitebeard doesn't know how this works, but this is what Whitebeard feels personally. And the increase in strength is not just a little bit, but you can clearly feel that your muscles are getting stronger and your perception is improving. Even the fruit's ability has been improved. This shocked the well-informed Whitebeard. After all, he originally thought that shock fruit had been developed to the ultimate in his hands. Just like a pistol, silencer, infrared, various accessories have been filled to the point where it can no longer be loaded. But unexpectedly, it has a strange ability to make the pistol larger, and can continue to add accessories to increase its power. Whitebeard feels like this now. After feeling it, Whitebeard made a rough calculation. If he had 20 more sons, his strength would definitely double, but Whitebeard did not rush to find his son. For Whitebeard, accepting a son is a matter of fortune. If he doesn't like him, even if his strength increases tenfold, he will never accept him. Between becoming strong and having a family, Bai Huse will choose the latter. Moreover, Whitebeard also made a preliminary judgment on the strength of this ninja world. Kanaha village is the strongest ninja village, and the current Hokage boy is also known as the strongest Hokage. The strongest Hokage in the strongest ninja village was beaten by him. If the Hokage boy is not boasting, it means that his Whitebeard strength is already at the pinnacle of the ninja world. If that's the case, then why does he still need such strong power? He's so idle. Advertisement. Whitebeard continued to pour red wine into his stomach, and the next second, his eyes looked to the darkness to the side. Rat, why don't you show up yet? As soon as the voice comes out, it's like the sound of thunder. Whoosh. A figure appeared in front of Whitebeard. As expected of Sir Whitebeard who can seriously injure the third Hokage, his senses are so sensitive. The visitor spoke, his voice was hoarse and sinister. Whitebeard looked at the person in front of him. He had long hair reaching his waist, pale skin, and eyes like snake eyes, revealing a gloomy and fierce look. At a glance, Whitebeard could tell that the person in front of him was as powerful as the Hokage boy. Tell me your name. Whitebeard said with a straight face. Naturally, Whitebeard didn't have a good look on these hiding ninjas. Moreover, he also used observation hacky to sense that the person in front of him was definitely not a kind person. It's really harsh. My name is Orikimura, and my subordinate Yakushi Kabuto has met you. Orikimura looked at Whitebeard. I have a strong interest in Whitebeard's six meter tall body. He stuck out his tongue and washed his face. If possible, he really wanted to capture Whitebeard for research. Whitebeard's eyes narrowed slightly, and he felt that a trace of murderous intent suddenly appeared on Orikimaru. The snake-like brat wants to kill me? Whitebeard said without changing his expression, that brat with glasses. That's really rude. Is this how you discipline your subordinates? Orikimaru bowed slightly, I am very sorry for my subordinates' rudeness. Whitebeard waved his hand impatiently and said, Don't beat around the bush, tell me, what are you doing here? If it's Suzuki, then I'll take it. Orikimura said with a smile, don't be so heartless. My subordinates have told you that no matter what you want, I can give it to you. As he spoke, he slowly walked towards Bye Bye. Beard comes. Whether it's getting stronger or immortality, whatever you can imagine, I can give it to you. Whitebeard had an expressionless face. He had seen a lot of strong winds and waves over the years. Even if he was moved, he would not inexplicably listen to this stranger with a sinister face. So, what if I want your life? Looking at the fierce light in Whitebeard's eyes, the corners of his raised mouth dropped slightly. What a pity, Mr. Whitebeard. Everyone in the ninja world is flocking to the conditions I can offer. Just when Orikimura wanted to say something more. Wow, the red wine in Whitebeard's hand suddenly shattered, and an extremely powerful momentum exploded on Whitebeard's body. Orikimura's pupils shrank, and years of fighting made him subconsciously stretch out his arms. Boom. When Orikimura reacted, Whitebeard's fist had already arrived and hit Orikimura's outstretched hand. Orikimura didn't expect that this Whitebeard would suddenly rise up and attack him without any warning. He couldn't understand this Whitebeard. He had only been in contact with Suzuki for a few days and could form such a deep bond. It was really hard to understand. In fact, Whitebeard's character is not that violent, but because his strength has returned to its prime, it is even getting stronger. This makes Whitebeard's character much more assertive and decisive than during the Summit War. Since the man in front of him would threaten his Whitebeard son, he would not sit idly by and watch. He punched out again, but this time he couldn't hit Orikimaru's body and only hit a tangled mass of snakes. And Orikimaru's figure appeared in the distance. He touched his broken arm, and his arm miraculously healed again. What a violent character, Lord Whitebeard. 
Orikimura said, a snake protruding from his sleeve, staring closely at Whitebeard. Whitebeard stepped forward, since you covet my dear son, then I have to let it go. Advertisement. Chapter 47, Orikimaru, want to attack Kanaha? First order requested. Advertisement. A ball of white light shrouded Whitebeard's fist. Orikimaru looked at the ball of white light, and all the hairs on his body stood on end. What is very strange is that this white light does not have any chakra fluctuations, but it exudes an extremely dangerous aura. Orikimaru did not dare to neglect, his whole body suddenly became extremely soft, and he dodged Whitebeard's punch at an incredible angle. Immediately afterwards, Orikimaru really looked like a snake, with a long body, crawling quickly on the ground very softly. This is Orikimaru's own secret technique, which transforms the body and greatly enhances its softness and elasticity. Therefore, this secret technique has the name of software transformation. Whitebeard couldn't help but be a little stunned when he looked at Orikimaru's appearance. After all, Orikimaru's operation is really disgusting. After moving to a safe position, Orikimaru knew that Whitebeard was very fast, so he started releasing ninjutsu without stopping. Latent Shadow Snake Hand A dozen pythons with thick arms suddenly poked out, like a forest of pythons, blocking Orikimaru's body. However, Whitebeard showed no fear at all. He raised his giant hand and rushed directly into the python jungle. Hiss. The pythons hissed, exposed their sharp teeth, and bit directly into Whitebeard's giant hand. Click. More than a dozen pythons trembled a few times. The next second, the sharp teeth fell out of their mouths and fell to the ground. Orikimaru's expression changed, he didn't expect Whitebeard's skin to be so hard. With a thought, the dozens of pythons began to change their attack methods, and wrapped around Whitebeard's arm with excellent strangulation power. Feeling the strangulation force coming from his arm, Whitebeard smiled. That's it, you little kid who plays with snakes, you can't deal with me just like that. Orikimaru also showed a sinister smile. I know, said. With a shake of his hand, his arm was separated from more than a dozen pythons. Then his feet flashed, widening the distance from Whitebeard at an extremely fast speed. At this time, Whitebeard also discovered strange pieces of paper stuck on the backs of these pythons. Bah, these strange papers suddenly burst into flames. Boom, boom, bang bang bang. Explosions sounded one after another, and the fire and smoke swallowed Whitebeard like a giant beast. Orikimaru stood in the distance, watching this scene with amusement. In his mind, even if Whitebeard is physically strong, but this was a hundred detonating talismans. Even if Whitebeard didn't die, he would still be covered in wounds. As the smoke dissipated, Whitebeard's figure still stood. When he could see it clearly, the snake's eyes suddenly widened. Not only was Whitebeard injured, even the captain's cloak behind him was fine. Whitebeard patted his cloak. You are quite capable. My cloak was stained. Hearing this, Orikimaru gritted his teeth. He did not expect that as one of the sunin, he would be provoked like this again. Your Excellency Whitebeard, do you really not think about it? Not only immortality, but even immortality, I can do it. Orikimaru forced a very forced smile. Whitebeard walked towards Orikimaru, with endless momentum in every step he took. This is what the saying goes? Snake playing kid, if you can't hear clearly what I said before, then I'm going to ask you to wake up now. Seeing Whitebeard like a giant beast walking slowly, Orikimaru snorted unwillingly, and then sneered. Then I won't disturb you for now, Mr. Whitebeard. With that said, Orikimaru ran away directly. Even though he was very hacky, his running was not sloppy at all. Whitebeard didn't want to let Orikimaru leave. He stepped hard with his feet and jumped high into the sky. He released Observation Haki and chased towards the place where Orikimaru escaped. Orikimaru was escaping peacefully underground, but suddenly, the land above began to tremble. Before Orikimaru could figure out what happened, a strong ray of sunlight shone into the ground. Orikimaru was like a dark insect that hadn't seen sunlight for a long time, subconsciously squinting his eyes. Advertisement. The next second, a huge hand clamped onto him and pulled him out of the ground. Snake playing kid, now is not the time to hibernate. Whitebeard squeezed Orikimaru and said with a smile. Orikimaru was extremely horrified in his heart. Why does this Whitebeard have no chakra fluctuations when he acts? Seeing Orikimaru's surprised expression, Whitebeard made a thought and increased the power in his hand. Feeling the huge force coming from him, Orikimaru couldn't help but frown. What are you up to? Orikimaru asked. This is the first time in decades that he has been so passive. Although he has a way to escape from this situation. But Orikimaru doesn't want to reveal his trump card until absolutely necessary. Therefore, Orikimaru would rather deliver something insignificant in exchange for freedom, which is far more worthwhile than betraying his own intelligence. Whitebeard remembered Suzuki's doubts, and he said directly, Give me the jutsu. Orikimaru was stunned for a moment. Ninjutsu? There were so many of them that it was like throwing seeds out of his hands. Whitebeard wants something so cheap. Orikimaru was stunned for a while before speaking. What do you want suddenly? Whitebeard grabbed Orikimaru with one hand to close the distance, and put the other hand in front of Orikimaru's face and slowly squeezed it, making a rattling sound. I want them all. Orikimaru hashtag. If it weren't for this situation, Orikimaru would have thought that Whitebeard was joking. He has too many ninjutsu collections, how could he possibly take them all out? Just as he was about to defend himself, Whitebeard pinched him tighter. There was no other way, Orikimaru had no choice but to use the summoning technique, and summon part of the ninjutsu in his inventory. But even if it is only a part, after Orikimaru's many years of accumulation, the number is still quite large. Wow, the ninjutsu scrolls were summoned, and they were stacked on top of each other, forming a mountain high pile. Well, it's a bit much. Whitebeard touched his chin and said thoughtfully, Sir Whitebeard, can you let me go now? Orikimaru said, Wait a minute, you can't just let me hold it like this, right? Summoning give me a bag. Whitebeard said confidently. Orikimaru almost laughed out loud. Which ninja have you ever seen sign a contract with a bag? There was no other way. Orikimaru took out a ceiling scroll, sealed all the ninjutsu scrolls in it, and handed it to Whitebeard's hand. Just when he was about to ask Whitebeard if he could leave, he saw a fist as big as a sandbag expanding rapidly in front of him. Orikimaru felt his blood run cold and his hair stood on end. Without him, Whitebeard's speed is too fast. Just when his fist was about to hit Orikimaru's body, bang, a cloud of white smoke suddenly rose up, covering Orikimaru's entire body. Immediately afterwards, Whitebeard could no longer sense Orikimaru's aura. Huh? Where's the snake kid? Whitebeard looked around and spread the observation hacky. However, he didn't sense any scent of Orikimaru. Interesting. 
Whitebeard showed an interested smile on his face. If it is moving quickly, the speed of the snake imp has already surpassed that of the Kizaru imp. But this doesn't look like it, it's more like some kind of spatial ability. Whitebeard didn't think about it anymore. With his understanding of the ninja world, he couldn't think of a reason. Whitebeard carried the scroll and walked back. Orikimaru-sama, are you okay? Advertisement. Kabuto was holding an open scroll in his hand. In front of him was Orikimura, who suddenly appeared just now. At this time, Orikimura's face was gloomy, without the gloomy smile before. After hearing Kabuto's question, Orikimura forced out a smile. Kabuto, you did a good job, the time is just right. Looking at the scroll in Kabuto's hand, Yinshi said sincerely. In fact, this is Orikimura's insurance policy. When he knew that Whitebeard's strength had surpassed that of the third Hokage, Orikimura came up with this insurance method. Before setting off, he warned Kabuto that if he didn't come back within a while, he would pull the scroll. What is in the scroll is a summoning spell. As long as the scroll is opened, Orikimura will be directly summoned back. The moment Whitebeard punched happened to be within the agreed time limit. Only then did Orikimura avoid the fatal punch. Hearing Orikimura's compliment, Kabuto smiled shyly. Don't dare, Orikimura-sama, this is all my responsibility. Orikimura slowly stood up from the ground. He looked at Kabuto and immediately entered working mode. How's the plan going? After hearing this, Kabuto immediately said. We've already talked to Luosha. San Shinobi has made preparations. We're just waiting for the Chinin exam. We should cooperate inside and outside. Orikimura's eyes sparkled with an inexplicable light. In the past, when he talked about Kanaha's collapse plan, he only thought about the third generation and the village, but this time, another figure broke into his mind. Whitebeard? Thinking of that proud old face, Orikimura clenched his fists. He looked at the third gate coffin set up in the laboratory not far away. Another proud smile appeared on his lips. Just wait, Whitebeard. After he tests this technique in Kanaha and perfects it, I will let you see it. The strength from ancient powerful men. The distant Whitebeard naturally didn't know what Orikimura was thinking. He was in the house, eating meat and drinking wine as happily as a god. At this time, Naruto's shouting voice was faintly heard outside. Haha, <laughs> that guy was severely repaired by my Raisinon. You idiot crane tail, if it weren't for me, you would have been pierced through his bones. Okay, okay you two, stop arguing. I'm going to prepare some ointment for you. Dead bone pulse, I didn't expect to meet you here. Whitebeard knew as soon as he heard that Naruto and Suzuki, Haku, and Zabuza were all back. Dear sons, is there nothing wrong? Whitebeard said when he saw four people coming in. Please give me flowers. Zabuza spoke first. The enemy was a bit difficult to deal with. Although we defeated them, we still let them run away. After further understanding, the other party was a ninja from a ninja village whom I had never heard of, the sound ninja. There is a ninja among them who can attack with his own bones. He is very powerful. It is not an exaggeration to say that he is not afraid of death. Whitebeard was also amazed that this trick of the ninja blood successor was comparable to that of devil fruit. And the most important thing is that the blood inheritance limit can be inherited, which is more powerful. If Whitebeard knew that through scientific means, everyone would. If everyone can obtain the blood inheritance limit, it will probably be even more shocking. At this moment, Bai seemed to have thought of something and said. I also heard a special piece of information from the mouth of that dead bone pulse kid. Everyone looked at Zabuza curiously, and Haku began to speak. During the battle just now, Kimimaro said this when he encountered the joint attack of Suzuki and Naruto. Harder to kill than the fourth Kaze cage. Bai's face looked a little solemn. I don't think that kid is lying. Naruto didn't react, but both Suzuki and Zabuza looked solemn. If a cage was killed, it would definitely be a big deal. The disappearance of the third Kaze cage that year directly led to the occurrence of the third Ninja World War. Although it was only the trigger, it was enough to prove the influence of the shadow of one village on the pattern of the Ninja World. Advertisement. Now the Kaze cage is directly killed. If Kimimaro did not lie, there will definitely be a bloody storm in the Ninja World in the future. Whitebeard spoke up at this time. Did you just say, sound ninja? Zabuza nodded. Yes, the enemies just now were all sound ninjas, including that kid from the Yoriwiki clan. Zero. Whitebeard continued to ask. Is their forehead protector a musical symbol? Zabuza was stunned for a moment. Have you seen? Whitebeard told Kabuto that he had met before and that Kabuto's superior was Orikimaru. By the way, he also told about the encounter with Orikimaru just now. Suzuki was a little nervous knowing that Orikimaru was coveting his eyes. Naruto shouted directly. It's okay, Suzuki, I will protect your eyes even if I risk my life. Suzuki waved his hand shyly. I can just do it myself. As a jonin, Zabuza thought further. If I guessed correctly, the leader of the sound ninja village must be Orikimaru, and that Hui Yoriwiki clan member is also a sound ninja. If he didn't lie, kill the fourth Kaze cage. It must be Orikimaru's command. Suzuki and Naruto asked curiously. Why did he do this? Zabuza's eyes were somewhat profound. His target, I guess, is Kanaha. Kanaha? Is that true? Suzuki and Naruto frowned. In their hearts, Kanaha is still their hometown. Zabuza sighed. That's pretty much it. Assuming that the kid from the Kagaya clan is right, since Tsunagakur hasn't revealed the news of Kazakich's death yet, it probably means that Kaze Cage has been dropped. Kanaha will hold the Jinin exam soon. Judging from the alliance between the Fire Country and the Wind Country, the fake Kaze Cage will also come to Kanaha in person by then. The disaster in Kanaha may be coming soon. Zabuza's eyes flashed with an inexplicable light, and he secretly admired Orikimaru in his heart. Decisive in killing and scheming, if the kid from the Yoriwaki clan hadn't leaked the information, they would never have known about Orikimaru's plot. If there had been an Orikimaru when he launched the coup, that guy Yagura would have been pulled down by him? Zabuza felt a little angry still brooding over the failed coup that year. Hearing that Kanaha was about to face a disaster, Naruto couldn't sit still at first. He raised his arms. In that case, Grandpa Hokage, Teacher Iruka and the others would all be in danger. Suzuki is also a little worried. Although he has no ties to the people in the village, he has lived there for more than 10 years. If Kanaha turns into hell, he will also feel uncomfortable. Involuntarily, both of them turned their attention to Whitebeard. Gula Lala, don't worry, sons, we will go to Kanaha, but we have to wait until Orikimura takes action, otherwise the news may leak out. Whitebeard said matter-of-factly, but his inner thought was to make the Hokage boy suffer. Before Naruto and Suzuki could say anything, Whitebeard shouted. 
Come, look what good things I have brought you. As he spoke, Whitebeard took out a scroll from behind. Dad, why do you have a scroll? Everyone was confused because they knew that Whitebeard was not a ninja, and he even knew a little about many things about ninjas. Whitebeard holding the scroll looks very inconsistent. Ninjutsu. After speaking briefly, Whitebeard threw the scroll into Suzuki's hands. Ninjutsu? Suzuki was stunned, looked at Whitebeard, and then entered Chakra to open the scroll. A burst of white smoke rose, and the scroll stacked as high as a hill appeared. Advertisement. Chapter 48, Target, Kanaha. First order requested. Advertisement. Bata. The scroll in Suzuki's hand fell to the ground and rolled on the ground. Everyone was stunned. This, this is too much. Jonin like Zabuza was a little surprised to see this scene. He stepped forward and looked at the scroll. There were all kinds of five escape ninjutsu, illusion techniques, and even some secret techniques from other villages. Zabuza took a deep breath. None of the ninjutsu he had ever seen were as many as here. There are even many ninjutsu in it that are very suitable for him to learn. Shiro, there is also ice escape ninjutsu here. Zabuza took a few scrolls in surprise and handed them to Shiro's hands. Suzuki and Naruto also stepped forward and picked scrolls on the scroll mountain. Whitebeard looked at this scene with a proud expression. Zabuza did not forget Suzuki's request, and he pulled out a scroll from the mountain of scrolls. Suzuki, this suits you very well. Suzuki put his head over and read the words on the scroll word by word. Lightning style stimulates cell activation. Zabuza nodded. Anyone who possesses lightning style ninjutsu must undergo such training. Later, he talked about the use of lightning style to stimulate cell activity, which can greatly increase strength and speed. Hearing this, Suzuki felt excited and thought that he would be able to keep up with Naruto with this move. After grabbing the scroll, Suzuki, who had just finished the battle, immediately started practicing. Naruto was naturally unwilling to admit defeat when he saw this, and followed him to practice without a fuss. Bai covered his mouth and chuckled. Dad, Mr. Zabuza, let me go check on the two of them. After saying that, Bai ran out for a while. Only Whitebeard and Zabuza were left in the room. Dad, do you have any plans? Zabuza looked at Whitebeard. Zabuza knew that if Whitebeard was really worried about Kanaha, he should go to Kanaha now to tell the third Hokage the news. As for leaking information or something like that, given Kanaha's intelligence department and the level of secrecy surrounding this matter, this information would never leave the Hokage's office. Whitebeard grinned. Among my sons, you must be the smartest. Zabuza smiled innocently. Afterwards, Whitebeard told how the third generation treated Naruto, Danzo had a sherry non even though he was a high-ranking official, and the mystery surrounding the night of Uchiha's genocide. After hearing this, even if Zabuza came out of the blood mist, he couldn't help but be stunned by what Kanaha did. Kanaha is indeed the strongest ninja village. It's glamorous on the outside, but things in the interior can be compared to the blood mist. Zabuza was a little lucky. I am glad that I carried out the coup in Mist Shinobi. If I had carried it out in Kanaha, I would probably have been eaten to the bone. After sighing for Kanaha, Zabuza's eyes became determined. Don't worry, Dad, I will definitely keep an eye on these two brothers, Naruto and Suzuki. Whether it's Hokage or Danzo, I won't be afraid. Whitebeard patted Zabuza on the shoulder. Good boy. Zabuza smiled from the bottom of his heart. Beside Whitebeard, he rarely felt a sense of security and the unique warmth of his father's generation. Thinking about his father, he died during the Second Ninja War. If it weren't for Whitebeard, his feeling of fatherly love would have been extremely vague. At this moment, Whitebeard showed a smile full of fatherly love. Zabuza, I think your muscles are not strong enough. You seem to have slacked off in your training. Zabuza. After a while, Zabuza was feeling pain and happiness under Whitebeard's customized training plan. Advertisement. Whizzing. Two figures appeared in the distance of the country of waves. They looked ahead, where was the bustling Whitebeard bridge? The Whitebeard pirate flag on the bridge fluttered in the sea breeze. Oh I didn't expect that this Whitebeard was quite capable. He directly brought the kingdom of waves back to life. He same looked at the prosperous land of waves with some surprise. Itaka stood up his collar and calmly covered up the worry in his eyes. Let's go, he same, go take a look. He same looked at Itaka curiously. Mr. Itaki, are you worried about your brother? Itaka looked cold. I hope he still remembers me and doesn't forget that he used a men's strength to fight with the district. Even though Kisame knew that Itaki was very heartless, he still couldn't help but feel scared when he heard these words. Itaki usually behaves normally, but when it comes to the issue of genocide and Suzuki, he becomes neurotic. Shaking their heads and thinking no more, the two of them flew towards the kingdom of waves. Both of them are cage level experts, and their concealment skills are naturally excellent. In addition, there were only a few people in the land of waves, so the two soon met Suzuki and Nero who were training. Suzuki formed a seal with his hands, and the next second, a small electric light appeared in the palm of his hand. Suzuki sighed. It's still too slow. He glanced at Naruto and saw that Naruto was practicing wind style. Wind style wind cut. A sharp looking wind blade appeared in Naruto's palm. Suzuki stopped looking at Naruto and gathered lightning again. Crack. The electric light was more dazzling than the one just now, and it made a crackling sound. Suzuki's eyes flashed with excitement. Afterwards, he practiced even more like a man possessed. In fact, what Suzuki didn't know was that he was already very fast. In other words, the speed of cultivation has been a bit exaggerated. Not only him, but also Naruto. Naruto learned several ninjutsu from the sealed book with just a few glances. Although their talents are good, this is too exaggerated. In fact, all these changes started when they became Whitebeard's sons. Since they recognized Whitebeard as their father, their cultivation speed has become faster. It's just that because the two of them could only compare each other and didn't know the other people's cultivation speeds, they both felt that their own cultivation speeds were normal. Mr. Itaki, your brother practices very hard? Kisame and Itaki were standing in the tree. This level of appreciation is still far from enough. Itaki's tone was very cold, but he was actually very excited inside. He hadn't seen Suzuki in several years, and he seemed to be doing well and had a good friend. The only flaw is that Suzuki is not staying in Kanaha now. All of this must be blamed on that strange giant. Edward Newgate? When CAO CAO arrived, Whitebeard came over and observed Suzuki and Naruto's training. Itaka was very excited and wanted to kill Whitebeard immediately. Mangekyo was about to be activated. But now that there were so many people, it was difficult for him to attack, and Kisame was still nearby, which was difficult to explain. After much thought, Itaka still didn't decide to take action. He looked at Kisame. Let's go. Afterwards, the two people turned into afterimages and left here. Whitebeard looked at where Itaki and Kisame left. Gula Lai Here comes a great guy. 
He felt Itaka's deep murderous intent and hatred towards him, but he also felt Itaka's concern for Suzuki. At the same time, I also felt the breath of Sherry Non. Whitebeard also guessed the identity of the visitor. Advertisement. But Whitebeard didn't bother to point him out. Whitebeard doesn't want to get too involved in Suzuki's affairs. As an enlightened father, he still hopes that Suzuki can solve his own affairs personally. Time flies, the country of waves is developing at its peak, and the people's happiness index is rising steadily. As for the hero of the kingdom of waves, Whitebeard, he didn't have much ambition to expand. He was happily getting along with his family, leaving him no time to pay attention to other things. On a training ground in the land of waves, Suzuki and Naruto stood opposite each other. They both saw a strong fighting spirit in each other's eyes. Bai stood between the two of them, raising his hands high. The seal of combat. Suzuki and Naruto made gestures, and then Shiro's raised hands suddenly waved down. The battle begins. Whizzing. Two winds sounded, and both Suzuki and Naruto turned into afterimages and collided directly. Boom. A large burst of air spread out, blowing their hair to sway slightly. Then, the fists and feet of the two began to hit each other, colliding and intersecting, and a continuous snapping sound came from the Japanese array. Under Whitebeard's training, the two people's perception has become very high, and their respective fists and kicks are sensed by the other in advance. So much so that after more than a hundred rounds, no one took advantage. Hitting and licking, Suzuki opened the sherry non, and Naruto's fast movements became slow in his eyes. Naruto was unambiguous when he saw this, and a red chucker coat began to appear on his body. As their respective second forms opened, the momentum of the fight between the two became more and more intense. Suzuki found the right moment and stepped hard on the ground with his foot. Essay. A handful of sand was stirred up and hit Naruto's eyes accurately. Naruto yelled and wiped his eyes quickly. Seeing this situation, Suzuki takes advantage of the victory and pursues it. Call. Suzuki stretched out his leg and it turned into an afterimage, hitting Naruto like a whip. Success. Suzuki was ecstatic. However, at this moment, Naruto, who was hurriedly wiping his eyes, suddenly stopped moving. Although Suzuki was confused, he did not stop moving his feet. Boom. A powerful and heavy kick hit Naruto's body hard. Bai covered his mouth with a surprised look on his face. Zabuza opened his mouth and said, It's not over yet, Naruto is not that easy to defeat. Sure enough, Suzuki's face changed drastically when he saw that he had succeeded. His face became a little ferocious, and after a while he uttered one word. So hard. Naruto opened his eyes, smiled at Suzuki, and said slowly, This is one of the six forms, Iron Body. Suzuki snorted coldly, tapped his feet lightly, and jumped up high. Then let's see if your Iron Body can withstand the flames. Saying that, Suzuki quickly formed a seal and directly sprayed out a fire dragon. Fire style, dragon fire technique. Not to be outdone, Naruto quickly formed seals with his hands. Wind style vacuum daima. The two escape techniques collided violently, and a hot wind blew away quickly. The next second, an explosion occurred on the field, and the black smoke was like a giant beast, swallowing up the entire training ground. At this moment, a sudden change occurred. The black smoke in the sky suddenly began to deform and even rotate, as if a tornado was generated in the black smoke. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Two weird noises appeared, and two light blue light spots appeared in the thick black smoke. A strong whirlwind appeared and blew away all the black smoke. Naruto and Suzuki were still standing. Advertisement. Naruto is wearing the Nine Tails Chakra coat, and the raisin in his hand is because. The reason why Nine Tails Chakra is added makes it purple. Not far away, Suzuki's momentum was not weak either. The raisin in his hand was added with Lightning Style's nature transformation, and bursts of thunder and lightning bloomed on the raisin -on. The momentum seemed even greater than Naruto's. Zabuza looked at this scene and wiped the sweat from his forehead. He didn't think he could withstand such an attack. Shiro looked happy, and he felt proud that Suzuki and Naruto had become stronger. Whitebeard's expression remained unchanged from beginning to end. Suzuki and Naruto looked at each other, then smiled. I'm on it. The two said this sentence in unison, and then quickly ran towards each other. Boom. Two majestic energies collided violently. In an instant, light suddenly appeared, and the sky and the earth turned pale. A ball of blue-purple light suddenly appeared, and then continued to expand. The ball of light expanded, destroying the surrounding earth, and the ground continued to expand into a huge circle. Boom. Finally, the light ball exploded, and countless chakra elements scattered on everyone's faces. On the field, Suzuki and Naruto were lying on the ground panting, this move had exhausted them. Bai walked forward and said in a rather complaining tone, You two are fooling around again. Suzuki and Naruto smiled at each other, then reached out their hands together, asking Shiro to pull them up. Bai couldn't hold back his complaining expression and pulled the two of them up from the ground with a smile on his face. It's really scary. Zabuza watched from the side, not even bothering to wipe the sweat from his forehead. He originally estimated that Suzuki and Naruto would be able to surpass him within two years with their talents. This is already extremely overrated, but who would have thought that the combined power of Suzuki and Naruto now far exceeds him? Especially, Naruto and Suzuki are just genin? Are all the genin in Konoha a bunch of devils? Zabuza's mouth moved up and down under the bandage. Whitebeard also nodded with satisfaction. He had not expected the outstanding talents of these two children. Just when Whitebeard was about to say something, a 4.8 warrior came outside. After seeing Whitebeard, he said respectfully, Master Whitebeard, the information you want, preparations for the Chinin exam have begun, and ninjas from all countries have entered Kanaha. Upon hearing the samurai's words, Naruto and Suzuki's eyes lit up. Perhaps because of the longing for their hometown or the desire for Chinin, both Suzuki and Naruto felt a little happy in their hearts. Whitebeard nodded and signaled the warrior to retreat, sighing secretly in his heart. What happens next may be very uncomfortable for Naruto and Suzuki. However, this is something that the two of them must experience and experience. Only by going through inner disasters can they step into the threshold of being strong. Moreover, Whitebeard did not want his two sons to live in a labyrinth of lies in the future. He and Zabuza looked at each other, and Zabuza nodded. Since you are going back to Kanaha, then Shiro and I can guard the country of waves. Zabuza said confidently. These days, Zabuza also noticed something was wrong. He found that since he recognized Whitebeard as his father, his training speed has become very fast. 
He, whose strength was originally stuck at a bottleneck, also felt a little loose. After a period of crazy training, Zabuza's strength has been greatly improved. If his previous strength could only be considered as being stronger than the average Jonin, now he is a pure elite Jonin? In addition, after learning six moves, I can now compete with Whitebeard in two moves. But after two moves, you will be beaten by Whitebeard. Call. The cloak made a whistling sound, and Whitebeard put it on his back with a wave. Kong Yunki was also held in Whitebeard's hand. Under the sunlight, the huge blade gave off a breathtaking light. Sons, the Whitebeard pirates set sail again. Target, Kanaha. Advertisement. Chapter 49, What is the charm of the strongest Hokage? Please subscribe. Advertisement. The three of them were very fast. We arrived in Kanaha the next day. Naruto and Suzuki looked at the gate of Kanaha, feeling a little nostalgic in their hearts. At this time, Suzuki looked back at Whitebeard with some concern. Does he know that Whitebeard is still wanted? Whitebeard slapped Suzuki on the head. What's there to worry about? Your father is still afraid of that boy Hokage. Just as he was talking, several figures suddenly appeared from the gate. When CAO CAO arrived, he looked up and saw that it was the third Hokage, as well as Jonin such as Kakashi, Asuma, and Yui Hong. Obviously, third generation got the news that Whitebeard was heading here very early. Hokage boy, stay safe. Whitebeard looked at third generation and grinned. Seeing Whitebeard, third generation felt that the wounds that had been healed for a long time seemed to be aching. Before third generation could say anything, Naruto was the first to greet him warmly. Grandpa third generation, I'm back. Third generation's expression immediately turned into kindness. Ho 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 it's Naruto, he seems to have lost weight during this time. Naruto shook his head and said very straightforwardly. No, it's much better than the food we had in Kanaha. Third generation awkwardly lowered its hokage hat. Kakashi, Asuma, and others were embarrassed to watch it, as their own movies looked a bit like a hospital. Third generation immediately changed the subject. Naruto, Suzuki, are you planning to return to the village now? Suzuki frowned slightly, not knowing what he was thinking. Naruto shouted directly. Grandpa Hokage, Suzuki and I want to be Chinin. Hearing Naruto say this, third generation's eyes lit up. It seems Naruto still has feelings for Kanaha. There is still a chance to make amends. What Naruto didn't say in his heart was to prevent Orikimura from invading Kanaha. But because of Whitebeard's warning before, he didn't tell third generation. Third generation also looked at Suzuki kindly. What about Suzuki? Do you have the same idea? Suzuki was actually a little surprised. After all, since leaving the village, he has felt that he is a traitorous ninja, and he has slowly cut Kanaha into pieces in his heart. But looking at the appearance of third Hokage, it seems that he and Naruto are not too blamed for leaving the village. Although I am not very interested in being a Chinin. But seeing Naruto's hopeful look, and remembering the information that Orikimaru might invade Kanaha, Suzuki nodded anyway. Third generation raised its head slightly, feeling a little complacent. Good, great good. What is the charm of the strongest Hokage? The smile on third generation's face became even wider. Of course Kanaha welcomes you. After becoming a Chinin, there are many benefits. He even grabbed Suzuki and Naruto's hands very affectionately and started to lead them to the village while smiling. Seeing this, Whitebeard raised his feet to go in. As soon as he took a step, the Jonin group took up an offensive posture. Third generation's head turned slightly. Your Excellency Whitebeard should know that he is a wanted criminal, right? Whitebeard responded, that's right. In this case, you cannot enter Kanaha. Your status as a wanted criminal may cause riots in the village, especially when there are so many people from other villages. Advertisement. Third generation spoke slowly, even using words like diplomacy. But he had no intention of taking action against Whitebeard. Although Whitebeard is a so-called wanted subject. But the strength is still there. If you can't do it, don't do it. Listening to third generation's words, Naruto's face became a little anxious. Just as he was about to say something, Whitebeard over there spoke. Boy Hokage, I'm afraid the commotion behind us will be even bigger. As he spoke, Yuezu showed a strange smile. Third generation didn't understand what Whitebeard meant, but he didn't pay attention to it, because he felt that no matter how big the commotion was, could it be bigger than your Whitebeard entering the village? Third generation said, then I won't send it to you, Mr. Whitebeard. With that said, he pulled Suzuki and Naruto into the village. Naruto was nervous. Seeing that Whitebeard and third generation did not fight like last time, he felt that the relationship between the two had eased, so he was in a good mood. But Suzuki saw something. He could tell that his father seemed to be targeting the third Hokage. He didn't know why. But because of this, Suzuki's impression of the third generation has changed a bit. It seems that the third Hokage is not so kind and kind. Along the way, third generation did not ask for information about Whitebeard, but instead made some gossip. Naruto responded happily, while Suzuki was speechless. Soon, third generation sent the two to Naruto's home. Third generation didn't say anything and just walked away. He did not choose to be brainwashed on the road because he was confident. He was confident that Suzuki and Naruto would not grow much under Whitebeard's hands. At most, they would only become stronger in physical skills. But, this is the world of Chakra. Does Whitebeard know ninjutsu? Does Whitebeard have a Sharingan? Can Whitebeard provide proper ninja instruction? Without these, Whitebeard will be an obstacle to Naruto and Suzuki's ninja path. Only in Kanaha, in this village recognized as the strongest ninja, can we give them the best ninja resources. Third generation showed a contemptuous smile. Whitebeard is a muscular guy. Does he know what ninjutsu is? The third generation's plan is very simple. First, use the Chinin exam to attract Suzuki and Naruto, and then arrange masters for them. For example, Kakashi and Jiraiya, with such a strong person as their master, considering their future, they may not continue to follow Whitebeard, Naruto, and Suzuki, but they can also be bound to the depths of Kanaha. Thinking of this, third generation smiled proudly. At the gate of Kanaha village, after sensing that Naruto and Suzuki had returned home safely, Whitebeard slowly took back observation hacky. Okay, you little brats I don't want to go into this village yet. Whitebeard glanced at Kanaha Jonin in a fighting posture and laughed. Then, Whitebeard carried Kong Yunki and walked away. It was at this time that he could feel his growing strength. Soon, the day passed, and it was time for the exam the next day. 
Naruto, Suzuki. A shout made Naruto and Suzuki turn their heads. I saw that the person speaking was none other than Little Sakura. When Little Sakura saw the two of them, she looked ashamed. Really, it's you? The forward protector on Little Sakura's head has disappeared. Because she is not strong enough, Little Sakura is forced to study at the ninja school for another year. Suzuki's memory was not bad and he still remembered Little Sakura's taunting towards Naruto. He just gave a very cold hum and walked away quickly. To Sakura's surprise, Naruto, who was very enthusiastic towards her in the past, didn't express anything and just smiled and nodded to her. The breeze blew gently, making Little Sakura's long pink hair flow. She looked at Suzuki and Naruto who were gradually going away. She didn't know why, but she had an idea in her mind. The development of things should not be like this. Soon, both Suzuki and Naruto arrived at the exam venue. Because I came relatively late, I didn't encounter the first illusion trial. The two came directly to the examination room. As soon as they opened the door, countless eyes were focused on the two of them like arrows. Both Suzuki and Naruto showed no fear on their faces. When they were in the land of waves, they even killed people. After training, their strength also skyrocketed. Advertisement. Suzuki and Naruto really didn't feel anything about the gazes from Genin from other countries. However, unlike the indifference and hostility of ninjas from other countries, Genin from the same village looked shocked when they saw Naruto and Suzuki. Suzuki-kun. Ino pounced from behind, trying to hug Suzuki. However, Suzuki's reflexes have been trained very well. He dodged sideways and opened the quilt without falling into pieces. It's so heartless, Suzuki. Ino said with some dissatisfaction. Suzuki said somewhat speechlessly. You're so annoying. Shikamaru looked at Naruto and Suzuki, thinking about something. Inizuka Kiba stepped forward and patted Naruto on the shoulder. You two, I haven't seen you for many days. Do you have a lot of tasks? Naruto scratched his head and smiled. We followed dad to practice outside. Inizuka Kiba was very envious when he heard. It's great, you don't have to do those tasks. Hineda saw that Naruto, whom she hadn't seen for a long time, seemed to be more handsome. She lowered her head shyly, blushed and twirled her fingers. Seeing this, Naruto also greeted generously. Hey, Hineda, long time no see. After these days of getting along with his father and Suzuki, Naruto's personality has also changed somewhat. He remembered that Hineda seemed to have been watching him from before. She never said anything bad to him, but sometimes she even whispered words of encouragement. Naruto didn't know before, or rather, he didn't care at all. But now Naruto remembered, so he stepped forward to say hello to Hineda. As soon as she heard that Naruto took the initiative to greet him, Hineda almost couldn't help but let out a scream. When she saw Naruto's face getting closer, she even felt relieved. And at this moment, a vicious voice sounded. The brats in Kanaha are really noisy. Do you think ninjas are just playing house? Xiao Qiang looked over and saw almost all the candidates staring at them with vicious eyes. For a moment, all the young masters were a little scared. After all, they were first-year genin, and many of the genin who came to take the exam had been there for several years. Naruto and Suzuki's pupils shrank slightly when they saw the speaker. The speaker was covered in bandages, with his eyes exposed, and a crooked forehead protector with a music symbol engraved on his head. The Odo Ninja of Odogakur village? However, Suzuki and Naruto did not show that they knew the sound ninja. Suzuki looked at the group of sound ninjas and said coldly, Chongji, please don't interrupt. Hearing this, the eyes of the sound ninjas widened a lot. They couldn't believe that Suzuki dared to say this to them. Naruto didn't yell as much as Shikamaru and the others imagined. I saw Naruto looking at the sound ninja with very indifferent eyes, and even seemed to be mixed with a trace of murderous intent. This surprised Shikamaru. It seemed that Naruto and Suzuki had experienced a lot in the days when they had not seen each other. Ino clenched her fists. Suzuki was so handsome. It seemed that Naruto had become more handsome too. Boom. The door was pushed open with great force, breaking the tense atmosphere in the examination room. You useless brats, leave me alone. All the genin looked at them fiercely, wanting to see who dared to be so arrogant. The person who came was none other than the examiner of the first chunin exam, Marino Iki. The tall body was covered with black leather clothes, and there was a ferocious scar on his fierce face. This appearance alone shocked the genin's present. On the other hand, Suzuki and Naruto's expressions did not change, no matter how terrifying they looked. Can they still be as powerful as their father? Ibuki was also a little surprised to see Suzuki and Naruto so calm. As the test papers were distributed, everyone began to answer the questions. Advertisement. Suzuki looked around and saw who answered the questions faster, so he opened Sherry Nan to copy. The hand holding the pen began to shake, imitating the movements of the person writing the questions, and the pen began to write on the test paper. That person seemed to be a top student. Suzuki quickly finished writing the test paper, and then he turned his attention to Naruto. I saw Naruto scratching his head and looking at the test paper. The test paper was covered with white flowers and his name was not even written on it. This idiot. Suzuki muttered wordlessly, then began to think of how to deliver the answer to Naruto. Seeing that the end of the exam was getting closer, Suzuki didn't think of any good way to help Naruto, and Naruto seemed to be resigned to his fate. At this time, Naruto seemed to think of something and his eyes lit up. Naruto looked around and then closed his eyes. Gradually, the Nine Tails Chakra is mobilizing in the body. 937. Immediately afterwards, Naruto opened his eyes, and his blue pupils turned red. Seeing that the chakra reserve was almost full, Naruto quickly formed seals with his hands. Illusion Darkness Technique Second Hokage's Dark Technique is unleashed, and thanks to the inclusion of Superstar's Nine Tails Chakra, its range is greatly increased than before. In an instant, all the ninjas in the examination room were deprived of their vision. What happened? Ah, uh, what happened? Is Kanaha going to attack us? Everyone, calm down. No one could see anything. They could only see darkness, and they stretched out their hands and groped in front of them. The whole examination room was in chaos, except for one person. Seeing that everyone around him, whether candidates or examiners, were all deprived of their eyesight, Naruto secretly apologized. Then he immediately grabbed a test paper from a top student and read it every step of the way. After remembering almost everything, Naruto immediately returned to his seat and copied it from memory. The examiners were also well-trained ninjas. After being panicked for a while, they quickly realized that this was an illusion. They all injected chakra into each other's bodies to unlock the illusion. When Ibuki solved the illusion on his own, he immediately turned his attention to the candidates. All the candidates were in a panic. Even Naruto, the instigator, stretched out his hands and danced wildly, as if he had truly become a blind man. 
If he guessed correctly, what just happened was the illusion developed by second hokage, the darkness technique. A few drops of cold sweat fell on Yubixi's forehead. It seemed that this year's candidates were crouching tigers, hidden dragons. Suzuki looked at Naruto, this idiot is really bold at the critical moment. Aren't you afraid that someone among the examiners can quickly break the illusion? Fortunately, everything went as expected, and Naruto had already filled up the test paper. Soon, the exam is over. Wow. A beautiful figure directly broke through the window and broke into the examination room. In the surprised eyes of everyone, Anko said dissatisfiedly, Ibixi, your attack power is not good, but you still have so many people left. As he spoke, Anko's expression became bloodthirsty. In that case, let me eliminate half of the people. When everyone heard this, they swallowed their saliva. Then, under the leadership of Anko, everyone came to the forest of death. Although some things happened in the death forest before and have been rebuilt, it is still very dangerous inside. Anko introduced it while taking out a piece of paper. After you go in, whether you live or die, you are responsible for yourself. Anko placed a stack of papers on the table for the candidates to sign. Naruto also had a strange expression. First, he was so familiar with the death forest, it was almost like a back garden. Second, the forest of death was destroyed by my father, but I didn't expect it to be rebuilt now. Suzuki and Naruto also signed without any hesitation, the second test, the survival exercise in the forest of death. It will start the next day. Advertisement. Chapter 50, Advancement of Shock Fruit. Please subscribe. Advertisement. In a big mountain at night, Whitebeard opened his eyes and slowly stood up from his cross-legged legs. He looked at his arms with burning eyes. The muscular arms seemed to contain endless power. He has been developing shock fruit before, but it was only superficial and did not develop it in detail. Since it is a vibration, the scope and power of the vibration must be more macroscopic and more powerful. This is Whitebeard's consistent thinking, and it is also the reason why his development of shock fruit has reached a bottleneck. But now, he seems to have made a breakthrough. He Whitebeard, has realized something? A white halo enveloped Whitebeard's fist. Whitebeard was not in a hurry to release this power, but guided this power to do something. With Whitebeard's exertion, the white halo suddenly began to deform and then shrink. Seeing this, Whitebeard's eyes were a little excited. He raised his arms and waved his fists. Boom. There was a sound of breaking through the air, and the original scene of shattering the space did not appear. It seemed like it was just an ordinary punch. Just when Whitebeard was a little confused. Boom. There was a flash of white light, and a big tree in the distance collapsed. Is this the advanced ability of shock fruit? Looking at the tree he destroyed a hundred meters away, Whitebeard murmured. In fact, it's not that Whitebeard can't attack from a distance. But if you want to attack from a distance, you must spend a lot of energy to create a wide range of vibration. Strictly speaking, this is not a long distance attack. And the fixed point strike that was just displayed, as quiet as moistening things, can be regarded as a true long distance attack method. Although it doesn't seem to have much momentum, it is an area that Whitebeard has never touched. Whitebeard felt a little emotional. He finally reached a state that he had never reached in his life. Unexpectedly, after adopting several sons in the ninja world. Instead, we arrived and had to lament our fate. What he did was just to try every possible means to reduce the energy of the vibration. Keep moving forward while shrinking. Then it burst out violently. It sounds very simple. But until the summit war, he failed to achieve this point. But now, he strangely understood this method of operation. And Whitebeard can already foresee that this is just the beginning. If the strength is enough, what will happen if the vibration ability is infinitely reduced? Whitebeard knew that if he wanted to continue to enhance his fruit power, he would have to acquire more sons. But as mentioned before, Whitebeard values family more than strength. Although I am curious about what shock fruit will look like at the end of its development. But Whitebeard didn't think about finding his son casually. Whitebeard continues to practice his new abilities deep in the mountains. Accompanied by bursts of rumbling sounds, he was soon able to pinpoint the exact point. To put it simply, he can now use the ability of shock fruit to hit wherever he wants within one kilometer. Although the power is not great, but fortunately, it is hidden and fast. It was like planting a detonating talisman on a person from the air, so sudden and shameless. After practicing, they started hunting. After a big meal, Whitebeard fell asleep. Third generation stood at Hokajin Yan, with the Kanaha village at his feet lit up with thousands of lights. He looked towards a mountain outside the village. There was a rumbling sound from just now. Although he didn't know it, his intuition told him that it was Whitebeard making a noise. Third generation sighed. If he had been young, he would have had the confidence to compete with Whitebeard. But now he is old and frail, and his three apprentices have also left without moral integrity, leaving him the only high-end combat power in Kanaha. No, there is another Might guy. But that guy has been kidnapped by Whitebeard. Although he didn't leave the village, he still talked about Whitebeard from time to time. Advertisement. I wonder if that guy Jiraiya has received a letter. Third generation murmured and slowly walked back. The night passed quickly and the sun rose as usual. This also indicates that the second exam is about to begin. Soon, everyone gathered outside the death forest. Each team was assigned a scroll, and they were all waiting at their respective positions. Suzuki, why do you feel like this person is always looking at us? Naruto nudged Suzuki with his elbow and pointed not far away. Suzuki looked over. Are you from Kayin Village? Maybe they think we are easy to bully. I saw the ninja from Kayin Village staring at the two of them unabashedly, his eyes widening as if looking at some delicious prey. This person was none other than Orokimaru. He and his two subordinates dressed up as ninjas from Kusakure Village. His eyes were staring directly at Suzuki, his eyes wandering around Suzuki's body. There was no doubt that he was very excited when he saw Suzuki alone. Whitebeard's strength is really exaggerated. If Whitebeard had been by Suzuki's side, he would have no chance at all. And now, it is the opportunity God gave him Orokimaru. He stuck out his tongue and licked around his face. Suzuki's spirit has been coveted for a long time. Under the training of that Whitebeard, the spirit must be stronger. Thinking this, Orokimaru looked at Suzuki with even more intense eyes. At this moment, even Suzuki felt a chill. How disgusting? As the door outside the barbed wire fence opened, all the ninja teams waiting outside rushed in. Due to the special care of third generation, there are only Naruto and Suzuki in the entire team. In addition, when they first entered the examination room, Suzuki caused a wave of hatred, and many people were already staring at Naruto and Suzuki. So it had just started, and soon, there was a chucker wave coming towards Wenkin not far away. Suzuki and Naruto looked at each other and saw fighting intent in each other's eyes. Come on. Suzuki, 
<laughs> I know it without saying anything. As the conversation between the two ended, the enemy also came. The other party was dressed the weirdest among the ninjas, with a huge hat and a gas mask, a heavy raincoat and an umbrella. You can tell by looking at this attire that he is from Rain Shinobi Village. Ho ho, Kanaha brats, hand over the scroll, or you will die. Rain Shinobi's voice was treated with a gas mask and became hoarse and hoarse. Suzuki looked at the scroll of heaven in the opponent's hand, took out his own scroll and shook it. Our scrolls are the same, we are not your target. The leader, Rain Shinobi, showed a ferocious smile. I don't care, I haven't killed anyone in Kanaha yet. The other two Rain Shinobi also looked excited. Suzuki and Naruto looked at each other and chuckled. The two of them were not afraid at all and rushed forward. The leader, Rain Shinobi, smiled ferociously. He had been a genin for five years. How could he be defeated by these fledgling Kanaha genin? If Suzuki and Naruto heard what Rain Shinobi was thinking, they would definitely complain. After five years as a genin, are you still proud? The Rain Shinobi suddenly threw out the umbrella behind him. This umbrella was specially made and contained the Poseidon's hidden weapon. Ninjutsu, like rain and do thousands of times. In an instant, countless thousand books fell like rain on Naruto and Suzuki, making a rustling sound in the air. Wind style great breakthrough. Naruto released a wind style. Crash. The strong wind broke directly into Kanbanaya and scattered all the rain, making a crashing sound. What? Then Rain Shinobi didn't expect that Naruto's seal formation speed was so fast, and the power of the technique was quite high. Advertisement. Naruto continued to form seals with his hands. Wind style gale palm. A whirlwind appeared in Naruto's palm. Suzuki. Naruto reminded Suzuki. Suzuki also realized what Naruto was going to do. While condensing a raisinon with lightning style in his hand, Suzuki jumped up and appeared in a prone position. Naruto reached out and applied gale palm to Suzuki's feet. Call. Under the boost of Gale Palm's propeller, Suzuki turned into a rocket and rushed directly towards the leader Rain Shinobi. Va. Before the leader, Rain Shinobi, could react, Suzuki's hand had already penetrated his chest. No, no, maybe. The Rain Shinobi looked in disbelief. He couldn't believe that the other party was so strong. If he didn't react to the move just now, Jonin would have to admit defeat. Suzuki mercilessly pulled out the bloodstained hand from the opponent's chest, and then looked at the other two Rain Shinobi. In the eyes of the other two Rain Shinobi, just a blue-white stream of light suddenly passed by, and their captain died directly in Suzuki's hands. A-H-H. The two Rain Shinobi let out a wailing cry and ran away in a mess. Suzuki and Naruto didn't have the intention of killing everyone. After resting for a while, they continued on their way. All this was seen by Orikimaru. Seeing Suzuki's brilliant performance, Orikimaru became even more hungry. He looked at the two men beside him and said, Go and play by yourselves. Be careful not to make too much noise. The two men left in an instant. Orikimaru looked in the direction Suzuki and Naruto left and chased after them. Naruto and Suzuki were on their way without meeting anyone along the way. The two knew that they would take the initiative to find the enemy this time. They had not collected all the scrolls yet. At this moment, the two of them felt a strong threat together. Disperse. Naruto yelled and the two jumped away in unison. Boom. A huge snake emerged from the dense forest and slammed into the place where Naruto and Suzuki were standing. Suzuki's collar flashed, and a fireball spit out from his mouth, burning the big snake to death. Just when they both thought it was just an animal in the forest of death, the ground suddenly began to shake. Suddenly, the ground cracked, and ferocious cracks appeared. Bang, bang, bang. Several large snakes with exaggerated sizes emerged from the ground and surrounded Suzuki and the two. Now I can be sure that we are targeting them? The next second, a lonely figure walked out of the dense forest. It's that guy. Naruto frowned and said. Suzuki also frowned. The visitor was none other than the Kusanagi ninja who had been staring at them. They thought it would be fine if they deliberately avoided it, but they did not expect that the other party came directly to him. Orikimaru took out the earth scroll from his arms. Hand over your scrolls. Suzuki and Naruto didn't speak. Their intention was very clear, that is, they wouldn't hand it over. Orikimaru also expected the answers of the two people, and with a thought, the huge snakes began to attack Nizo and the two. Hiss, roar. Suzuki and Naruto's bodies kept dodging between the giant snakes. While dodging, Naruto calmly used wind style, wind cut. He chopped off two huge snake heads directly. Not to be outdone, Suzuki spurted out bolts of thunder and lightning from his mouth, chopping the remaining giant snakes into pieces that were charred on the outside and tender on the inside. Orikimaru looked a little sad. Advertisement. Sure enough, Whitebeard fed so many ninjutsu to Suzuki and Naruto, and these two brats learned ninjutsu very quickly. Is this considered a boomerang hitting myself in the face? Quite capable. Orikimaru chuckled. If you know, take out the scroll. Naruto said, already holding a handful of tongues. Orikimaru smiled crazily, and then his laughter suddenly stopped, and he suddenly made a sound of vomiting. Then in the shocked and incomprehensible eyes of Naruto and Suzuki, Orikimaru's throat gradually bulged, and a sharp sword was slowly squeezed out of his throat. Holding the sticky sword in his hand, Orikimaru's hoarse voice sounded. If you want a scroll, come and get it. Suzuki used lightning style and began to stimulate cell activation. But if he didn't get used to this pervert, he already wanted to beat him up. Whoosh. Suzuki speeded up and rushed towards Orikimaru. Naruto cast Shadow Clone to cover Suzuki. As soon as he got close, Suzuki used the exquisite Uchiha fluid technique on Orikimaru. The expected situation of Orikimaru being suppressed did not happen. Orikimaru's body is as flexible as a snake, twisting left and right to avoid all of Suzuki's Teijutsu attacks. It was time for Orikimaru to counterattack. The sharp Kusanagi sword turned into white streams of light and slashed at Suzuki. Suzuki took the kunao and stepped forward to resist. Soon, the sound of gold and iron echoed in the dense forest, and every collision would bring out a burst of dazzling sparks. At this time, Naruto's support also arrived. A dozen Uzumaki Naruto immediately surrounded Orikimaru and attacked Orikimaru from all angles. In Naruto's eyes, he was sure to win. However, Orikimaru did not panic, showing a proud smile. His body turned like a snake, twisting directly through the siege of Naruto. What? Naruto was surprised. It was his first time to see such a ninjutsu. Orikimaru held the Kusanagi sword in his hand, and the chakra on his body began to mobilize violently. Kusanagi sword, Sora no Tai, Chien's, sword. 
The Kusanagi sword suddenly began to extend violently. Orokimuro grabbed the extended Kusanagi sword and swung it violently. Bang bang bang. Naruto's clones were swept away, and finally, the sword struck Naruto's body. But at this moment, Yinshi realized that he couldn't cut anymore. Naruto stretched out his hand and caught Orokimuro's Kusanagi sword with his hand. However, Naruto's hand did not bleed, but remained motionless. Orokimuro raised an eyebrow. The hard touch from his hand reminded Orokimuro of Whitebeard's hard body. It seems that Naruto still learned a lot from Whitebeard. Orokimuro's inner interest in Whitebeard became even greater. Suzuki next to Naruto started to attack, and he suddenly jumped on his feet. Shave. With the addition of Chakra, the shaving speed was much faster than the body flicker technique. Suzuki was behind Orokimuro almost in the blink of an eye. Tempest kick. Suzuki's feet turned into after images, and he moved quickly, and sharp air currents shot out, towards Orokai. Orokimuro did not catch it hard, but dodged and dodged. Tempest Kick's attack hit the big tree behind him, and the big tree was cut in half. Orokimuro looked at the severed tree and showed an excited expression. Suzuki-kun's body is really strong? Just when Suzuki and Naruto wanted to continue their attack on Orokimuro, Orokimuro's belly suddenly bulged, and then a violent wind blast came out of his mouth. Puff. The wind blew directly to the ground, and a thick plume of smoke rose into the sky. The smoke is like a giant beast, swallowing up everything around it. When all the smoke cleared, Naruto and Suzuki discovered that Orokimuro had disappeared. Both of them were confused. Orokimuro's actions were really confusing. If it was for the scroll, then Orokimuro shouldn't give up the attack. You know, Orokimuro had never suffered a loss in the battle just now. If it was for other reasons, neither of them could imagine why. 